the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Monday, May 16th, 2022, and this sports show shall begin right now. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for joining us on this glorious Monday. The weather has been fantastic in Indianapolis all weekend. A little bit of a uh, rain delay on uh, yesterday, I believe, mm -hmm. but the sun has been shining. The heat has arrived, and times should be Nothing short of spectacular, especially coming out of Game 7 weekend. Now, this weekend was packed to the gills with Game 7s both in the NBA and the NHL. Quick recap, the NBA Game 7s, all blowouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dogs are dogs and the losers were losers. Okay. And now there's, you know, some beef that was basically buried until next season. And some players, you know, stamped and put a flag down mm -hmm. in Dogville. Mm -hmm. And others are drifting away into getting buried on sports media for the next week or two <laughs> for losing the Game 7s in the way that they did, which was absolute, you know, blowouts. Yeah. Embarrassing. Now, the NHL, on the other hand, their Game 7s were electrifying. Woo! couple of them went to overtime. Mm. And the good thing about this Game 7 weekend for the NHL and how great it was is it'll be the last time we talk about <laughs> hockey until next playoffs uh, because hockey is officially dead. dead in this office, which is a damn shame. Pittsburgh Penguins lose Game 7 against the Rangers after obviously having a lead not only in the series but in the game. They end up losing. Tristan Jari was back. Sidney Crosby was back. Malkin was playing. Latang was playing. All of our bests were there and playing, so there's literally no excuse. Coach Sully's been coaching since he won a Stanley Cup back-to-back -back with the Pittsburgh Penguins, so we've got a great coach, greatest player of all time, great characters, great cast of characters alongside, great goalie back in that, and we still lose game seven, the game that matters, and for the fourth straight year, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the greatest program in the history of hockey, are out in the first round, and now I have to look in the mirror and ask the tough questions. What the fuck is going on with the Pittsburgh Penguins? <laughs> Nick Morono. That team should win everything all the time, especially against that sorry-ass New York Rangers program. Okay, now the barn at Madison Square Garden was live. Uh -huh. it, it was, was loud. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. But on the flip side, who cares? We're the Pittsburgh Penguins. Mm -hmm. Sydney missed game six with a headache, they're saying. Now, hopefully we'll hear more after the season. This is kind of the time where we learn about all of the incredible injuries that the NHL players have been playing through. Because in hockey, they only describe it as an upper body injury or a lower body injury. Then as soon as the season ends, like, hey, this guy actually had a broken radius and fibula and this and played through the back half of the season while skating, checking, and just battling through. Hockey players are incredibly tough. Yeah. They said Sidney Crosby missed game six because of a headache. Oh. Is that what happened, Nick Morono? And is this Pittsburgh Penguins team officially done? Is the era that brought me so much happiness in so many woo nights yeah. on the south side and north shore and out here in indianapolis is this thing all over because they got new ownership in the middle of this last season new ownership normally likes to make things their own and this coach is always going to get called and old malkin's going to get called mm -hmm. Latang gets attacked mm -hmm. sandy crosby obviously greatest of all time going to be able to do whatever mm -hmm. he wants hopefully but it feels like we continue to lose in the first round and i can't take it anymore my heart can't take it anymore nick what the fuck happened yesterday and how do we lose that game uh, Pat, the simplest way to put it is they got goalied again. They controlled a lot of the play throughout the series. At five on five, they were the much better team. They lost the special teams battle, and they they generated so many scoring chances. It was insurmountable the scoring chances they generated over what the Rangers did. But when you look at it, Chesterkin was the difference. He didn't play great in the two games in Pittsburgh, but he bounced back after that, made the stops he needed to, and kept the Rangers alive. Younger, faster team. They wanted it more in Game 7, and they got it. No, they didn't want it more. Whoa. No. We wanted it. We wanted it a lot. We wanted it yeah. bad. Yeah. My thing is, 
Tristan Jari early saw the puck. Yeah, I did. Popped up in the air, snagged oh, yeah. it, no oh, big deal. Was had the dangles. He looked like mm-hmm. he was all the way back. Hadn't played in five weeks. How many weeks is it? Four been? weeks, yeah. Four month. weeks, hasn't played in a month or whatever. Long time. Game seven, thrust him back in there. But he's a guy. Yeah. yeah. He's a guy. Gotta mm-hmm. be a guy. Better than Early was saying, I put a tweet. Definitely better than the main. The king? <laughs> we seen that, that on Friday. Yeah, fucking okay. paddled up over his head into the fucking net. I was I was trying to commentate on SmackDown and then what was showing up in my phone. Uh, the old King Domingue just giving up yeah. uh, goals oh. that we have never seen before in hockey, <laughs> oh. in professional level. Anyways, Tristan Jari, I put out a couple of tweets. He's seen the puck. Whoa, here we go. He's got dangles. I thought I was putting in the universe good, positive vibes. Sure. Everybody was telling me I jinxed this guy. Does he stink? Is Tristan Jari stink, Nick? <laughs> Is this guy He stink? was an all-star this year. His first game back, he's still his ankle's still broke. Oh, I hope he played well in the all-star game. <laughs> yeah. I hope that was right. fun in the three-on-three. <laughs> they got to figure it out. I would like to continue to talk about hockey because hockey playoffs are a lot of fun. I think everybody that watched yeah. Game 7 weekend this past weekend would say, hockey's a blast because how oh, good yeah. the games are. We can't talk about it anymore. Nope. Damn shame. Las Vegas team, done. Yep. Boston Bruins, Game 7, done. And- I was hoping to go down and play against the Caniacs. Uh, right. 20,000 strong down there in Raleigh. I thought maybe the Pens would do it. But instead, whenever we have a lead in, a lead in Game 7, okay, instead of just going 5-6 wide on the goal sure. for the rest of the game. Sure. Right. Just let's go. Plug you it up. You want to build the wall. I want to build. Turn the skates sideways. Build little, the, build the little wall. Little plie. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Maybe take the hands behind because the wrists are exposed. Yeah. And just go six wide on that net for the last period and a half when we had the lead. Good luck. Boom. Good luck scoring against the wall. Hot. It's tough to beat somebody who never moves their back row. Bingo. Mm-hmm. That's what I was hoping we would do. That crossed my mind for a good four minutes after we got up three two. I'm like. All right. Build the wall. Stack up the net. Yeah. <laughs> maybe everybody on their force. Maybe on force oh. so they don't get as tired because it would be tough to sell, I think, if this was our strategy. Sure. But they, we should have. The boys were laying out. They were blocking shots. They were putting their body on line. Right. They were doing all the things you need to do to win they except were, yeah. for they were, they were, yeah. taking a penalty in overtime. Can't do that. Well, Just can't do it. There's a lot of conversation about what should be a penalty, what shouldn't be a penalty, and when guys should be forced off the ice and when they shouldn't be forced off the ice and everything like that. And we'll talk to Tim Peel. Okay. Oh. Hey, Timmy. Tim Peel reft in the NHL for how long? 20 years. Uh, yep. 20 years. Long time. Now, I'm not saying this guy's made every call a good call. This guy is not. Probably not. I don't think this guy's the Gene Steratore of the NHL. I'm not 100% sure if he is no. known as the greatest ref in the history of NHL. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. I should, But I do know 20 years in a league means you've been doing something right. Yeah, that's he's right. This guy knows the game a little bit. He's been mic'd up before. We've heard him mic'd up before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He seems to have a great personality. I'm going to ask him about some things going on in the NHL that I'm not happy about. How did Sidney Crosby get that cheap shot that maybe it wasn't a concussion, I guess? <laughs> mm. How do they not pause the series to make sure he comes back healthy and keep that thing going? We'll talk to Tim Peel in the third hour. That'll be our last NHL talk. Uh, At Boston Connor, you had a weekend bachelor party over there in uh, Charleston. How was it? Did you run into Ian Rappaport? How was your weekend? No, I didn't run into Rapsheet, and I was hoping that I would because I've been working on my forearms, and I was going to give him a mean wedgie. But instead, we just kind of were at the beach. We were golfing (laughs) a little bit. What year is it? Well, I mean, 2022, giving Rapsheet a wedgie. Maybe a noogie, and then, you know, hey, come here, Rapsheet. Wedgie. But no, instead, you know, watch the Bruins lose, unfortunately, like you mentioned. Uh, but then the Celtics, they delivered on Sunday, thank God, because if, you know, back to back, your experience in the one game seven loss, back to back game seven losses for Boston would have been the end. Yeah, I found it interesting that you guys were in South Carolina for this massive weekend for Boston. A lot of people from Boston you were with this weekend or no? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I think everybody. How uh, was, was it? Pretty good? Was it too much it Boston? It was a good time. Felt no, pretty good. Definitely not too much Boston. It felt good to hear a couple other people say, you know, oh, this game's wicked sick and stuff like that so it was yeah, nice yeah, the wicked yeah a little taste from home uh got some dunkin donuts don't get to do that often either so you know it was an awesome time I there's a dunkin donuts right down the street <laughs> there's, there's, one one there's, down literally two right. Dun- <laughs> there's one right by my house as well yeah. so when you come to my house next time go ahead and get dunkin donuts perfect i might have to get like the two gallon box of iced coffee because it, it was great to have it again but again it's literally available yeah, right, right here, here. there's Look, two dunkin donuts saturday morning yeah, yeah actually me, me too, too by the way yeah so, so, cheese croissant sandwich uh, oh, Oh, so good. They definitely deliver an iced coffee. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, It's right here in Indy. It's not the same coffee as they have on the East Coast. You did in South Carolina? Yeah. You think South Carolina Dunkin' Donut better than uh, Indiana Dunkin'? Uh, It's pretty good. I mean, 
they're closer to you know New England, so I think they kind of get Are the they? residual. I think I, I have no idea how the map. They're works. closer really? to the water. I'll give you that. Yeah, they're touching the Atlantic, so that, uh, that means so you're a lot. saying because Duncan's coming via the ocean. Bingo delivery. Yes, exactly. We get the ships uh, that come down from Boston, and they go. I think into the Kiowa Island. Port. Happy you had a great weekend. Yeah, it was it was a good time. It's a shame the Bruins lost though. Yeah, yeah. it is a shame, but it, you know, right back on that horse. We as soon as they lost, it was like, okay, boys, you know, we can't, you know. Wallow in our sorrows, if you will. We got to go on to the Celtics because that's another game seven, and now we're in the Eastern Conference Finals. At Ty Schmidt, obviously you enjoyed the weekend. You enjoyed the uh, we went Goffin yesterday. Yeah, we did go Goffin. We miss your presence on the show on Friday and Goffin. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I miss you guys Goffin. I mean, it looked as though you guys were hitting some bombs, making some putts. Played some pretty good golf. Yeah, yeah. not bad. And and battled the elements. You couldn't really tell in the video you posted. It was raining hard the last you know probably three or four holes we were out there. Yeah, we thought we were getting a free round and. Up paying like four hundred bucks for it. <laughs> yeah, I got right. bamboozled a bit, you know. <laughs> That's expensive nine holes. That was very, a very wow. Very. A siren was forcing us off the last. No, hole. I was gonna golf anyway. It was no, a beautiful no. course. Though. It was. Yeah. It and was those, a beautiful course. The carts. I mean, they. It, 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 I mean, I don't know if they were Benz or like Rolls Royce carts, but boy, the seats in there were so comfortable. So I believe comfortable. yours actually died midway yeah, out my battery there. Died. But, what? but outside of that, yeah. you know, it was. It was that nice of a golf yeah. cart? Jesus, it was a good How time. How fast they go? Uh, I don't know. We were well, it was 60. it was raining so yeah. I mean it was raining very hard. The elements yeah. were I will say it was a beautiful course. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. Had played there before. Ooh. Would play there again. Got invited to go play there by somebody that worked there for two weeks. Yep. I guess nice. we found out when we got there. Good dude. Good guy. Good dude. We ended up having to pay full price in the same. Yeah. Ran up the yeah. bill. Sounds like <laughs> yeah. good yeah. guy. Thought yeah. we were playing for free. Did not know that. Then we got there. Well worth it, though. We are supplying a good course. Yeah, it was yes. a good course. And you have to be pretty happy with how you played as well. I do feel good. Yeah, yeah, you should. I do feel good. The net that Justin Thomas was potentially burying there, you know, at least I'm getting a repeatable stroke, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that is a big deal. And just making solid contact. The putting green has really been a game changer for me. A lot more confidence stepping up behind a four or five footer. This was on nine while we're getting tornado oh. sirened off the course. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was when we would lead into paying for everything. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We had no idea, right? No, no. Was I the only one that wasn't expecting it? Oh, By no. the way, don't normally get free shit. Hate free shit. Yeah. Because when you get free shit, always need to pay back people. Uh -huh. So I don't, I don't, like somebody, anytime somebody offers me something free, by the way, Never, ever, never do it because, like, all right, you're going to hold that over my head forever. Normally how things go through my life, that's what I've experienced, so I don't even enjoy it. No, I mean, I went in there to buy a couple balls, and usually that's when they, you know, charge you for the round, and they, they made no mention of no that. Mention. So no mention. Just and like, it's a private It wasn't club. until yeah, exactly. afterwards, it wasn't until very afterwards where we were charged. It was like, oh, okay. my God. Nope. Before like, you guys we leave, to, we, we need to sell us. We need $400. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it was like, all right, sounds good. We would have played Steve's course. Yeah. Yeah. Would have played Steve's course, although we did get a chance to play a very nice course. Yes. Uh, maybe that's the new thing we do. Maybe we travel around course to course. Ooh. We'll pay $400 to play. Mm -hmm. There you okay? go. We'll pay $400 to <laughs> play play if you have a course that is our max we apologize there'll be five of us we would like cruise around we'll have some music and tunes mm -hmm. on but we need to get ready for tahoe which i think yesterday did so i appreciate you boys braving the elements out there gumpy obviously played yep. a great round oh, oh yeah boy, gumpy was crushing it that a baby gumpy yeah, we got uh, muted. No. Yeah, still muted. muted. Hell of a round for the lads. It's always good to get out there. A couple good Bud Lights out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We've paid for those as well. Those are yeah. six dollar Bud Light. Thank you, thank really. you for those. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was actually Nick. Nick made for yeah. the food. Thank you, Nick. That was awesome. That was a wild scene. Yeah, it sounds like you got that kid promoted though. I mean, as soon as yeah. you guys left, he's probably like, "Look what I just did! I just swindled these guys." They didn't out even of let us. Bucks. They didn't even let me pay for a tip for after the round. Like I would have. They mm -hmm. probably would have got five hundred dollars out of me if they were paying. You know what I mean? They probably yeah. would have got a good chance. There was only one signing part there, but what a moment! Yeah, that dude's listening right now, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful course. Thank you for tweeting us and telling us it exists. We right. have been there before. Mm -hmm. To any other courses, we got about 400 bucks to come play yours. Need to get better. Can't wait to talk to AJ Hawk about it. Congrats to uh, not Speed. Speed had the lead all weekend. Him and Justin Thomas were battering, uh, battling at the Byron Nelson. There was a bunch of people at like 21, 22 under, yeah. which I think a lot of golf fans hate. I love it. 
I like seeing guys slice and dice course. Old Cuz drove the green. I think there was like numerous people oh, yeah. that drove the green a few times. I enjoy it when that happens, although I guess the old established golfers do not enjoy that type of play. They like seeing the course, mm-hmm. you know, beat up the guys a little bit and everything, which has its day. I think whenever they go up to Europe and they're battling the wind and it's impossible to play and you punch it like 200 yards, hoping to go in the right direction. I think that's fun. I think some of the courses when they're incredibly difficult are fun because it's almost more relatable. But watching guys slice and dice courses oh, yeah. is fucking cool. And that's what it was this weekend. Who ended up winning? The uh, South Korean KH Lee was 26 under. Jordo was 25. <laughs> Shoffley was 23. Justin Thomas was 23. It was good. It was a good, good ball tournament. They were Damn. going. They were controlling the ball. And I guess that's back to back wins for old. Uh, yeah, at that tournament, yes. Yeah, at the Byron Nelson. Mm-hmm. Now, Justin Thomas did tell us that this was strictly just to get ready for this week, this upcoming week. Mm-hmm. That's right. We got a major this week. PGA, yeah, we baby. do. Mm-hmm. Justin Thomas hitting the ball well. Speed seems to be playing well. No, I don't know why he didn't win it down the stretch. He had a commanding lead there for a bit. And by commanding, I mean like one or two strokes, uh, eight, nine holes in to his Sunday round. So is that going to be on his mind going into the majors? Ooh, no. I don't know. I just saw, I also saw their uh, $19 Michelob Ultras at the uh, oh, PGA. At the place where we're? At the PGA. No. <laughs> you too. PGA Championship yeah. this weekend. Probably where you played too. Well, I don't know. I didn't I didn't get the breakdown. Nick handled the uh, yeah. Nick handled the food and beverage. Big 10 is probably pretty reasonable. Though. Yeah, pretty reasonable so. guess. <laughs> All right, let's chat about some stuff that's happening around the NFL before Ian Rappaport joins us in about 13 minutes. AJ Hawk will be in the second hour hopefully your phone calls on the five energy phone line one eight three three four mcafee i cannot wait to chat with you we got interns in here now oh Whoa. <laughs> well it's one intern another just like hanger on yeah, yeah, yeah that's sure Hey, I don't know what you're thinking. I'm out of here on Friday. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a package deal. Yeah, well, I mean, I believe they were coming into the world. Mm-hmm. Coming into the okay, world, they were right. a package deal. Mm-hmm. Now, I do believe that one has to go back and accomplish, you know, hopefully... A champion. Yeah. Get yeah, one of these. Yeah. A champion. Get another one of these. <laughs> yeah. And the other intern will be here, I guess, for the next couple months. How long does this last? I don't, I don't know. know. We'll what see. is the normal? Good I mean, question. it's off to a lot for the summer. September school starts. Probably through the summer. You know, hopefully mm-hmm. he will learn everything he needs to learn to go out into society. Yeah. Hell yeah. And make it, the world a better place. Bingo. Yeah. Like you need a laptop. You would think mm-hmm. you show up. Now, to be clear, I'm not good with interns because I don't like interns. Don't want interns, Mm -hmm. but good friend says, hey, is there any way you could potentially, I'll do it. I should have probably had an entire thesis ready for him. Like, hey, this is what you're going to need to show up with. This is what you should plan on doing. This is how this is going to work. Because the way this operated was, hey, sit down. What do you do? (laughs) (laughs) What are we going to do with you? How do we go about doing it? Seem like great guys. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah. Good kids. Seem like great guys. Mm -hmm. Raised right. Huh? Raised right. I think so. I mean, I think so. It feels like it that way. It feels like they're hard workers, what I was told. Yeah. But no laptop day one yeah. internet company, wild to me. Well, I was also just telling these guys, like, in college, you don't have a laptop. Like, what are you dicking around on during class and so stuff like that? I mean, maybe was, your cell phone. The but... one was overqualified. Yeah. 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 Built yeah. a fucking computer. Mm-hmm. Right. So, But that's so he can snipe people, call of duty. Exactly. So he doesn't have any lag in the thing. Yeah. So he's right. Watching, anime. Him and Bill, yeah, we're having a yeah. full anime virus conversation, yeah. <laughs> whatever's going on. The other guy, hey, just here for a couple yeah. days. I, I'm here to help move in. I got some other stuff to do. Two dudes, zero laptops, one internship. Both. <laughs> Internet company. You might think they're 85 years old. These guys are good guys, though. They're going to come around, aren't yeah. they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's go. Here. here we go, boys. Let's send them out in the world properly, right? Oh, yeah. That'll oh, be yeah. something we'll think about doing. Uh, let's talk about the NFL news that has taken place. Mm-hmm. Jarvis Landry, back to the New Orleans Saints on a one-year deal with $3 million guaranteed, basically, and then another $3 million of earning incentives, mostly based on individual stats. A good value option for New Orleans, while Landry gets his one-year deal that allows him to get paid again if he produces. Mm. This is via Ian Rappaport and others breaking this news on Friday at about 4.40. After the show ends, Friday night, Friday early evening, appears to be the time that everything happens. Maybe we should game plan for this going into the future. Maybe we should think about this as a show that goes off the air at 3 every single day on Mm -hmm. Friday. 
and everything happens immediately after we get off the air. <laughs> right. But Jarvis Landry going back to New Orleans, uh, back to Louisiana, is a sweet thing. Him and the Honey Badger, you know, going back and playing together, they already got the photos posted. You can see what they're trying to build and what they're trying to do down there. Jameis Winston has a plethora of weapons now. Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara. Then you look in the uh, gadget factory, Taysom Hill is still mm -hmm. down there. Jarvis Landry's available. This entire squad could go on to do some yeah. incredible things. Couple follow-ups. Mm. Drew Brees says, maybe I play in a pickleball tournament. Maybe I come back to the NFL. Whoa, whoa. He says that after tweeting, holy hell, with all this is Drew Brees' exact word. Despite speculation from media about my future this fall, I'm currently on the side. Oh. I may work for NBC like I did last year. I may play football again. I may focus on business and philanthropy. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Huh? We'll see. Which go one and one, by the way. Sure. You do really good at the first one. That second one normally follows. Yep. Every big time business person is known as what? A philanthropist. <laughs> that is right. So maybe I'll work on those two. Who knows? I may focus, uh, uh, I may trade for the pickleball tour. Senior oh. golf tour, maybe. Huh? Champions, oh. good luck. Oh. Hey, good luck, Drew. <laughs> is that golf tour a shot at you? I don't know what it is. It's like, I think it's a shot of him being retired and being older. But I just want to let you know, how old is he? 40 what? 43? 40, 43 years old. 40? I got eight years a head start on you of training for the senior store. Yeah. Okay. It's called the champion store, too. Have a little bit of fucking respect. <laughs> One time. Anyways, maybe he coaches the kids. Good day. Yeah. Yeah. Or all of the above. Maybe he coaches his kid, plays in what? the champion store, what? What? plays in the pickleball tour that he is so damn good at oh, pickleball. Uh huh. Maybe he works on his philanthropy and his business. Maybe he plays football again. Maybe he works for the NBC. And maybe he is still undecided. All of the above might be true. Drew Brees says, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing next year. How does anybody else know what I got going on? But this announcement comes shortly after a couple of tweets where he starts looking at all the weapons that the New Orleans Saints has and says, man, it would be a lot of fun to maybe throw them the football. It would be a lot of fun for me to maybe get back into football. Man, signing Jarvis and Tyron Matthew makes me want to come back and play again. Great additions, leaders, and players. That's fucking good. Wow. wow. Drew's Come on. back. Let's go, yeah. Drew. The thing about Drew is... He's never going to miss an opportunity to make it about himself one last time. <laughs> what did happen with him at NBC? Allegedly, follow-ups were he didn't enjoy the in-studio work. He enjoyed the analyst and broadcast part of the game. But the only thing you can do really at NBC on game is Sunday Night Football or Notre Dame football. Andrew Marchand of the New York Post, uh, Post reported on Sunday that Drew Brees, the broadcaster, is out after one season at NBC. Marchand reports that Brees wants to do games, isn't a fan of being in the studio, and there wasn't much for him to do outside of Notre Dame booth after Chris Collins were signed a contract extension recently. Did we know that? No, I didn't. Congrats, yeah, Chris. Hey. Hey, way to go, Chris. Hey, that'd be Chris. Chris. Hey. That'd be Chris and Tariko. Yeah. 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 Interesting timing by Breeze with his next two tweets. In his first one, he said the Saints were signing Jarvis Landry Tyron and Matthew makes you want to play a little bit again. Nine minutes later, he tweeted he's undecided about his future. Huh. So friends of Drew Brees are allegedly telling reporters, uh, one friend of Brees told me Sunday night he, has, he hasn't mentioned playing football to him this offseason. Okay. I'm a good friend, Drew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We push sleds in a parking lot together. We're part of the same workout cult. That's right. We pray together. We uh, we got little league baseball together. Mm -hmm. Drink smoothies. We're having smoothies together. Yeah, yeah. smack a tight amount. Yeah, together. elbowing unassuming people in the forehead. Well, it was more top. Yeah, it was neck. I Back guess I should neck. say. Yeah. yeah, that's what happened to Ty by Drew Brees. But <laughs> his friend, who's really close to him, said, "Hey, Pete, listen. He hasn't mentioned me at all playing." Playing football. No. I mean, every once in a while we're getting a hot dog next to each other at the same baseball game because <laughs> our kids are playing baseball. Let me tell you, his kid's got great arm. Yeah. Good arm. Arm. Great arm. Good player. Now, his other son, you know, kind of can't turn too My real well. in the outfield. So well. he's actually asked me to kind of coach him because I had a little bit of time in the minors. Mm -hmm. So me and Drew's relationship has really gotten pretty big. And he hasn't told me one time about playing football in the offseason. Not one time. And his left shoulder surgery, May 2nd at age 43, after not playing football for 16 months, would seem to make a, a return to football problematic at best. Another person who knew Breeze told uh, Peter King, he's not playing football. No. <laughs> that person knows Drew Breeze real well. Yeah. yeah. Ever, he's not playing football. Mm -hmm. Business philanthropy? Maybe. Sure. Maybe. Coach him with his kids like he does with me? Huh? That's, I'm that source, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Who knows what Drew Brees is going to do? It doesn't sound like he's playing football at all, though. Jameis Winston's got to be sitting there and saying, you know, when I was a kid, I thought my passion was football. But then I found out when the game was taken away from me that my passion was 
playing football. Okay. Actual quote from Jameis Winston on NFL Network. Now Drew Brees is trying to take away the playing thing again from Jameis. Jameis can't be happy, but he's got to focus on himself. But that Saints team, they were once $70 million over the salary cap not too long ago. Now, with additions of the Honey Badger and Jarvis Landry, restructuring everybody's deal and a quarterback that they're focused on, a lot of Saints fans are getting chirpy on the internet, oh, yeah. and I think they should. I think there's good reason for the Saints fans to get chirpy, even though we thought they were fucking dead. When Sean Payton retires out of nowhere, maybe to become an owner of the Miami sure. Dolphins. Mm -hmm. That has not been legitimized or confirmed, but that retirement did seem to come out of absolute nowhere. There's $70 million over salary cap. They got no damn quarterback. Now here on May 16th, it feels like they got some direction and some hope. Good for the Saints, man. And just like looking at the previous drafts these rookie wide receivers they get olave too like they actually do have a very good offense good o-line and it feels like their defense isn't going anywhere good. they yeah they hired from within with dennis allen nothing really changes on that side except he got the honey badger now the good leader right everybody yeah. has the landlord yeah. out there mm -hmm. Travis uh -huh. andrew good leader coming back to the louisiana roots too i want to see the saints do well good for every, all parties down there you know what else is good for all parties any publicity mm -hmm. yeah I learned that from a report this morning that involved a lot of very successful people, one of them being Jerry Jones. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Jerry Jones speaking about his Dallas Cowboys in an interview with Peter King is fantastic. <laughs> to Jones, there's no such thing as bad coverage of the Cowboys. Bad coverage makes the Cowboys human. And he is positive his fan base loves the human. Okay. Okay. Okay? Good to know. <laughs> yeah. My fan base loves the human that makes us human, and the human that makes us human is the Cowboys and the way we operate. Let me tell you a story, Jones says. To Peter King, oh. mm -hmm. warming to this topic, a few years after I bought the team, I'm out in Los Angeles, La La Land, my hometown, <laughs> having lunch with David Hill. You know David Hill? David Hill, one of Murdoch boys, Australian man. Okay. Mm. And Ed Gorn, okay, Ed Gorn, not Australian, actually from Carolina, I do believe, mm -hmm. but pretty important, big swinging peckers at Fox Sports. <laughs> at that time, there were a lot of negative headlines about the Cowboys. Michael Irvin was in the headlines. People were saying the owner's an outlaw. <laughs> so that day I told him, listen, I'm going to fucking tighten up the lid on this franchise. We're going to get control of this team. And David Hill, Australian man, one of the heads of Fox Sports, he jumped up and he said, No! Do not touch my boys. They're television gold. Don't even fucking think about it. <laughs> the foibles, the soap opera, the issues, they create interest. Yeah, in the senior bowl, I can't see what's next, but free agency, the draft, <laughs> training camp, we always got something going on. People follow us year in, year out, owner every year, every now and then gets it in the paper. It just adds to the interest. All of it. People love the Cowboys. Well, you're goddamn right, then. I'm going to force the Cowboys <laughs> down everybody's throat forever. And that was the moment uh, that the fucking Dallas Cowboys were on primetime television <laughs> every single weekend. David Hill, Australian man, pretty high up, I believe, in the Murdoch world. Murdoch owns the Fox thing mm -hmm. and is also the person being uh, represented, basically, in succession. Yes. Uh -huh. Which adds even more intrigue okay. to the entire conversation. This might be Tom Wombs again. Yeah, it's going to be Wombs again. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but David Hill told Jerry Jones, like, no, 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 no. You need to have the eyes uh, of a network or the eyes of a business whenever you're looking at the Cowboys because they are. They're chatted about in every single regard. There was actually a rule that we were told by one of the heads of TV and I'm just going to say heads of TV because this is one of the people that just created modern sports uh, television. Yeah. All right, here you go. You get your topics that you think are bigger in the day. Then you go ahead and hit, you, you hit LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Then you go ahead and hit the Cowboys. Oh. Then you go ahead and wrap it up with Tim Tebow. And then, boom, we're back at the top with all the stories. <laughs> and then guess who's back? Go ahead and hit LeBron James. Go ahead and hit the Cowboys. Tebow's got anything? Fucking hit Tebow. <laughs> yep. And then, bang, guess what? You're back at the top. The only average watch time or listen time is 12 minutes. You're able to get everybody. If you have a two-hour show, guess what? You actually have eight shows because mm -hmm. you have eight 15-minute shows. You have a three-hour show. You have 12 shows. Look at what you're doing. This is just basically what it is. You do this, the daily to hot topics. By the way, if LeBron or the Cowboys or Tim Tebow are a part of the headlines of the day, 
Oh, oh boy. This is a good day. Yeah. Yep. This is a good day. The Cowboys basically became that in everybody's minds. And I think it all begins from this conversation with the TV executive where Jerry Jones is like, we need to actually let the bullshit out. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't like something I'm doing, fine. Let them fucking talk about it. If they talk about it, guess who they're talking about? The human that is the Dallas Cowboys. And guess what human they're going to see on prime time, fucking 18 weeks out of 18 weeks. Even on the bye, we're going to have our players getting interviewed during the prime time games. They're going to see the Dallas Cowboys. I think the way Jerry views his team is why it is so successful. He said he thinks he could fetch $10 billion for the Dallas Cowboys right now if he was to sell. Bought him, I think, for $100 million or something like that. Mm -hmm. If he was to sell it for $10 billion, I think it would be an understatement, especially with where, or undersell, especially with where the NFL is headed. He put that on, if he put the Cowboys on the market right now, Elon just bought fucking Twitter for $46 billion. Yeah. Okay, Bezos wants to get into the game. And then there's numerous people that we have never heard of mm -hmm. that get the most popular, the most famous, the most forced down everybody's throat team of the biggest league on earth. There would be an overpayment for that by far. Jerry knows it. Don't love that he's necessarily thinking about it because I think the league is much better with Jerry Jones in it. But the way he operates is fucking cold-blooded business I And I think... Jerry kind of looks at the Cowboys. Not only does he want them to win and stuff like that, but he also kind of looks at them like a like so. He kind of look, he kind of looks at them like the WWE. Like like yes. it's entertainment anywhere and everywhere, and everything is good. Any way that you could get eyes on your team is good. And maybe he doesn't trust Stephen Jones. Maybe that's why he wants to. Oh. Well, Stephen Jones also told him not to show that entire draft card. Mm -hmm. So he's like, well, fuck this guy. <laughs> good taco. And that was good news for our company. Joining us right now is a man who breaks all types of news. Good news, bad news, any news. Yeah. Maybe even makes up news sometimes. Oh. That's what the internet says all that's, the time about oh, this yeah. guy. Fresh off a golf trip in South Carolina where Connor was. He was lucky he didn't see Connor because Connor said he was going to give him a wedgie. Which I didn't even know those still exist. I don't think Ian would have been expecting that at all. He played like 72 holes. It would be tough with your underwear up your ass. Yeah. Joining us now, the senior NFL insider for NFL Network and the NFL as a whole, the host of the weekly wrap up of the Rap Sheet and Friends, us being friends, he being Rap Sheet, ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Hey. Hey. What's up, pal? So, um, Connor's phone didn't work in Charleston. Was it, was oh. it bad service? Oh. Like, because sometimes I drive through kind of like the woods there, windy yeah, roads, and the call wouldn't pick up. So, is that what happened? Did you call him? No, I thought he would call me. Oh, I mean, well, just kind of be like, sorry. hey, bro, like, Same we're kind of like around the court, maybe come like hang out. But I didn't. Northeast? Maybe. I must about? have had bad service. No, no, I don't have Rapture's number. I sent him like 15 DMs. So, I don't did know. Did you really? Did you say, why don't you follow me? Uh, no, I, I did actually address that at a certain point, but I definitely DM'd him, I believe. So, why'd you blow off Connor, yeah. you fucking nerd? What's that nerd? about? What's this no, all about? You don't want to hang out with Connor? I would, say that's, I would say that's not accurate. I didn't get any DMs. Usually, if someone slides in my DMs, as Connor claims he did, but obviously didn't do, that's not true. I would get a ding probably right in the middle of one of my backswings, which wow. I did not get. So, yeah. listen, hey. maybe next time I'm on a golf trip in Kiowa and you're on a bachelor party in Charleston, maybe then we'll – maybe next time we'll meet up. Hey, okay. we saw you golfing mm. on NFL Network. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think you're – hey, a little bit of – you know, a little bit too much there, you think? A little bit of, uh, you know, abuse leads to restriction. You're out there golfing on NFL Network in front of everybody. You know, Garofalo said it was a bad swing. He looked did. like a good uh, yeah, swing. I was gonna say. Good good swing. Swing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was, you know, left side – the only thing that was a little too much was – I kind of drew it around a little bit. I wanted to have it settle. Um, left side of the green, two putt par. And I will say this, like we've, you know, I've been through a lot of my career. There's been a lot of big moments, some not so good moments, some stress. Live uh, TV golf shot while everyone's talking to my backswing and still getting on the green. One of my greatest achievements, I would say. Let's go. Cool. Congrats, Thank Rapshie. You, Rapshie. I mean, you guys were six wide at that time. Yeah. yeah. So I'm assuming a lot of people were watching a lot, a lot. And that was going to hit the internet regardless. We could not see where your ball went. No. Nope. Not one bit. Not one bit. This is like um, when I used to punt <clears throat> in front of a crowd. You know, there'd be like, uh, let's say there was kids or something <laughs> out there. And I'd hit a bad ball. Or let's say there's bloggers out there or scouts or anything. Like, let's say people right. that could cover the game were out there. And I would hit a ball, and I would uh, motherfuck myself if it was bad. Mm -hmm. And then I hit a good ball. I wouldn't say anything. I forget who came up to me and was like, you know, if you said nothing after your bad ball, 
nobody would know. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody would. Nobody would have any idea. They would think that you meant to do what you were doing there. But as soon as you say, "Ah, oh, fuck," everybody knows. It did not go how you thought it was going to go. Just something to think about if you would like to cover your tracks or whatever. And I was like, that's brilliant. So now, every time I watch somebody golf, you know, on, on the internet, I try to at least get a little glimpse of where the ball is going. Because if you just do a pose and hold it. Yeah, it's the hold that does it. I mean, there's, oh my God, this guy just put the ball exactly where he wanted mm -hmm. it to go. So what I'm saying to you is because you guys had 15 people on the screen at the same time, your screen was like this big or whatever. We would have no idea if it was good or not. No. Swing, Swing looked very great. smooth. Yeah. It did. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was a, it was a really nice shot. Um, the other <laughs> thing that does it, the hold is good. The twirl, oh, you can oh, hit wow. it into the trees. And if you twirl, everyone's like, wow, that guy really got a hold of that one. Just a <laughs> quick, you know? Yeah, drop it in there. Let's follow yeah. up with some bad things you've done in your career. Matt Corral said, you're full of shit. You hear this? <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you hear this? Uh, I did. You got added a bunch, I assume, right? Because we talked to you about the Matt Corral thing. Yep. Because it felt as if, in the way the Matt Corral conversation happened by you, friend of the show, noted mm -hmm. good guy, by the way, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fair. Appreciate I think you've it. been fair through a lot of things and having to cover a lot of things. I don't think anybody would say you, were, you weren't. But the way the Matt Corral coverage happened, I think we were all surprised. We're like, whoa, rap, this kind of came out of nowhere. You said to us, had to explain to people that were wondering why hmm. Matt Corral had fell. You only had like 20 seconds. Maybe the way you delivered it wasn't as good. Sure. I think you took ownership of that. But now Matt Corral's coming out and saying, that has never happened. I never talk about that. Do you hate that your name is still involved in this and this is not what you're in this business for at all? And how do you feel about the entirety of the situation now? Uh, first of all, this is part of it, right? Like it's the same way that when players go out there and don't play well, that people criticize like to get the good, you get the bad, like me saying something public, like there's always a possibility that when I say something publicly, it's going to have some sort of negative backlash or someone's going to be upset about it. I don't mind. I mean, I, I wish everything was roses, but it's really not a big deal because I did say it um, and there's no hiding it. And like it's it's out there. Uh, the, the thing that I would sort of take issue with is I believe um, Matt Corral said that he never said that. So the quote from him, and I believe this was a CBS article. Oh, he's prepared. Is, Look at this. He was talking about, he said, I got tired of feeling like that, just making, tired of making excuses. Yeah. I got tired of having vices for my problems like drinking. I don't even drink anymore. And that's what I was referring to. And he says he never said that, but he did say it. So he was it, calling it a distraction as opposed to a problem. You were reporting it more so as a problem. So there was a little bit, I think, of right. a miss, right? Don't you think? Wait, I mean, I I don't spend time with Matt Corral daily, so I don't know okay, how this is. The hope for me and for him is that this is something that is in the past. And if this is just a blip on the, his radar screen, like that would be amazing. What I was saying to you guys, though, was like I was – the, what I addressed was what he addressed publicly. So when I mentioned drinking, he had mentioned drinking. Got so it, got says, it. Okay, anyway. so it was in the way he said it with, I feel like he he was trying to explain that he is more dialed in than he's ever been. Like, hey, even though this is happening, I kind of cut this off. And by the way, as somebody who did this very similar move in my career, I have 100% faith that Matt Corral is going to go on to have success and you can change and you can move on. I just think he probably took exception with how you're reporting it as if, you know, I don't know. It's fucking weird whenever you start having to report on personal things. We would just like yeah. to talk sports, but you got to do that all the time. Let's talk sports and let's, by the way, Matt Corral, go get him, dude. Oh, yeah. Go get him, dude. Uh, Jarvis Landry. Who all was interested there? Do we know? How, were the Saints by far their, his biggest offer? Or was he taking a little bit of a discount to go back to Louisiana? Because there's a lot of fans and a lot of fan bases out know, there saying, I know. whoa, 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 we could afford a $3 million deal with another $3 million in incentives for one year with fucking Jarvis Landry. Yeah, it, the, the reaction, I should never be surprised, but I was surprised by the reaction from so many fan bases and others when he Pulse. signs for a deal that doesn't look that big, you know, the, the possibility of six million, like, OK, that seems fine. The fact that it's a base value of three is, you know, for a veteran with a big name, it's it's pretty low. Um, he had an, a nice offer from the Browns uh, that would have been a pay cut. And a lot of times guys would just 
even if the pay cut offer is better than what he ended up getting, a lot of times guys would just rather take the other team because they don't want to they don't want to take a pay cut from their current team. Uh. He remember basically told them like I'm not going to take this offer. You should cut me. They cut him, and then the Browns went away because they drafted someone basically in his role. I believe David Bell, the third rounder. So like when that went away, he lost a little bit of leverage. The Ravens had some interest, but it didn't sound like a ton. So I think the opportunity to make six and to just do a one-year deal was what drew him. And and look, the money's low, but the one-year deal is important. Like, you'd rather that over a three-year deal. Because let's say Jarvis takes this little one-year deal and kills it. Then he's going to make real money next year because he just signed a one-year. Like, that, the money is fine. Having the one-year deal is really, to me, the big value here. Yeah, absolutely. He can re-up once again. I think he's yeah. going to have a great year. Hopefully, Jameis is able to be an absolute stud next year because the amount of weapons that they have, them being $70 million over the cap just a few weeks ago and Sean Payton retiring out of nowhere to what seems like a pretty steady leadership. They have great, you know, skill players, role players. Taysom Hill focused just all the way in at being a little, you know, gadget guy. Yeah. It, they might be in a great spot down there in the NFC South. Obviously, Tom Brady's still there. And I think the reason why Jarvis Landry and others – uh, don't appreciate pay cuts from their uh, their own programs or where they are because in, it's hard not to get past the thought of you've seen what I've done for you. Like you've seen what I've done in the building for you. You've seen what I've done on the field for you. For somebody else making that offer, it's like, oh, they don't know me behind the scenes yet. They don't know what else I bring. So that's, I think, why – I don't say the grass is greener, but why some guys get a little bit like – Oh, fuck you. Like, this team doesn't know me as well yeah. as you do. you trying to undercut me other, as opposed to these people. Hopefully they won't do it in the future. For the Browns, I see Deshaun Watson's taking everybody down to uh, the Bahamas Ooh. for a team chemistry, okay. uh, a little building, camaraderie building, uh, operation, getaway, probably work out a little bit. Baker Mayfield, is he also uh, leading the workouts? or mm, No. No, Baker, uh, Baker will not be present at the Bahamas – what? I thought it was everybody no. on the offense. Yeah. I thought it was everybody well, on the offense. I think everybody, you know, but but Baker man. I don't know if everyone. I, I'm, what? I'm sure, oh, I'm, my God. No I'm trip to the Bahamas? Player, if I'm an offensive player with the Browns, I would probably find time to get down there because it seems like a lovely place. Baker is, you know, I I hate to like I'm, – I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm not. But I understand from Baker Mayfield's standpoint why he'd be like, you know what, I'm going to stay away. Uh, I'm just not going to – because – he, does, he feels a certain way about the organization. He believes that they told him one thing and did the other. I would say the opportunity to sign Deshaun or trade for Deshaun Watson was something that even caught the Browns from, like, it was even kind of out of nowhere for them because, remember, he told them no a day, ago, a day before that. So, like, I think at that point they probably told Baker, like, okay, you're good, and then they traded for Deshaun. I get it. I understand why he wants to stay away. Most important thing for him is to, figure out how he separates from the Browns if he separates from the Browns because I don't see that market going anywhere anytime soon. He's owed, owed guaranteed money, right? So he's yes. in a very good spot. He just has to show up at the mandatory stuff. So when's that come up? June, July? That is, it's either the first week of June or the second week of June. And then he's got to be at training camp. You know, it, <laughs> training camp would be awkward. I was, I'm sure he will show up. I'm sure it will either be some sort of agreed upon, you know what, you can sit out, or maybe like a hold in where he has migraines or hamstring injury or a back injury or oh, something. Oh, like geez. it's all awkward. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I think in the oh, end they can come up with a situation that both sides agree with, but it is going to be weird until they get to that point. Uh, I guess NFL officials, Josina Anderson broke the news and then you confirmed it. Uh, NFL officials are scheduled to meet with Deshaun Watson this week in Texas. Yes. Yes. Wait, is this, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. what is, it, is this the first time? Do they have a bunch of evidence that they're going to present to him and ask him about? How does this whole thing go in your eyes uh, via Josina Anderson? So the timing is important. Uh, and yes, I confirm this. The league declined comment, but it is accurate. They're going to be in uh, Texas this week to talk to Deshaun. The way the league handles their investigation is often, not all the time, but often, the subject is the last person to be spoken with. So when they talk to him, you figure they'll present whatever they've collected, and then at some point relatively soon, come up with some sort of penalty or not. So you would think, and you know, traditionally the league, let's say in the 
summer days when everyone's ready to go away, sometimes those are the times they come out with penalties. It just sort of happens that way, I would say. Friday afternoon. Um, Friday and, 440? Yeah. What? Is there extradition in the Bahamas? I mean, maybe on a Friday in July. Anyway, um, but this means that the Sarah theoretically Lava. the investigation <laughs> is coming to a close and we might have some sort of resolution soon on is he going to be suspended, is he not, what this means. So this is a big deal because if he's suspended, let's say they find out he's will that be announced this week or probably not? They're going to take this intel in and yeah. then f next week or a week after they'll get into the entire rollout of that because if he's going to be suspended 10 games, Baker better get down in Bahamas. That's yeah. right. Because he's got a lot of football to be playing down there potentially. Can I, I guess? Mean, I, sometimes I'll, I'll say things and report things and everyone will react and I'll be sort of like, huh? Um, the when I talked about Baker Mayfield not being traded and starting for the Browns, like I did it on the draft broadcast and I think Daniel Jeremiah basically was like, you've lost your mind, something like that. Like if there is a lengthy suspension, it actually makes sense for everyone to bury the thing and for him to go out and start and maybe do well and then get traded midseason. Like it actually benefits everyone if they can get past the feelings part of this. And they brought in Jacoby Brissett, who has been a starter before and a great backup. So what would the plan be for him? Who knows? Fascinating stuff. Maybe we'll get an answer yeah. sooner than later to all of it. But the Baker thing is going to be so fascinating to keep an eye on because it feels like he's completely hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's going to be a team that's going to need somebody at some point. How does he keep all of the guaranteed monies without uncomfortably, I mean, that's going to be a fine balance there. Eighteen and a half million is that what it is? Yeah. And so I guess it's a lot like, of fucking guaranteed money yeah. that you can't have, you know, taken out of your bank account if you're Baker Mayfield. Right. I mean, that's to me for Baker, like, you know, being in football shape is important. Being ready is important. All that stuff. Making sure he gets all of his money. I, I always want everyone to get all their money. Uh, I hope he does. He will have to show up and then we'll kind of be in the locker room like going on how's everyone it'll be weird what if baker just shows up and starts slinging it in oh. puts it puts on a highlight reel hey cleveland brown social media team send this to all 31 other teams <laughs> i need to get out of here right yeah. now uh go ahead ty rap sheet you reported uh jair alexander signing that massive extension i think most packers fans are pretty juiced about that how long has that been in the works and like would they have been able to do that if they re-signed Devonte adams or was it kind of an either or it's, it would have been – I think they could have done it. It would have taken a lot of work to figure it out. And they would have had to push more money into the future. But you're right. Like trading De – they did not want to trade Devontae. Don't get me wrong. But trading Devontae Adams at least made it easier to do this deal. It has been in the works for, I think, four months now. Um, and I think it's a really cool situation for both sides. Like this is a really feel-good deal. It's a really nice contract. Four years, $84 million. He gets $31 million in year one. Hell yeah. Damn. Hell yeah. Hey, this backs up the claims that they were going to pay Devontae Adams what he was asking for, right? No, they offered him They offered him a bigger deal, I think, over the first two years than what the Raiders ended up offering him. Jeez. Just he didn't want to be there. Get me <laughs> out of here. Yeah. Old lady from the Happy Gilmore. That's right. Man. Ah, that's crazy. Oh, so he, he, they were able to pay because like thirty-one million in the first year. I think everybody's first question was like, thought we weren't able to afford anybody. That's why Devonte went. But then we all forget. I think that lost in that report was that the Packers allegedly made a competing offer to keep him around, and he chose to go elsewhere because yeah. then the narrative became: remember, Aaron Rodgers took too much money because you reported. Instead of the Fugues contract, the actual contract for him, as opposed to how you do literally everybody else. Right. Until that point, mm -hmm. you have changed your coverage now. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, Ian. Thank you for doing that. But everybody was saying because Aaron took so much money, they couldn't afford any other players. They couldn't afford Devontae. But they did make an offer to Devontae. Yeah. Now they're paying Jair Alexander $31 million next year. So Packers still have some room, it sounds like. I mean, they got all that. Uh, it's, this is really an argument, not an argument, but a discussion of cap versus cash. They have cash. They have plenty of yeah, cash. Two hundred million dollars right. in real estate yeah. around Lambeau that just goes into uh, some nice fun war chest. Some well, war and, the, uh, and the stock, you know, they I think they made sixty four. They made a lot of money in those stock things that they do. Um, shareholders we, yeah, open up on, for more dudes. shareholders. Fugazi more papers. shareholders. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. The, the reason I like they do just I, collect like a hundred million dollars every single now. time. I mean, it's 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 like an ATM. It's amazing. Um, 
The reason I like the Jair Alexander deal is, is, is because have like that. he yeah. came yeah. back this year from a, shoulder, a major shoulder injury, fought all the way back, and got to play in the playoffs, and like basically worked for three months to play in one game, and then this is a little bit of like a, it's not why he got the contract, but it's a reward for like balling out and get at least getting to the playoffs. Like this was, it's a lot of good faith, and I think it's really cool that the two sides got here. Look at them doing things Hell the yeah. right way. Hell Look yeah. Actors. Murphy and Guti doing things the right way. Yeah. Hey, way to go. We appreciate that. Thank you, boys. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Rabshi, what's going on with the Raiders? Is there going to be some, uh, like, punishments maybe with them, or what do you think is going to happen? This is uh, stemming from an article that basically detailed how the Raiders were being run all the way up until like last year or the year before that. Yeah. All the way up until like 2019 or 2020, the Raiders were basically being run in a back room by people smoking cigs going, oh, we'll pay those bills later. <laughs> yeah. These people need money. Who cares? They didn't pay the light, uh, the electric bill when they moved to the Raiders. The <laughs> lights, when they moved to Las Vegas, the lights actually shut off in their building. There had to be people sitting there saying, this is the highest fucking level. This is the NFL right now. And then now, allegedly, Mark Davis is more hands-on. He's brought more people in, independent reviews of how things were being run in the past. It sounds like they were running business terribly in the past. I guess there was allegations of sexual misconduct as well as financial problems. What, is, what do you know about this? This was via the New York Times. Yeah. It's insane to think that a team in the NFL, the biggest league on earth, would be operating like this. But it sounds like it is. Is this insanity or, or is this real? Or, or something in between. I think the NFL is looking into it, and I think the, you know, hopefully for the Raiders who have, you know, as a, all, all that stuff you said is, We're back is true. Like, I mean, all the allegations, all the, it's all, and then on the football field, it feels like the opposite. Like, good GM, good head coach. They got a quarterback. They paid. They traded for Devonte Adams. So much good on the field coming, and then it feels like in the offices, it's the opposite. NFL's looking into it. I know the Raiders have sort of done an internal review, trying to figure out like. What's what? How to run things properly? Some of this stems from uh, how do we, uh, how do we do uh, this? Uh, We've had this team for a long time, man. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are we supposed I to know. do? Yeah, Davis came out and said uh, we're overpaying taxes. Who does that? <laughs> Who overpays taxes? What a line, by the way. We're <laughs> for instance some of the financial problems. We're overpaying taxes. It's like, that's not why the IRS is investing. <laughs> the IRS never would be, eh, I think you paid us too much here. I don't, yeah. I don't know if that's taking place. What, they have no clue what they're doing over there? I don't think, I, I don't understand how that makes any sense. How's that even I, happen? I got a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions. And I, don't, <laughs> and, I don't, and I don't understand, I don't understand how they got here while running a multi-billion dollar organization and building a stadium and moving. I, I mean, I don't like, and That's like, a lot of shit to have yeah. to oversee. Mm -hmm. The construction, and the contractors, like, yeah. the city, the um, the guidelines, the, the restrictions, everything about it. And like, so Mark Davis gets a lot of, you know, some people. I don't. Some people ridicule his haircut. Well, no, there was that one time he had a backpack on, right? Uh -huh. And he was at the owners' meetings, and he had a full starter Raiders jacket on mm -hmm. with a backpack on, and he sat down on a high back chair. <laughs> And his backpack was up behind his, head, his head, like it was yeah. a backdrop, and he was giving interviews looking up, and his hair was right there, and the back backpack was high, and his hands were in his pocket, and that came one day after he said, I'm going to dinner, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I think everything that's said about him is maybe properly just, but I don't know if any of us understand him as a human at all or a business person now, it sounds like. Right, and that's what I, I'm trying to like figure out all of this, because Let's just assume that some of what you described is true. I think that's prob like some levels of that are true. How does an organization that did not keep the lights on, literally didn't keep the lights on, also engineer one of the most stunning moves we've seen in the – oh, my God. I mean, All right, guys. <laughs> He's, literally, I nailed it. Starter Raiders jacket, happy about that. Back, yeah. back, yeah. back, back, back up, hair, yeah. No, it's uh, that's how etched in my mind this moment is. Yeah, that's because that's a that's an owner of the NFL. Multi, it's a fresh yeah. cut, maybe a multi fresh. billionaire. And mm -hmm. he was the one that everybody was meaning to talk to because this was after the John Gruden emails that's that we right. all assumed was going to lead to a lot more. And he comes out and says, Yeah, I, I think we should let all emails <laughs> yeah. with that backpack sitting up. I mean, it was it's an interesting thing, it's a fascinating thing because 
in all reports, it sounds like he hasn't been involved with the team until like the last year or so, but he's always been around at games. So he just shows up at games and then hands off and lets everybody else run it. And then he's finding out that they stunk at what they were doing or how's this? But they, they did on the field. They did. I mean, made the playoffs. Like, and I think he did let Gruden kind of run the show and do his thing, which there was a lot that didn't go great. Right. I mean, there were a lot of bad personnel decisions, oh, a, yeah. some bad trades, but he really let Gruden kind of do it. Um, but then got really involved in the coaching search, like, you know, obviously met, went to dinner with everyone and, and kind of engineered the whole coaching search and had a, you know, hired a guy in Josh McDaniels that a lot of people didn't think they could do. So that's what I'm trying to understand is the dichotomy between incredible business, getting all that free money from Las Vegas and a new stadium and a shiny new head coach and GM versus the guy who they didn't pay the lighting bill and they had to turn the lights off. Yeah, it seems like Plus, it. Or maybe stuff that's a lot worse and not even joke, not even worth joking about. So yes. I guess the NFL is looking into it and I'm going to be fascinated by what everyone finds. The highest level. You know, things happen throughout a day, I think, in every NFL building where some fuckery takes place and people go, this is the highest level. Like, hey, this is the NFL. Couldn't even imagine walking in like what we had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, did the firefighters cut the power? <laughs> We didn't uh, pay. No. Oh, shit. shit. I saw the, I thought it was a UPS note <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> that was the power note. They were saying, hey, they're going to turn it off. Because there's warnings to that. Oh, right? yeah. Like oh, yeah, numerous many. warnings to that. Yeah. And they're they just, probably send emails. Oh, last question here, Ian. We appreciate you joining us. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, Ian, Antonio Brown just uh, tweeted out that he wants to retire a Steeler. Um, there's also rumors that maybe Emmanuel Sanders comes back for a reunion. They have a very young wide receiver in the room. Yeah. Here we go. Is there a chance they sign a, a veteran wide receiver? Probably not Antonio Brown. Maybe Manuel Sanders. Anything like that going on? Yeah, I, I would be a little surprised if there was an Antonio Brown reunion with the Steelers. Emmanuel Sanders, so he's he is a really, really good broadcasting uh, prospect. He's been on NFL Network at times. Like He is really good. And I think what he's trying to figure out now is should he retire and just be a broadcaster or maybe do one more year? Steelers actually would make a lot of sense, yeah. and he is a good dude, so and so cool. like he would be a good in the locker room veteran guy who probably would make not a big salary but would be valuable. But I think that's what he's trying to figure out is like, does he go one more year? Or does he just jump into our world um, and just kind of roll from there? It's and you know these veterans don't necessarily need to go to like OTAs or whatever. So I imagine he's got some time, but um, would definitely make sense if he ended up playing football and it was the Steelers. Last question for me, and I can't thank you enough for joining us. Uh, do you keep up with the sports media news? You just told, talked about Emmanuel Sanders maybe joining our yeah. world. Hey, I Drew, love it. Drew Brees says, hey, listen, I might be playing, working at NBC. Mm -hmm. I might be pickleballing. Yep. I might be business and philanthropy. Mm -hmm. I might be playing football again. Oh. I might be training for the Champions Golf Tour. I might be coaching my kids. Or I might do all of it. I have no idea. How'd this work out? Because there was alleged rumors of him getting traded to Fox a couple weeks ago. He wants to call games, I think, is what's being reported. And NBC doesn't have the Rolodex of games to call. Do you know anything about this? Or do you kind of stay out of this business? I, I kind of love the media speculation world. Okay. Uh, it's fun. All right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, so my read on this thing, he's not playing again. Right? That was, I mean, Dennis Allen kind of came out and said it, but, like, I think he was knowing what would get all of our attention and get the retweets. Oh. He mentioned that. Drew? I think, oh, no. Not true. Drew? He wouldn't make it about himself. Pretty savvy. Pretty savvy. Oh, he's good. He was good, at, he was good in the studio, too. He hated it. He fucking hated it, I guess. Um, He's not playing again. Pickleball, I don't know if he – I mean, pickleball would actually make some sense. He'll have some free time. Um, I imagine he's very good at it. Um, it didn't sound like it worked out at NBC. Uh, I mean, my guess is he's probably not thrilled that it leaked. Could he – could I – I mean, I could see him calling games again, but you're right, NBC just doesn't have the, the amount of games. So, like, I'm sure we'll see him again, just not on the field. Well, great answer. We appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who has all the inside information, he's off the golf course and back in his basement. We appreciate the hell out of you. Senior NFL insider for the league and the network, Ian Rappaport. Hey, 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 hey. All right, let's get to a break here before hour two begins in about three minutes. AJ Hawk will be joining us. Ooh, okay. Mm. Then we'll answer some phone calls on a five-hour energy phone line. The third hour, we got an NHL official, former NHL official joining us. Can't wait to talk to him about all the fucking malarkey that the Rangers had. Yikes. And also the NHL as a whole. It's like working in there. Should be a fun Monday. Can't thank you enough for joining us. See you in about two. You know, it's
it's just like I'm frustrated with flying cars because I'm obsessed with that. Like, I, want, I, I mean, I want a flying car. Hey, I mean, me too. What I got is my phone instead. It's like, well, the future is on your phone really right now. It's not like literally in front of you. You can't get into a flying car. But, you know, your phone has it all. It's like, I don't want this phone. I'm not going to have this phone 14 hours a day like you young people do. No, thank you. Like, I'm not from that generation. But, you know, give me a flying car. You know? <laughs> and, and, and honestly, when we shut down the Mars missions, you know, we were supposed to be going in 2024 and, and we shut it down. But a lot of people don't realize is, you know, from here to the moon is 208,000 miles roughly. You know, 200. So you can think about that. Well, in this country, you know, a long road trip could be 4,000 miles. and you know how far it is to Australia, you know, so 200,000 miles, you know, that you think about that, and, you know, that's far, but, but like Mars, think about this, is 250 million miles, 250 million miles. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's a little different thing because, you know, when you go, you know, it, it takes about anywhere from, you know, nine to eleven months to get there, depending on the alignment. <laughs> are you going to fucking Mars? And so, Tim, are you going to Mars? It sounds like you're. I wish I was. Uh, I, you know, maybe you have. I think you have a chance to do a show from there when you're eighty, Pat. <laughs>
uh, banner that he hangs. Bye. The one banner he won't be able to hang is that he ever beat me in golf, though. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. What's up, dude? You look good. New Whoa, haircut. Fresh oh, wow. cut. Oh, stop by Sports Clips this morning. How would you know? About 10, 15. Yeah, I had to make an appointment <laughs> online. There was a long wait, and I got in there and slid through the line. It was great. Did you get the uh, MVP treatment in there? Oh, Did you put yeah. <laughs> no, on the I back? I never get a shampoo or anything. I just get to get a quick cut and get out of there. Hey, Terrible. give me that. Give me that GI drill sergeant to the yep. top. You know what we're looking for. This is the hawk cut. I need the hair on top, the flow, and everything on the side needs to be skin. Can you make this happen? Hell yeah, we're sports clip. That's what we call a fade. That's a, literally no problem. You have these sports clips haircut. You're, you should be the face of that fucking place, AJ. Okay, yeah, hopefully. Maybe someday, Pat. We all can dream. But I wanted to go. I don't want you to get away from your golf situation. I know you. Yeah. You post a highlight film of yourself with the Bugle Boys highlights. cheering you on the background on oh, Twitter. Oh, of your oh, golf. Oh, yeah. Connor but, oh, wasn't oh, there. Oh, Tone oh, wasn't there. I never said I could beat you in golf. I, I We're playing. I commented on your your Instagram like you're a great golfer, man. Like I have nothing to take away from you. I'm not a great golfer. Listen, it's you just are. coming you together. You told everybody how great you are. No, listen. I've said years, years. I got years to work on this thing. I only placed a wager with you uh, that I'll make top 50 in a champion store for 20 million a year dollars. That's going to happen. Now, the next one is Tahoe. Our scoring. I've never been there. That's a good putt. Yeah, that's yeah. a great putt. I was watching that putt fall there. I felt real good about <laughs> that Bottom of the bucket. I felt real good. It's because we've been working on a putting green out here. Yeah. Justin Thomas doesn't like the net, but my stroke has become repeatable, I think. I'm just trying to make solid contact. It was a soft track, too. So you had to hit ball oh. first if you really wanted to do anything. It was a good test. $400 we paid to play there. <laughs> $400 we paid to play there. I need a couple. Of Wait. Per person or total? Total, total, total. Okay. Nine holes. Some places, you know those nice places have that, like for one person, like Greensfield, 525. Like, jeez. Of Been course, there. we wouldn't have gone. Of course, we go yeah. Steve's course. That's right. Steve's yeah. course. Yeah. We Wait, get... Is this one of the places where you're a member? <laughs> no. Tony got invited to this place. Went, okay, now we need $400 at the end as we're drenched <laughs> and on our way out. I mean, it was an incredible racket almost, but course is gorgeous. It was great to get out there with the, the boys, not the Bugle boys, the boys. Yeah. Great to get out there. Hit the ball a little bit. We battled against a tornado, a fucking storm. I mean, it was wild out there playing our thing. You and I are betting, what, 25000 on the final score yeah. of Tahoe, both to the person and $25,000 to charity, I think. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm in. It's fine. Perfect. But if, okay, if I lose, if I lose 25 k to you and then just a quick... 18% equity in the company. <laughs> <laughs> Deal? Uh, no way. What are you talking about? So I'm, I'm so I'm beating you and you're getting equity? No, no. If I When I beat you, I get the equity. No, uh, no, no. Yeah, I don't we'll, care about the cash. I listen, don't want the cash. Just well, the will, equity. Okay, so we'll give you $25,000 worth of equity if you end up beating me. <laughs> okay. Deal. All right. Congratulations. There you go. Wow. There you go. I'm feeling pretty good about my game. Now, if I did not finish, uh, that bet is off, obviously. But I'm feeling – this is the first time – If you do not finish, what do you mean? If you if you take yourself out of it on Sunday when you're down by 40 points? No, no, no. Get injured or something. I was sore. Oh, okay. I was sore coming out of this golf round, I will say. Mm -hmm. Legs were a little bit sore. Back was a little bit tight. It was locking up while I was in there. Then I ate everything in sight for the next two. I mean, I got to get into better shape and more flexible – but the golf game feels fantastic. Congrats to Mr. Lee. Uh, I don't want to say the wrong name. Uh, the guy who won the Byron Nelson. K.H. Lee. K.H. Lee, yes. Yeah. K.H. Lee, who won the Byron Nelson, 26 under. Yes. He won. Spieth was in there. Justin Thomas was in there. The boys played great in preparation for the major that's coming this weekend. That is? PJ Championship. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go, boys. Woo! Need Justin Thomas to win that thing, AJ. Where um, uh, Scotty Scheffler is its favorite, his favorite course. Oh, yeah, Scotty Sheffield, the guy that you asked Justin Thomas about without saying his name. <laughs> no. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. he, he mentioned Scotty. I wasn't even thinking of Scotty. What you do this weekend? Did you play golf at all or the first time you played B at Tahoe? Uh, I did not play golf this weekend. haven't been outside yet to do that. But, uh, yeah, you know, soccer tournaments. I actually went indoor skydiving in between games on Saturday with my daughter. It was sweet. In Ohio? Yeah, and Cincy. They have a place there, the big tube or whatever. It, it was – the people that work there, you watch them. They do a little routine as, after you're done. These people are like this girl that was our instructor did a full spider Spider Man routine, sticking to the walls, ceiling up. Like it was crazy, man. Could you Seriously. not handle it? Did you? Because what? That's I what did you, it. How'd you do? Did you do pretty good? Did you get a video of this? 
Uh, we have a few still shots. Like the the instructor's with you. You do it one time, and then next time she takes you up, and you're like Knee spinning dust. around a little more. Knee dust. Did you get sick? Car sick out there? No, no. I thought it was great. I loved it, man. My daughter did too. I'll go back. I mean, now my other kids obviously want to go. So we'll it's in back. Cincinnati. Yep, I think that's the only one anywhere near us. Well, congrats to Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. Huge yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's just what an exhaust fan, right? That's shooting straight up. Yeah, I, yeah, it's crazy powerful. Yeah, like I. I had no idea. I'd seen videos and pictures of people do it, but I didn't know in person how crazy. Like, those people are talented. Too. Have you ever skydived in real life? No, never have. Face full back air, or is it a rather comfortable experience? Not comfortable or comfortable? Uh, face, yeah, pretty much like that, I'd say. But they, you know, what they tell you real skydiving, they tell you, hey, just relax, breathe. You can breathe. You just have to do it. Don't freak yourself out. Goggles? Yeah, goggles. It was, what was funny, though, like when they take you out of the tube. Oh, this they, guy's like, head. Jeez. We need two what goggles. Was mend them. Missile silo? How did they get the uh, goggles to? Oh, goggles can fit easy, but when she did bring, she was like, oh. okay, look at everybody's head, get bringing them helmets. She's like, oh, uh, I've got one for the big guy. I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a horse one time do this. <laughs> the, uh, the, you control yourself, though, with your hands and arms, right? You can flip and do all that. Yeah, not your first time. You, no, you can't, but you can. Yeah, if you could flip, and they would not let you try to flip your first time. Really? So there was. Yeah, uh, it's serious. Like it's you're gonna you will you will catapult right off that glass and break your neck probably if you try. To flip. Jesus, I thought there was I no thought, chance of death. I thought this was like yeah, a go out yeah. there and fuck around. That's what I thought. Yeah, if they but you got you'd have to get in there a few more times. They got to be there like adjusting you and everything. So you, yeah, it's pretty involved. Hey, happy you survived. Yeah, wow, That's awesome. Survived. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, well, I'm happy you had a great weekend. We went golfing. Mm -hmm. There was a bunch of Game 7s. The NBA, bunch of blowouts, AJ. You didn't miss anything. Bunch of blowouts in the Game 7s from Saw the NBA. Luca, Luca and the boys and everything. Oh. And I've seen JB on Twitter, too, describing, giving some commentary. Man, what a weird situation for the Suns. Number one, what, everyone assumed they were so much better than Dallas. But yes, yeah. not just Dallas. Everybody yeah. assumed the Suns were going to go on a run. This was the year. Now, Golden State's getting hot, obviously, and they'll continue to do so. But the Phoenix Suns, I feel like, have been for the last couple of years, like, the super basketball people talk to the the casual basketball people like me as if I'm an idiot when they're talking about the Suns. I'm like, whoa, Suns, look at the Suns. Good for Phoenix. Love that city. They got a team, huh? Pretty good, pretty good team. Pretty good team. They're real, yeah. We're like probably favorites in the West. They, what Booker and Chris Paul have been doing and Aiden, all the boys over there, the team and Monty, the, the building, the culture, the entire thing is, is, yeah, it's a powerful thing. They've been there for a couple of years. They're a mainstay now or whatever. I'm like, okay, well, great to see the Suns are back. And everybody we talk to, oh, the Suns are going to go on a run. They're going to go on a run. Then that one guy hit that ball out of Luca's hands mm -hmm. and Luca gave him a little stare down and that Slovenian savage fucking <laughs> said, everybody wants to talk shit when they're up. It must be nice. Outscored the Suns in the first half or tied the Suns in the first half of yesterday's game, game seven. Then just went banana land throughout the entire series. There's these stats from Reddit on what Luca accomplished. Over the course of a seven game series, Luca Doncic outscored fourth place MVP voter, Devin Booker, 218 to 164. Devin Booker's a scorer. Oh, yeah. Paul Park. Out rebounded the seven foot tall DeAndre Ayton, 69 to 57. DeAndre Ayton's a rebounder. And out assisted Chris Point God, Paul. Chris Paul, by the way, facilitator. He's an assister, 49 to 40. Oh, and he also had more steals than defensive player of the year run up. This guy plays defense, Mikel Bridges. Yeah. I mean, Luca just took over the entire series. Now, he has the ball in his hands at all times, but this guy, right now, we're just seeing the beginning of it. His tattoo goes to about right here. His tattoo goes to about right here. That thing's going to be a full sleeve. Oh, yeah. And by the time that's a full sleeve, oh. everybody on earth is going to be like, oh, this is the best basketball player mm -hmm. we got. He's unbelievable to watch. He seems to be electrifying. He talks shit, but he moves at a pace that just looks so casual, has the ability to do whatever, and it feels like the Mavs are only going to continue to build around him, which I think you have to do if you talk to anybody. That was a fucking fun series to watch. And now Chris Paul's getting buried by Patrick Beverly yeah. on Get Up and First Take this morning. Chris Paul, is he healthy enough to come back and do another season with the Suns? It's been his thing. What a wild series of events there. And it's all because Luka was disrespected. I, I mean, I tell you what, I, I haven't paid enough attention uh, to Luka as I have. Like this playoffs, I guess, when I finally started watching a little bit more of him. And he, in like a world of isolation, basketball, is this guy the greatest ever at this isolation game where it doesn't matter? He's so weird and crafty and Euro step and stutter and smooth that he just always finds a way to spin to the hoop, whatever, and then hit these step back 80 footers like it's nothing. It's just, I don't, 
What do you do? You put four dudes on him for real and just say, hey, everyone else beat us? Yeah, but then they're all waiting for him to make – his teammates are all waiting for mm-hmm. him to make his move. You put four on him, he'll find him because he has yeah. the vision to do it. James Harden had this run, right? Oh, yeah. James Harden had this run where he was able to do this. He changed the game completely, getting fouled with his step backs and everything like that. Never could win, though, right? That was the mm-hmm. thing. Can't win this way. Can't win this way. Can't win this way whenever one person is this ball dominant. Now they're winning, knocking off the Suns. And they'll probably be, if they were to get to the Celtics, they'd beat the fuck out of the Celtics, well, too. It looks oh. like it's going to be Mavs Celtics. But with Harden, too, like it, it was almost in the big games is when people always criticize him. And Luka in the big Loves games. Loves it. Yeah, yes. he balls out. And there was a stat for the... Uh, hey, Luka is an absolute Slovenian dog. Yeah. Full on. Yeah. yeah. What's the stat? Uh, well, Devin Booker was the one that knocked the ball out of his hands in game five. And it was like since that moment, he had like 68, 70 points. He shot like 60% from the field. He's absurd. Yeah, 68 points, 21 rebounds, yeah. 12 assists, eight three-pointers made. And they went 2-0. and oh. Look at down to three. Everybody acting tough when they up. <laughs> what a leader guy. Yeah. yeah. What a dog Stop. this guy is. And He's they- so fun to watch him. Like, you, how are you like – I mean, his brain, you can see his brain always like studying, figuring out instincts. And I know, was it, um, was it JJ or whoever it was, was calling one of his games that said when Luca hit this crazy spinning, like step back three thing that Luca told him, hey, I, the first time I ever tried that was in a game like a year ago or something. Yeah, I got a lot of confidence. Like, yeah, I think it was yeah, JJ. Like, hey, didn't practice any of this, these crazy, like made up moves almost that you would do with your buddies outside at recess and they're doing it in NBA games and they're like oh that one worked I might as well try that again you know what it's comparable to for me as a viewer the first time I seen Tyson Fury box uh-huh, yeah. I was like how did I not know this fucking guy was around he was just like picking he was You're faster right, yeah. he was more entertaining he seemed to be a, a fucking killer a savage and he was just picking apart I believe it was uh, Wilder yeah yeah. yeah. It was the first time I seen him I had no idea by this point he's already the world champion he's one of the greatest of all time I had no idea he existed until that moment I bet against him it was an American against a Brit. Uh-huh. Fucking give me the American. I have to do this it. This guy calls himself the Alabama Hammer. Give me the fucking American yeah. Hammer. That's who I want. That's our guy. He's going to knock this fucking bloke out. No problem. <laughs> then what? 35 seconds into the fight, I saw the way this dude was moving and talking shit and singing. And they were talking about the thing. I'm like, oh, this guy is awesome. What is this? This is an alien. This is a one of one. How do I know? I feel the same way watching Luca. I'm like, how did I not know this fucking guy existed until I'm seeing him just dominate these playoffs? Just like that other, the big Joker. Yeah. yeah. Jokic, just like Jokic. Because all these European guys that get drafted ahead of guys that I know in this uh, lottery, I get so pissed off. I'm like, oh, all right, here's a guy that's going to come play in the NBA five years from now. Why are people wasting their pick to do this? I just seen the old cousy at whatever, Kentucky, wherever, play great. Mm-hmm. And they're drafting old buddy from overseas. Now it's becoming like, no, no, these guys – or guys like Jokic, back-to-back MVP. Yeah, stud. Luka's starting to take over the goddamn playoffs. I think that's great for the growth of the NBA. But for me, it's great because I'm just getting introduced to these dudes that I, I no offense, refuse to waste any emotional investment on in the past. Yeah. I was missing out completely. He is must-watch basketball whenever he's on the court, especially whenever he's starting to talk shit. He's yes. fantastic. Yeah, like all the like screen grabs of Luca after he makes you know massive shots of him just mean mugging everybody. And I believe he did one to Lil Wayne because Lil Wayne was at the yeah. game. Yeah, Luca a hoe. Yeah, and he called him a hoe. And I believe there was a lot of theories on the internet. Like as soon as Luca Doncic saw Lil Wayne in the building, he knew, okay, uh, I gotta I'm gonna, do this. I'm gonna score the same amount of points as this team in the first fucking half. <laughs> that guy's unbelievable. <laughs> He's, he's, what, 23 years old, yep. I believe? Yeah. He's already, how, how long is this deal? Three more years? Two more years? Uh, no, he signed, like, a five-year, 207 deal in August. Oh, Booker's got another three years. Yeah. Or two years. Because mm-hmm. remember, Booker Luca was becoming a thing there for a bit. Now Booker will be able to get back. He'll be in the tabloids all offseason, right, because he's with... Uh, Jenner. Apparently like, they're taking a break, though. Oh, no. Because fucking Luca? It, it might be because of Luca. Oh, no! Oh, shit. What if she's sitting courtside against... Against the Warriors supporting Luca. What if she goes, "Hey, Luca, you get that thing a full sleeve and look like one of those Fresh. cool World Cup soccer players. Mm-hmm. Maybe you take a ride on the Kardashian cruise. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, pal? Maybe you'll get the 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 express lane right to the most oh. popular athlete in your sport. You're welcome. 
How about her? She broke up with him or he broke up with her because of focus on basketball? Uh, it was just a headline that I saw. I didn't read the article, but the insinuation was that it was her decision, not his. Well, she's like, what, one of the top models on earth? She might have yeah. She might have said, I ain't got time for this basketball player. I got to focus on Hulu. Uh, we got a new series, and I got to focus on being the top model on planet Earth. Sorry about it while you're losing. Yeah. Yeah. You're also getting beat by 40 points at home in a game seven. Can't All the that. NBA games are blowouts, though. Okay? All the NBA games How? Are- How? Just because, what, the Suns had one of those – Weird, really bad nights, and not just them. The opposite, no. not just them. Celtics blew out old buddies. Yeah, the oh, Bucks yeah, smoked him. The well, Heat and the Warriors. Uh, Giannis wasn't able to do a whole lot, was he? He missed a bunch of shots, and they—I mean, they—they they hemmed him up. Chris Middleton's out as well, which Sean said was going to happen. I mean, every game seven though was basically a blowout. Hockey on the flip side, great weekend. Did yeah. you see any of these games? Uh, I got to see a lot of part of them, then a lot of the recaps. I don't. I thought the Pens was over. I thought they won. I, thought, right. I was like, all right, it's over. Well, we don't yeah. talk about We were talking about that in the first hour. Obviously, the Penguins may be in a new era. Everything might <laughs> That one old buddy done. kicked from his skate and then out of the air oh, was. Oh, was, Gensel. It was, it was, Gensel. I can't believe you ought to do that. Yeah. yeah, Gensel fucking can do whatever he wants. He got some that puck on awesome. a goddamn Good job by Gensel. Yeah, Gensel's unbelievable. Stud. Follow up. We don't even talk about it because that might be the end of an era. There's new ownership. There's all old guys on the team. They can't get past the first round for the last four years. There's probably going to be change coming, which is heartbreaking because it's had a moment of silence for all the good times that that fucking crew brought me. Moment passed. Coach Sullivan, what the fuck's going on, dude? Come on, Coach. I have it, Sully. Anyways, with that being said, Texas hockey's out. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> they stink, too, Texas well, hockey. Yeah. Fucking oh, otter no. standing on his head last Goalie night. Goalie stops 62 shots. 62 shots. For they who? lose. Texas, Dallas. Great American hope, 23-year-old otter, absolute <laughs> legend. Uh, why we call them fucking penalties in overtime in the NHL playoffs? Well, we'll ask Tim Peel. <laughs> mm-hmm. We'll ask Tim Peel why, because that's what happened to the Pens. That's what happened to Dallas, it appears. Did he just go full Canadian voice? Is that because you're pumped for the fucking Battle of Manitoba in the second in this round of the playoffs? <laughs> the Battle of Alberta? No, nah, I for couldn't what give sport? two shits. Calgary and Edmonton. Hockey's over. Yeah. What are we even talking about? Season's yeah. done. Hockey's done. Pens, shit to bed. We still got the Bruins, back. shit to bed. Yep. We, Dallas Stars, Texas hockey, shit, shit to bed. We all Red died. Wings stunk for the last 10 years. Blackhawks stink. Golden Knights are a done franchise. Uh-huh. They fired their coach there, actually. Oh. Hockey's done. How did all better? three of us lose in a fucking game, game seven? seven. <laughs> <laughs> Two in overtime. Bad well, news. Stink. Uh, at least we got to overtime. Bad news. I got a lot of people in Carolina texting me saying, hey, join our bandwagon. It's like, I love you guys. I was hoping to go in there wearing my Crosby jersey, yeah. telling you how to suck it, actually. That's well, what now was... you can go down and fucking ring the, the raid siren down there. I ain't doing that. Hockey might be dead forever. For a great me. man did it. We can do it, too. Strong chin. Bill Cotter. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that guy. That's why. We've lost in the first round in the last four years because Bill Cowher's down there giving motivational speeches. You didn't want to face the Kaniacs one. You we know, did. When Duhas comes on in that arena. We did. I don't know. Better team than yours, you would have been fine. What? The Rangers hey. are going to buckle 4-0. Oh. Yeah, they're 4-0 get... Kaniacs over to – that team yeah. stunk. Terrible. TJ Lang sends, uh, calls me, hey, hey, it's all right. Good season. A lot of good memories. And you guys lost to a pretty okay team. Like, you should feel good about that. <laughs> all right. Thanks, TJ Lang. Thanks. Hey, you should, uh, if Carolina asks you to come ring this siren deal, you should go glue yourself to it and rip your shirt off and have like a Sid jersey yeah. under it and be there the whole game. <laughs> I am about sick of what they're doing with the vegan milk at that arena. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it shouldn't cost more. I'm glad somebody took a stand. Yeah, you're right. That's right. You want this siren to go the entire game? I'll do that right I'll now. Do it. Yeah. Gorilla glue, palm, right to that thing. I mean, but, and okay. I'm fidgety. <laughs> So this is happening. <laughs> this is happening all game until you Don't guys you fix you the my vegan milk in here. Huh? Don't you think if I glued my hand to the table, you could rip my hand right off easy? You think I could do that? Yeah. I could beat Gorilla Glue, I think. But wouldn't your hand also be fighting it? Your grip would be fighting me, though, too, right? I, all right, then. Yeah, never mind. I got to. But I mean, yeah, if someone's holding on to a pole, yeah, you got to do what you got to do to get off them if you need them off of there, right? Not just pull on them. Well, that's what I'm saying. When these people are gluing their hands to the wood, like, why don't they just take a shovel? Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Why don't they just bust right through the oh, thing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Taking a little bit of skin off with it, but that's yeah. the cost of doing well, business. A little bit of well, steam. Well, that's what they want, right? They, yeah. They want to yeah. force me out of here. How do you? A little bit of steam from the frother. The hand comes right off. Oh, yeah. Because... Or, or a bunch of acetone. You're good. Okay. You shouldn't pour Just acetone. keep that around. Butter. Probably help. Let's talk about some NFL stuff. <laughs> There's a spray called Goo Gone. That's oh, really yeah, good one. Goo Gone. Goo, 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 goo Be Gone, I think, right? Oh, that's the better mm. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The original was Goo Gone. Now it's Goo, goo Be Gone, yeah. I think Goo Be Gone may be the original. 
people are goo. Uh, yeah, and then I, this is like the, uh, what was that one, the Starbucks entity that they started? It was like Starbucks Next Door. Oh, or Dumb Starbucks. Dumb Starbucks, uh, where mm -hmm. it was a coffee store that was right that across was the street. Oh. It was a really nice thing Starbucks had. It was like a Starbucks, some kind of... No, this was somebody that didn't like Starbucks. Like Latte oh. Larry. Yeah, is... they, they, uh, they, they use parody law, right? Yes. Yeah. And it was like yeah. dumb Starbucks or something. It was a Spite store. It was a Spite store. I'm okay with that. Spite <laughs> store. Exactly like Latte Larry. All right, let's talk about some football. <laughs> uh, Jair Alexander gets a four-year, $84 million extension with $31 million coming in the first year. $30 million signing bonus. So his contract next year is worth $1 million if you start doing some math. A, the Packers and cornerback Jair Alexander have agreed on principle on a four-year deal, Ian Rappaport's reporting. And we just talked to Rapsheet about this because the overwhelming consensus of the conversation about the Green Bay Packers was they spent so much money on Aaron Rodgers, that diva took too much money, they couldn't pay anybody Devontae had to go elsewhere, well we brought this back up and got it confirmed again, the Packers did offer Devontae Adams, I think either more money mm -hmm. or the same exact money to stay in Green Bay and he said, get me the fuck out of here dude, he chose to leave, Aaron got buried for that, completely his contract now they're giving out $84 million contracts on the defensive side of the ball, feels like it's in good faith, I think Guti and Murphy, hey, doing good things yeah, here, right, we're gonna be pumped about this if you're a Green Bay Packer fan, right, AJ Hawk? How could you not be? I mean, they're secondary. You look, go around their secondary. They bring in Adrian Amos in, I think was a great acquisition. Rasul Douglas re signs after they, they are able to revamp that dude's career. And it all works hand in hand. The front, like your front seven and your back end, like your back end secondary players are much, much better if you guys can get a four man rush or you can get any kind of rush, really. But now I feel like they have studs all in the front line, the front seven, and their whole secondary. If you go down the list, I guess. D Butts talks about all the time what we need what, five, six starters at the DB position. Right? He, I think he wants six or seven. I don't know if it's plural or singular, D Butt, but the D Butt does talk <laughs> about needing to have a bunch of starters in the back end because whenever injuries are going to happen and then whenever you get into the playoffs, I mean, they're, guys, teams are going to be four wide, five wide. And if they find one person, or two people, they can set up schemes now to put everybody on an island and kind of fucking kill you. I mean, that is just modern yeah. NFL nowadays. You need talent in the back end to keep Jair around. And obviously it's good football-wise, it feels like. But as a Packers fan, them paying Aaron, them keeping Jair around and paying him a lot of money, is this not normal? Am I, am I acting as if, as if this is abnormal and it's not? Or is this maybe, hey... Look at the Green Bay Packers kind of coming along and investing in their team and wanting to continue to build as opposed to force people out so they can get paid elsewhere like maybe has happened in the past. No, I think that's 100% accurate. I think it was, I mean, it was a couple weeks ago whenever that Denzel Ward deal got done and I saw the number, I was like, oh shit, this probably means the Packers are going to lose Jair Alexander. Like, I just don't, you know, with what he's making, Jair Alexander hasn't gotten paid yet. He's like a true number one guy. And I just, you see that number, it's like, okay, well, th this is something that the Packers aren't going to do. So I think think everyone is pretty surprised seeing that this morning but obviously incredibly jacked up he's insane and then they lower his cap hit so they can still kind of make some moves maybe at receiver in the interim like it doesn't completely cripple him but it's not something that you know any Packers fan would say they saw coming I don't think I believe we have a graphic or have one of the highest paid corners in the league and obviously up. Jair Alexander's number one Denzel Ward's number two at 23 million or whatever uh and then number three is Jalen Ramsey who's making 20 million a year who's an absolute game changer. I don't think any Rams fans are saying that they paid too much for Jalen. But Jair Alexander, $21 million a year. Uh, Denzel Ward, $20.1 million. Sorry, I was wrong with $23 million. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, $20 million a year. Marlon Humphrey with $19.5 million. And then Lattimore down in New Orleans with $19.4 million. It pays to be great in the back end. I think this is only going to continue to go up as the NFL continues to change into a pass-happy offense. If you got a dude, you got to pay a dude. And these guys are Right here. I mean, Jalen, remember he was at Jacksonville? Remember that oh, happened? Oh, yeah. yeah. You remember that was the thing? People forget he was even there, I feel like. Well, people forget, too. Like, he was not happy with what was going on. And we, we all, I think we all, not me, but the media world was like, Jalen's not a good teammate. Listen to how, look at how they're trying to coach him or whatever. And Jalen's like, get me the fuck out of here. This is amateur hour. Get was he me on hard knocks out, that out of here. Go to L.A. Give me all my fucking money and we'll win and they'll make me a leader and they'll play me at every single position. What'd you say, Zito? Was he on hard knocks when like the media was asking us questions and we saw it behind the scenes? Oh, that was in that? L.A. That was yes. in L.A., yeah, right? Yeah. It was on hard knocks in L.A. Oh. Passed it. Oh, yeah. Got to see him come in and do his question on the Zoom. <clears throat> but it was whenever he was on the side 
sidelines at Jacksonville and coaches will be talking to him and he'd be fighting back. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, this guy. Well, yeah, he's a good player, but will he fit? You know, will he fit any coach? You think, like, uh, Pat, you think Herbs could have helped, yeah, helped yeah, that, that fit maybe. in Jacksonville? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, we, I'm happy we're at a point now where there's enough platforms I can say, like, well, maybe those coaches is fucked up. Yeah. You know, and maybe with a guy like Jalen, you say, yeah, we're going to give you a little bit a little bigger leash because you're fucking Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, you should have a little bit more say in some things because you're fucking Jalen Ramsey. I mean, you know, like those types of things. Now, obviously, he has Aaron Donald helping him out in the front end, and he's on the back end. But I remember that being covered as if Jalen was the problem. And just like with Odell Beckham Jr., right? Odell Beckham Jr. Uh -huh. is the problem. He ends up in a place that is very suitable for the type of person he is, the personality he has, and boom, he has immediate success. Would have been a Super Bowl fucking MVP. If he doesn't get hurt, Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, it is, it's crazy with the world we're in now versus the world we're in not too long ago. It feels like it is changing vastly. Well, in Jacksonville especially, like then that report comes out about the complaints that they had. It was like 25% of the entire league was from Jacksonville. And I think, wasn't it Calais Campbell who came on and basically was like, yeah, I thought I was going to be in Jacksonville forever. And then they traded him to Baltimore. Yes, I don't know where he thought it was yeah. going to be his home. Yeah, Calais, he's, by the way, just got another deal, I think. I think so. With uh -huh. Baltimore, I think, I think he just got another deal. That's a lot. He's been playing a long time yeah. in the trenches. Very tall, man. Very big. Mm -hmm. Huge. Blocked a lot of kicks back in the day. You can stop doing that. Now you're an old man. Get your ass on the sideline. But congrats on all the success, Calais. It feels like the era, though, of, you know, players, if you're good, like, be who you can afford to be is a real thing now, as opposed to in some places where it used to be like, no, we got to make this guy look like a bad guy publicly so that we can't, you know, we don't have to pay him. It'll be tough to trade him. His career's dead. Now it's like, yeah, maybe that's not the right fit. And Sean McVay mm -hmm. is a guy that has become very much, uh, come on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sean McVay spoke to Rich Eisen about potentially getting into the media world because we all knew it would be a natural fit. When Monday Night Football was looking for somebody, it was alleged that Sean McVay was approached because he's young, he's successful, he knows the game inside and out, he's attractive, and he speaks well. We've heard him on the co-host uh, co in the podcast, Flying Coach, with uh, Peter Schrager. Mm -hmm. Loves ball. Absolutely loves <laughs> ball. Has the resume to do with how much money media is paying. Everybody assumed McVay would go. This was his answer to Rich Eisen on Friday. Friday, I believe, uh, when chatting about the entire media industry and his future. Let's put it this way. I love coaching so much, Rich. Mm. Um, I think that it was a fun narrative, but if you look at the entirety of what I had said, I, the question was asked if I was going to be a lifer in coaching. And then I elaborated on, you know, I don't know that I see myself doing this until I'm, you know, 70 or so, because I feel like I'm 36 going on 80 some days. I sure love it. But, um, yeah, you know, how players. long I'll do it, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I couldn't be more excited about this season working with our players and coaches. But you said down the line, is that something that you're interested in? Uh, I think there's no question about it, but I couldn't be happier coaching ball right now without a doubt. That's via Rich Eisen and the Rich Eisen Show available on Peacock. I think – the reason why the narrative was able to build so much is because we saw Tony Romo make $17 million. We saw Troy Aikman make $17.5 million. Tom Brady allegedly, via some reports, and then rebuffed, and then we'll see what the actual uh, number is, making $37.5 million to be a pillar, or no, a steward of the game and a commentator. And we learned that McVay was making like $6 million bucks or something to coach yeah. <laughs> that L.A. Rams team. So was all of the media conversation with how big the number was just leverage to utilize against Kroenke to get another deal to be uh, remain the Rams head coach? Possibly, but I do believe a lot of us think to ourselves, I can't wait for that guy to get in fucking TV, though. He's going to be amazing on the microphone, I think, AJ. No, I think he's going to be awesome, but I actually believe him here when, with what he is saying. I, I think Sean McVay, yeah, he's only 35. I don't think there's any way he can sit there and be like, you know, I'm I'm cool. I've accomplished everything I need to. I got a ring here. Like, I don't I don't really uh, – I don't need the, the daily grind, you know. I'm just going to go out there, call a game a week or do whatever, do some studio work, which he's going to be awesome at eventually. I just feel like right now he's not there. I feel like he's a coach, coach's coach. For him, I don't know how long that is, but I wouldn't be shocked if you looked up and he's 55 still coaching. Yes. Oh, my God. My my wife said that my son turned 40. I said, 40? <laughs> Where have the years gone? Actual quote, Bruce Aarons, first time he retired from the Cardinals. My son Jake turned 40? Wow. Not 10? Not 15, which is a long time. Not 18, which is an adult, you know, and that's mm -hmm. a full element preschool, elementary school, high school, going into college. 
Not 18. Not 25. Holy fuck. Graduate doctor, maybe at that <laughs> yeah. Not 30. Full family. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. Not 30. The guy turned 40, and Bruce said, holy fuck. <laughs> I missed four decades, and this dude's like, but that's how football people are. That's literally how coaches are. It is just, we are either preparing for football season or we're in football season. And when we're not in football season, they're wishing they're in football season, so they're acting like they're in football season by watching more film, being more dialed in. They'll take like a month off, maybe three weeks off in between OTAs and training camp where they go fish and I assume just get absolutely blacked mm -hmm. out, murdered, hammered, <laughs> yeah. drunk, and they try to do as much family time as possible, but they're right back in the game. There's certainly gonna be days though where Sean McVay thinks to himself, I probably could have got $25 million calling the games, and here I am dealing with Aaron Donald's out, Jalen Ramsey's out, this team's out, and we're in the NFC West. Everybody seems to be fucking good at football. There, that is, there's going to be moments where those conversations happen, but you're 100% right. He feels like he's a coach through and through. That motherfucker's going to be around forever. Personally, don't you think, though, it makes it easier for him to leave and go to the booth now that he has a ring? Like, if he, Absolutely. If he was yes. chasing, chasing that ring for years and years and years, that would have kept him in, but now that he's got a ring, I mean, he... Yeah, he could leave at any time. He could leave at any time, but I think that's what AJ and I are saying. Like, hey Pat, you know what he should do though? These if dudes he gets are really psychopaths, off, dude. Go ahead. Hey, if this year, if he gets pissed in a, if Sean McVay is really pissed after games, post game presser, you know they start out slow start for the season, whatever. What if he just he just looked at the people and he's like, hey man, I'm going to be making more than every single one of you in this room. Like, if he really wanted to be a dick. Oh, nice question. How about this? You ask better questions, maybe make the same amount of money I'll make as your job. <laughs> Yeah, how about that? Great question next time. Hey, do you, do you ever watch the game? No, it's very apparent that you know nothing about the game, which is why I'll make 10x what you make. You hear me? <laughs> so I'll retire today. I'll fuck call game tomorrow. I'll be doing your job tomorrow. Imagine that. McVay, that has to be a nice security blanket, though, that some guys have. Tom Brady's obviously got it, mm -hmm. earned it. Sean McVay has it currently. They're talking about Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, Ian Rappaport just kind of leaked that one slowly. Mm, yeah. in the He's like, Emmanuel Sanders has a very promising media career waiting for him, so is he going to go back and play, or is he going to media? It's like, okay, congrats, Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. There's he does a lot of NFL Network, right? Yeah, that's what Ian Rappaport was saying, yeah. I assume he's, he's very, very good. good. Yeah, I assume he's very good. I think I've seen a couple of his things, not in its entirety. Allegedly, Greg Olson is currently in the middle of negotiations to be Fox's number one person for at least the next year before yeah. Tom Brady comes in. Allegedly, that's happening alongside Kevin Burkhart. Not 100% sure if that's true or not because people are playing the where will Drew Brees go game. Like, you know, Drew Brees become the number one person at Fox if he was to go over to Fox to call games. Would Is he be Fox recruiting him over there? Do we know? There was a rumor he was going to get traded to Fox. You remember that? That was before the yeah, Tom so Brady announcement. So what happened, though? Why is – so I assume he had a multi-year deal with NBC. They, they – I – I read where they said they mutually parted ways. What does that mean? What do you? What happened? Well, let me read a tweet that Drew Brees said. Here's his exact quote. Oh, yeah. well, uh, sorry for the speculation from the media is how his tweets are. Despite speculation from media about my future this fall, I'm currently undecided about it. I may work for NBC, Peacock, Universal, who knows? I might play football again. I may focus on business and philanthropy. I may train for a pickleball tour. Senior golf tour, I'm fucking way ahead of you. <laughs> Coach my kids, or all of the above. I'll let you guys know. So Drew Brees has no idea what he wants to do. There was following reports uh, via the New York Post, I believe Andrew Marshawn, that said that Drew Brees like calling games and NBC's Rolodex of games is not that thick, including, or Peter King reported this, including the fact that Chris Collinsworth signed an extension recently. We didn't know that. Yeah. Way to go, Chris, with Sunday Night Football. So him and Tariko, I guess, to be there for the next five years, I'd assume what that extension is. Not 100% sure. Other than Notre Dame football, they don't have enough games, basically. So he's thinking about maybe going elsewhere to call a game. He had a tweet about uh, signing Jarvis and Landry, uh, Jarvis Landry and Tyron Matthew wanting to maybe wish him to play football again or maybe come back and play football again. But all the friends around him say that ain't true. So I think Drew Brees has no idea what he wants to do. I will say this as a spectator. I thought Drew was great in the studio role, even mm -hmm. though he fucking hated it. He did not like it, I guess, apparently, allegedly. That would make sense, though, to me that he, if he does, like, leave NBC because of that. It's true. Like, the only game NBC has is what? The Collinsworth Sunday night game with Al Michaels used to have. Yeah, it's Sunday night football or Notre Dame. That's that it. So, yeah, Drew wants more options. And I guess if they, whether, I don't know if he didn't want that Sunday night gig or they already signed Collinsworth to the extension, whatever it is, if Drew wants to do games, yeah, you got to go somewhere else. But, yeah, whatever, wherever he goes, he'll be successful. But what if he goes over to Fox and they're like, hey, we'll give you $750,000 a year? And he's like, well, Tom, 
He's got 37 and a half weight. Allegedly. Yeah. And they say, well, that has not been confirmed, and we do not want to confirm it. But also, we've never seen you on enough games on our broadcast. You know? Well, you didn't see yeah. Tom either. Well, mm. Tom's greatest of all time. It's Tom yeah. Brady. Oh, I'm pretty good, too. I guess I have all the records. Remember, they stopped the game in the middle of it when I threw a completion. Yeah. <laughs> Is he pissed at NBC? for? Does he think NBC leaked this info? Yes. That's, so I that's why he tweeted that. I don't know. That's what, it, that's what everybody is assuming, though, that Drew isn't happy about the way the news was released about him not being there. Although he left in there, I may go back to NBC. So maybe NBC left it kind of wide open. Like, hey, if you look, would like to come back, there's not a lot of games. If his focus is calling games, NBC would not be the place. It would be Fox or it would be CBS. Mm -hmm. But who knows how much they'll pay him. The, the initial inkling or rumor mill, and I forget who I was reading, maybe Peter King, Maybe Marshawn, I forget who I was reading. Greg Olson appears to be the number one that is coming. Like, I don't want to call him lame duck number one because yeah. that would be fucked up because Greg Olson's very good at what he does. But Greg Olson, allegedly the number one analyst for uh, Fox this upcoming season, they have the Super Bowl next year. So if yeah. you're Greg Olson and you get a chance to call an entire season as number one crew and the Super Bowl, you would think that that'd be great marketing for whichever job you want next when Tom Brady comes in at $37.5 million to not only call the games but also be a steward of the game or whatever. I just think if you can get in there, you should get in there. Tariko, though, has been waiting to get oh, in yeah. the NFL yeah. for a long time now. Remember, he, he left ESPN to go to NBC, and everybody was like, Sunday Night Football. And then the immediate thought was, well, Al Michaels is not slowing down no. at <laughs> all. Now I was at Amazon. Tariko gets a shot. Collinsworth signs for another five years. Drew Brees might have not seen that coming, and now he wants to kind of figure it out for himself. Who knows? Well, and if it was a mutual like part between him and ABC or NBC, you got to yeah, assume nothing's mutual. Nothing, yeah, that and they're probably like, oh, you think you are, you know, warranting fifteen million dollars or whatever it is, or at least a little below Tony, but not too far below, especially after the thirty-seven and a half leak. It's like they might say, go to CBS and see what they'll give you, and then if. If he doesn't get the offer or doesn't get the chance to call games, does he just go back to the studio? Or is that maybe Drew just fucking hated it? Yeah, just just probably seeing. It. But if he goes to CBS, is he okay being the number two crew because yeah. Tony's the number one crew? Well, mm -hmm. and that's what I was alluding to about Fox. Allegedly, Greg's going to be number one. So yeah. is he number two now? That's where Greg Olson was, and that's that's an interesting jump for Drew Brees to go from, you know, Pro Football Night in America, like sixteen. Football Night in America has like sixteen million viewers, I think, every single week. Jeez. Okay. Biggest show. Yeah. Biggest show. A huge studio show. Biggest studio show in sports, I think. Oh, yeah. Every single week, dialed in. Huge numbers. Very, And maybe he just hated it, but I don't know. Unless Drew has the utmost faith in what he can become as a football in-game commentator, would you take that to go down to number two to potentially go elsewhere? Maybe if you just get it or three, if you get a chance to do it, I guess you just got to take it. If you're, you know, if the, if the universe really is wants telling to do games. you. Like, if he really wants to do games, then I guess, yeah, he'd have to go prove it. I, that's probably why he's – he doesn't know where he's going at yet either because, like, the options are kind of weird on in where he's at. Maybe, maybe Drew just fucking hates it all. Maybe Drew doesn't know what the hell he wants. Maybe he just I can wants get to it. I can understand, like, doing a studio show like that. Like, it's not my specialty for sure. Like, those quick studio shows like that, are, it's not my thing. This guy, this guy does a studio show every yeah. single day. Yeah. I mean, like those kind of set up studio shows where you have like 40 seconds and you got to touch every subject of the league because, you know, like I would, there'd be two or three. Like, you can code at this guy. Like, I don't care about this one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> or Listen, I just don't have an opinion. Sometimes I don't have an opinion on things. and I think that's OK. Well, that's because you live your bet life. Yeah, you that's do. right. Oh, yeah. You do live your bet life. Don't you think this is some mm -hmm. sort of indication, too, of like what all these places view him as a broadcaster? Because if there was talks about him getting traded and they don't really have a solidified number one booth yet, the shit they would trade for him immediately. It's like it's Drew Brees. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's a quarterback like I. I I just and when they're just handing those gigs over to oh, people yeah. that stink on the microphone for sure. That's so you, probably what Drew's thinking too. Like, man, they got a lot of bums on these microphones out here. I, I think you maybe take one step back to kind of prove yourself somewhere, and then you go. Maybe you'll have an incentive-based contract somewhere. I don't know. But I don't think there's any way that he would be okay with, with calling the number two or number three game. Like Notre Dame, it's not the NFL, but there's a shitload of people that are watching Notre Dame football. Like if you're calling, you know, the third best. NFL game every week like how long until he's like no nah, I want well, the third fuck. best on that network yeah exactly right, right. Cool. I thought he was much better in Stooge than for Paul, sure than for sure calling a game I thought he was very good in Stooge yeah. how many games did he do all of them oh Notre Dame's I think he did one NFL game 
Okay. Oh, yeah, the New Orleans Saints game. Yeah. Playoff game. Yeah. Which he was honored at halftime, right? Yeah, and that was just a weird – probably not – they didn't he really set him up for success, I don't right. think. That one – I, I might be reading headlines. I, I read something when they were talking about this, and they acted like that game was like bumpy or weird, or like yeah, it, it was, was not, not a great game. Yeah, they were retiring his fucking jersey at halftime. It was a playoff game for a city that he is literally the guy. I mean, that would be difficult to call. I don't want to make too many excuses for Drew Brees, but I found him to be good in the studio. Yeah, I found him very good. But if you're not happy, you're not happy. Let's get to a break. We'll be back in four minutes with some phone calls on the Five Energy phone line one eight three three four McAfee. Russell Wilson and Peyton Manning are watching film together. Ooh. We'll talk about that. What does that mean? MCDC's pumped to play 1 o'clock games, man. Hell yeah, wow. <laughs> no more floaters, I no, heard. Yeah, uh, I don't know. And Josh Allen hit a softball that is still going. Yeah. Awesome. Maybe to that door that's in Mars that people and aliens have been living inside of Whoa. forever. Which is what I've been saying this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in four. This is the Pat McAfee Show. This is a big fucking Jesus. fire. We are in the back corner of that building that is at the bottom there. That smoke smells. Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. The paint from that place, the utilities, the plastic. All the good mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. all just floating kind right of, into us. Yeah. The guy just came to the building. If the fire moves a little more this way, we have to evacuate. Fuck. Yeah, it's got to be like the air conditioning units or something yeah. up there. It's currently under an investigation right now. It did spread to the roof and to the air conditioning and heating unit up on the roof. John John Robinson says, uh, Holy shit. Whoa. Holy fuck. Or did something like... What was the explosion, you think? Uh, they're, do they're doing a bunch of fire hydrants out there, so maybe the the top of the lid fell off? I don't know. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> See, it was a loud... That's man. not a case. <laughs> right yeah, I heard they, they just put the fire out. Fire's out. Right oh, now. nice. Oh, okay! okay. Forget all about that. You're like, eh, I could do that again. So we just lost power in the middle of one of the greatest promos in the history yeah. by pound for pound, number one fighter in the world, Kamar Usman. He literally just got a promo about what it's like to walk to the ring. Some guys, they stay afraid and they, they, they just kind of get smaller and smaller. But as for, for guys like myself, as you get closer, this this alpha, this giant, this this lion, you know, this god-like figure per se starts to grow and grow and grow and grow. And then I, I they, they grease me up and then I step up there and then I pray for myself and then I pray for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I got like chills on this yeah. while he was talking yeah. about it. And right before he was about to kind of put a bow on it, the entire thing just shut down. There's a fire right next door. Let's assume they cut off all the electricity. We're fucked. Yeah. Probably for the next few hours. That's good. Hey boys, we handled it. Good show. Good show. Good show. Good show. Good show. Good show. The ticker's still, ticker's still kicking. Hey, let's uh, type something on the ticker. So yeah, yeah. Just go on your computer. You know, type in the uh, chat. Do you want me to uh, email serious? Please do. Okay. You want to just tell who's going to do a letter? Yeah, because this part can take a little bit. Call on office. This lost. Bill! Yeah. This thing just froze. Oh, jeez. This is great. Uh, he said the fire department just caught it. They have no idea how long. That was really good by Usman, too. All of the power in our office just went out. Unexpected, out of nowhere. This shit is getting real out here. Hope everybody's okay, obviously. They got the fire contained, which is good news. But we apologize for the show ending abruptly out of nowhere. No injuries, I believe, is what's being reported. The fire was massive. We all had to huff like paint and shit from the fire right next to our studio. We'll be back tomorrow, hopefully. Cheers. Fucking goth. Oh, we got. Jesus. Fuck. Got it. Oh. For birdie, birdie, finish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's long. It's very long. Yeah, don't yeah. It's smart. It's smart. That's very smart. <laughs> Thank you.
Today's show is presented by Cash App. Cash App is the best finance app on planet Earth. It is the easiest way to send money to your buddies, and you can even buy pieces of Bitcoin or stocks with as little as $1. Oh. Keep an eye out for another Winter Wednesday this week with last week's giveaways. If you aren't on Cash App yet, go to, go use code McAfee for $15 as soon as you sign up. That's code McAfee for a free $15. Terms apply. Hey, wondering why the music just cut off. Yeah, that yeah, was a little weird, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know. There might have been a song. I'm not 100 sure. You didn't deserve that though, because the way you were reading that was great. Yeah, it's really all right. You know. Cash App also incredible company. Yeah, the best. Very thankful for Cash App. They make these giveaways much easier. AJ. It seems like they have streamlined things a bit. That helps really? Bruce and everybody in the back. Yeah, Feel Good Friday, obviously oh, yeah. incredible uh, giveaway. The what was it? PMS. This one. Uh, season. Ske- schedule, schedule release. Yeah, there it is. Schedule release. Was PMS schedule one. release. You guys did good. That was a good idea. Then this weekend we had the PMS FanDuel Sunday sevens because all the game sevens. That felt like season again, AJ. It did. Putting that one out felt like it was the season again. Should have put had everybody put their cash tag and all that. Ah, mm-hmm. ah, we didn't have cash app last season. That was a little bit That's of right. shit. Old habit. Sorry about it, Bruce. Sorry. Hey, about is it. Tim Peel currently uh, officiating? Retired. Twenty some years. Just a couple years ago, he, though, he was cut on a hot mic saying, fucking had to give one early to Nashville. <laughs> yeah. That was him. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to chat with him about the flow of the game and how they choose. And That's like hockey, I feel like, is much more understanding the players and I think the people deep in the culture, not the fans who are just kind of noobs and casual, but like the flow of the game that's controlled by the ref. Like makeup calls are an actual thing in hockey. Yeah, and especially in the playoffs, like if you're up to nothing, you are not getting a penalty called in your favor, and you better watch your stick because you will get called for a penalty. Well, I don't like that. Yeah, what the hell is that yeah. about? I don't Come like on. that one bit. What is this, like NFL Blitz back in the day? If you're up 20, mm-hmm. yeah. you were going to throw a pick regardless. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's, it's like a blue bomb in Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. What's ball. this all about? We don't need the refs doing it. That's a lot of power that old Poole had or Peel had there for a while. That does make sense, though, with all these games going to overtime. It, it, only, it doesn't matter if you get up. Like, you know, they're, they're going to make sure this thing's tight in the, late in the third period, so we got a chance of overtime. Stephanie McMahon had up fronts, you know, and she said, like, hey, our company, not, well, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in there, but we can create buzzer beater moments seem to happen in a much regular mo- uh, thing for us. The NHL's like, not so fast. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> not so fast. We're handing out blue shells whenever they need to happen. We got fucked That's yesterday. Bullshit. Yeah. Huh. That's bullshit. Both, both games, both of them went to overtime yesterday. Man, who huh. knows what? <laughs> what? Yeah, been like that forever. They just like to keep it close, and they they, they say it's letting the players decide, but no, it's them deciding. <laughs> Jeez, feels like the tone of this conversation with Tim yeah, Peel just changed my. <laughs> What's his record whenever he's refing Penn's games? Ooh. Please. That's why everyone says like, oh, why can't the officiating be the same as it is in the regular season? Why do you have to change for time and circumstance? You know, a penalty. That's a penalty in the first period should be the same call in the third period, but it doesn't work out that way. That's because it's humans making calls, but I didn't know it was just like accepted. Like, yeah, yeah, just kind of feel it. You know, let's make sure this place is alive tonight. You know what I mean? Well, players play different. Five though, in a right? major. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, pal? Don't the players play differently too? Like they, you can't take like crazy chances in the playoffs, can you? Because you can't risk a stupid penalty. I thought. Yes, and also like Rupper has relationships with these refs too. Like one of these refs yeah. challenged Rupper to a fight. On the ice. I saw the story. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. The NHL is a different place. Let's get to the phones. Let's go to Sean in Canada on the Five Hour Energy phone line. Let's see if he's a champion of callers or not. What's going on, Sean? What's up, Pat boys? How you doing? Hey, keep, keep it moving, moving. Yeah. champion, champion, yeah, you know, champion, yeah. Oh yeah, you know who's a real champion? Who's those fucking Oilers, eh, bud? Oh, he's over. The just got us in the playoffs. Now, Sean, fuck off. Guy's not a champion of the final. No, 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 no. Bad call. Congrats, the Oilers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what a shot up in here, by the way. Against yes, your boy. McDavid is an asshole. Oh, my God. Flies. What'd you say, pal? I said, what a shot by Panarin to win that game against your, your squad. Well, I mean, I don't know how that thing found the fucking net. I think I heard Biz on the pregame show say, like, hey, Panarin, like, the bread man needs to step up. If they're going to win this series, they need a lot out of him. And then that happened. I'm like, geez, Biz. Biz is so good at this. Yeah, Biz is really good at getting Wayne Gretzky off of this show, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, really? I think Wayne was supposed to come on the show, maybe, mm-hmm. and then Biz told the story about having beers with Wayne until 5 a.m., and then that got caught on, and now we don't think <laughs> Wayne's coming on the show. Biz is too electrifying. 
too good at his job, too much promotion, too much, yeah, we love that guy, then now we can't get the guy on the show. Does Wayno um, think people think that he's never drank a beer before? That well, was awesome. I think what it's Wayno's it? people that are thinking. Wow. Yeah. yeah, okay, you can't do it. Anyways, he's number four on the list now. <laughs> we got Sid, Mario, or Wayno. Hell yeah. Wow. I don't even know if Orr should be up there. Gordy. Whoa, Ow. whoa. Probably put Gino up there. Steve Eiserman. Or Yags. I had a fucking lot of money on Gino to score yesterday because the entire world was saying Gino ain't do a damn thing for the Pittsburgh Penguins this entire playoff run. Hasn't done nothing is what a lot of people are saying. I'm like, Gino hears them. He might not understand what they're saying because no, he speaks Russian, it. but he definitely hears the tone in which it's being said, and he can translate the tweets on the Twitter. Everybody's saying, Gino will answer. He did not. Mm -mm. Gino did not answer. I'm Yags then. I meant Yags. Yami yeah, Auger would answer. He would. Fucking Mike Modano. Brett oh. Hole. Joel Sackick. Bernard Joe. You talking about my Mount Rushmore? Yeah. Mountain's full, boys. Mm hmm. Stacked. Well, good players, though. These are all good players. Yeah, very good at the hockey. Not as good as Tim Peel was at, I guess, directing games. Yeah, no way. <laughs> you know, linesmen? Huh? Are they all linesmen? The refs? No, there are yeah. two refs and two linesmen. Yeah, look at the guy that gets in the and cuts the promo. Slasher! Yeah. <laughs> two. By far the most skilled of all referees in any sport, having to skate, be expert skaters, basically. Yeah, they're all Olympians on the ice, I, and that's yeah. not easy to do. With. Probably all ex-hockey players, if we had to guess. Yeah, have to. I didn't know they had the control that they had. I'll be intrigued to learn more from Tim Peel in about 20 minutes. We'll see you then. We're back earlier than that. We missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what just happened? Well, I sent to something 20 minutes from now, and but we have to we have stuff before that. The show will be back before that. What if we just took a 20 minute break? Right now? <laughs> Serious people come back in six minutes, just dead air, like it was whenever the power went out. By the way, shout out to the firefighters. Shout, yeah, shout out. Yeah. Thank you, firefighters. Have they uh, have they had to like? Are they deconstructing any parts of that building? What are they doing? To be clear, such a big fire, such a big part of our lives. Should probably pay attention. Have it. Nope. Should. I wish I did. I wish I did. I. I haven't heard anything. They're really. probably doing something. Somebody's not happy about it, I assume. There's no numerous people that aren't happy about what happened over there. And we oh, hope they find their happiness somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> we hope they do. Honestly, yes. hope they do. That whole top floor, I'm sure, just... No. Oh, happy. yeah. Still. Very expensive. Oh, yes. my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah, this place living place. in a much shittier apartment right now yeah. than they were. Hey, the top of this apartment complex, very, very, very expensive. Like, oh, people think New York City rent is normal here in Indianapolis. Whenever I looked at a couple of the places... But also, very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very nice apartments on top. They're all done, but they were saved by the firefighters who kicked ass. Trying to do something for the firefighters is a lot more difficult, I guess, than you could imagine. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, yeah, it's not just easy, I guess. I'd like to order them all lunch mm -hmm. for the next yeah. seven days. Send some pizza to the firehouse. Pizza, though, is that better than what they would make themselves? No. Or That's what, what I'm they... saying. So, Well, is it from Pizza Hut? So find the, out what, what they like. Find funny. out what that station likes. What kind of programs they watch on TV? Maybe send them a little uh, oh. package, like a, a care package of their favorite foods and other things. So, good idea. We're definitely thought shopping right now, brainstorming right now on how to do. Can't this. get wrong with Fazoli's, and obviously, if there's a cheesecake okay. factory anywhere near, you can order oh, that. Every so every so that's a big thing, right? They go to the grocery store, and there's like one person that's a chef in the line, and there's you know they do the whole thing because every meal could be the last, right? That's like an actual thing. Every meal could be yeah. the last. So. If now pizzas was presented, that was something that was presented like, hey, you should order pizza or whatever over there. Maybe on Friday. Friday's pizza day usually. Yeah, but every day, uh, I don't think pizza is a good enough meal to say thanks. Is what I'm saying. No offense to pizza. No. I love yeah. pizza. Yes. Fucking love pizza. Not pizza yeah. around here. But if they're going to a grocery store and they're getting ingredients to make something that's very nice, that's probably going to be nicer than it. Like I'd rather send yeah. a nicer meal than what they're getting or whatever. Yeah, because they're making sides with it and everything. It's like a complete meal. It's not just a slice Send of pizza. Send some of those big sense. old Brock steaks over. Ooh. Big package of those. Okay, but now there's 7 and 20 were the two stations that showed up, but then they all came in. Okay, how many stations? How many bells? Who do we... Who's? Mm -hmm. ma you, there's a lot that goes in. We just want to say thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. You. exactly. We want to say thank you. Thank you, Friday. Thought about opening a tab at some restaurants. Like, hey, if you guys just want to go pick up some food at some places, that's cool. But then how... Who's able to make those orders? Who's not able to make those? I mean, it is. Yeah. We just like to say thank you. Thank a you. A lot of hoops. We'll figure it out. I doubt it, honestly. I, I Trying. Don't know, I don't know if we will. <laughs> Maybe well, a grocery Ask some of our buddies that, hey, what's, a, what's like the average amount of people that would be in this station, in that station, and then we go from there. So, 
I did do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have some buddies and some family members that are in that. Oh, it depends on how many lines they got. Yeah. How many lines they got there? You know, that a full conversation. How many stations? How big is the city? How big is the apartment? You know, like the whole, I'm like, God damn, I have no idea. <laughs> so I'm trying to find all this info. There's a lot to it. We would like to say thank you, though. However we thank can. you. Yeah. Maybe send like a golden tea golf to each station. Oh, sweet. That would be cool. There's the idea. Yeah. Is there enough of those? Oh, yeah. You sure think? Two of them. I think so. Yep. I think we, we need, find a we need these guys ready at all times to be fighting. They fire. are we mentally. They have to play in golden tea. <laughs> mentally, they're going to be getting the yeah, hack. The hack is going back they sideways. They missed a fire because of golden tea. <laughs> yeah. Let it happen. They won't. Not these. You see what no. they did? They're I mean, not going to miss a fire. They're going to tables and everything else there. They, we get them brand new gold. They make golden teas every single year. They're still making them. And sports are dying down, so they are going to need a new activity. Okay, so maybe that's what we do. We gift something awesome to each that's station. Smart. Here we go. Way to go, boys. All right, who's who's doing that? All right. You're looking fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it the year now. Zito, you got a lot of yeah, Let me see. Hey, Bruce. Come on, Bruce. Fine. Go get him, Bruce. Figure it out, Bruce. Take Take it gold happy. consoles. All right. Figure out which stations need them. Yeah. Who's getting it? We'd like to say thank you. Do firehouses have like a fun rec room? I've never like I don't think I've ever been to a rec, uh, firehouse before. They have weight rooms and everything usually. Really? The kitchen. They have a kitchen. They have uh, bunks, right? They have mm -hmm. like lounge with. It depends on you know some of them. Some of these newer ones are crazy. Yeah. They're huge. Lounge with an Xbox. Buy right, Golden Tea. Fucking Best Buy. I think Golden Tea. How much? Seven hundred bucks. Ball what for every That's station it? in the city? Boom! <laughs> yeah, boom! There it is. <laughs> Throw in a Jaegerator too. Well, I don't know if we need to punish these people or nah. get them drunk for their saving lives. Jesus, it's a bad idea. Yeah, what? Somebody's gonna be trying to save Par, and there's gonna be a building burning down. They're not gonna know. make. Are it you enough. serious? Did you see them? Wait, They're here quick. They drop it's a everything. great group. All yeah. right, so we figured that out. No more pizzas. They're fucking, you can prime one of these fucking things, dude. What? I can prime one? Yeah, get here in fucking three days. Diggs, is that the real one or is that the weird, like, split one? The one from Best Buy. Golden Tee 3D the real Golden. One. I mean, is it like a, the arcade one, though? The actual stand up yeah, arcade? Yeah, arcade, yeah. We got to okay. figure that out. Because I think they need a TV, too. You plug it into a TV. I used to be a uh, Golden oh, Tee. TV owner. style. Well, I think you get the, the base and then you plug it into a TV. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. classic, like, source situation. Oh. And then. <laughs> That'd Boom. be so sweet. Then it freezes like every other day. Oh, shit. <laughs> so we might be giving them more work than anything. Be a pinball Let's, machine. We'll continue to think about this uh -huh. next hour. Hour three is on the other side of the intro here. We'll see you in about 2530. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Oh, is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, welcome back to that show, Hour 3, on this glorious Monday, May 16th, 2022, Sports Talk Now! Yeah! How you doing, AJ Hawk? I'm good. How you doing? It's been a while since I've chatted with you. Yeah, it's great to see you here on this Hour 3. You know, we missed you during the break. It's great to have you back. The Toxic Table is here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor. Also, great to have you back, bud. We missed you. Yeah, I missed you guys. Great to be back. How was the trip, the bachelor party? Did you guys get boozed up? Is that not what happens? Oh, no, yeah. We got boozed up. We played a lot of golf. We were right on the beach, so, you know, getting to jump in the old Atlantic oh. Ocean is always a good time. And there were some, actually some pretty good waves. Did some body surfing, even. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was getting out there. Uh, Ian Rappaport sent me a photo and said, if I was going to meet Connor anywhere, it would have been here in the heart of Charleston. And it was a uh, booze pops. Booze Pops uh, food truck. Did you see this thing? Mm, I did not see the food trucks. No. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Uh, this is Ian at the Booze Pops. I figured Rap Shoes was too. That's a nice idea. Yeah, it's easy to find Ian, though. Listen, you go to any city that Ian's in, you head straight to the Booze Pops, probably going to find Rappaport. Yep. Yeah, now we know. Think about how much networking he was trying to do around this fucking oh, thing. Oh, God. He was asking a person serving him his Booze Pop, probably a. Uh, uh, a tequila. What? Maybe a martini. What? Maybe a triple layer. What? Maybe off the high roller menu. What? Organic spiked ice menu. What? Wow, these things got booze in them. 
What? Hey. Rap horse, like, excuse me, have you sold any of these booze pops in the NFL owners? What do they say whenever they told you that? <laughs> That's kind of how he operates. It's great to have you back. Tone Diggs is here, one half of the hammer. Done. done. Cowboys, the other half of the hammer. Done. done. Cowboys at Bubba Gumpino. It was awesome watching Liverpool win that thing this yeah. weekend. Go on, you lads. The FA Cup, uh, the FA Championship, uh, one in which it has been played since 1872, I do believe, in England. It is every team in England competes for this. So the little pickup teams with a bunch of booze bags, drunks in the neighborhood, playing against the greatest of the greats, like the Liverpools, Manchester United, Manchester Cities, uh, Chelsea's, everything like that. Who is the outright champion of England? And whenever I watch the highlight reel to that thing, some scouser put together for oh, Liverpool, oh, oh, oh. where Liverpool, it took them a long time to finally win this. It was kind of burning their shit that they didn't win this. They've become the champions, I guess, of England very quickly here. Congrats to Liverpool winning in the penalties. Let's go. And oh, getting yeah. the dub. The guy who hit the game winner has played four minutes all season. He's played maybe a couple games at tops, and that was, uh, as we say, top class shit housery, my friend. Going to the uh, Chelsea fans, giving them the fucking Hulk Hogan. With that being said, a guy who's only played like five minutes all season, being tasked with being the sixth kicker. That means the team's value of him is much higher than they're probably paying him. Our, our starting left back, Robertson, is an absolute weapon. So this guy actually is very good. He's just Robertson's world class. So this guy never gets a chance to play. Wally Pip real quick comes yeah. in here. The team is like, you know what, guy that really hasn't done anything to get us here, but is really good in practice? We'll put you at fucking six. They went through five, tied, four, four, big time save on the fifth shot by the Liverpool lad or the Chelsea lad. Who's, who got Chelsea the lad made a big save on Mane, who never misses penalties ever then the, the entire city of liverpool puts their pressure on this guy that never played <laughs> fucking knocks it home wins that thing Beast. if i'm his agent i'm trying to get traded <laughs> no, no that's the greek scouser now they call him forever liverpool legend forever well somebody needs to fucking pay him or play him <laughs> yeah yeah he, the liverpool squad said you we think you're the one that should handle this situation that's a big fucking deal right second time this year they've beaten chelsea in a cup in penalties too Christian Pulisicer guy missed like four or five. No, not penalties, but oh, like. Oh, I was gonna say. Yeah. Where was this game played? Uh, in Wembley. Wembley. Wembley Stadium. Oh, nice. Yeah, my buddy actually sent me a picture. He was there. He just happened to be there. When I was talking to him. Oh, Mark Madden. Yeah. Twel Twellerman. No, Twellerman. No, I wish I was on a text basis with Twellerman. Mark He's Madden. Too good on TV. Mark Madden. Mark Madden. No, not him. Somebody else. Another guy. Oh, there. you know, a lot of people that were over there. Yeah. People were wondering if uh, Twellerman was actually wearing a Chelsea tarp when he was calling. Oh. Oh. Guy doesn't understand the Scousers. He, he thinks that people walk alone. They don't walk alone. They don't. Mm. No. Especially with, come on, you Reds. The treble is still on, my friends. Champions League final last Saturday of May. Liverpool's God. dominant. They're winning uh -huh. all these tournaments, by the way. The is FA there an offseason? I don't know. Never. There wouldn't that. have been if the World Cup was when it Correct. was supposed to be. In June? Yes, sir. Well, it can't be in June. You want these guys to fuck them? Well, it shouldn't be where it is in Got fucking air conditioning. Containers. All, of these, all the places. Yeah, the dire heat stroke. So this FA1 matters, though. I was trying to look it up on why. It when Mo Salah got subbed out, just casually jogged off the field. What? And I wasn't keeping up with everything. I'm like, oh, this one doesn't matter. I, I believe Taylor Twelman actually, or somebody said, oh, they're resting him for another championship or something. Turns out he got hurt. Oh, but I put no. on a tweet that was like, oh, this championship doesn't matter? Like, How many championships can you have, though? There's, every three days, I feel like. Well, that's, Liverpool that, was going for the quadruple. West Ham was up 2 nothing, but City came back. So now the quadruple is uh, dead. almost dead. We will have a chance on the final day, but Liverpool has to win. City has to lose. And that would be – by the way, that's – Four. Okay, so I mean, he did not <laughs> answer my <laughs> question. He, he, did about. he did not answer what? your question at all. So there's a league championship that they could also win, which is throughout the entire season. Man City seems to have that one locked up or yeah. whatever, even though they almost lost. But all the tournaments that they're playing against each other to like kind of get to it feels like Liverpool does win them, if and there's Liverpool, three of them. The if Liverpool won all four, that's all they could win this year. That's it. That's the most you could win. Like you Champions. won everything. You're in. Champions League, Premier League. FA. FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Which is the entire season. The Carabao Cup is just the Premier League teams in a cup. But it's just season. No, that Where's is Concafa? Concafa Cup. Concafa's over here. Concafa's over here. Concafa's over here. It's, it's ours. ours. This and we won. Absolutely yeah. do not That's respond like that when I ask a soccer question. Hey, the That's United States. Hey, excuse me. You, you should know that the Concafa's ours. I'm trying to ask a question for some... 
there's some people that watch this program yeah. that may not know a lot about soccer. So I'm, I'm okay. asking who, you here we go. Here we go. Enjoy AJ. watching. Who watches this show and doesn't know anything about the Liverpool soccer? Liverpool is domestic. USA is international. That's the difference. Oh, yeah. Cup team, international Liverpool team. won't travel. Liverpool well, it, it will travel, but it's a cup team, not a national team. The United States is a national team. So yeah. Liverpool versus, for instance, Portland nah, Timbers. Right. You don't need to. It's all right. No, but we oh, need well, listen. Yeah, we would like a chance go. to be People in. People listening. You need to know. I want you to. I want you to. You. I think you're. You're like. You're informing yourself when you explain it to me. So. The U.S. team, what they won't travel and play in these tournaments? No, because that's the United States. That's a na uh, an international. That's a national team. So that's made up of a bunch of players that play for a bunch of different cup teams, club teams, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Liverpool like teams. Yeah, like Concacaf is is USA, Canada, Mexico. That's the Concacaf. Concacaf, the national games are the all stars of all of those league teams that are from each country. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we got a bunch of guys on our national team in the United States that are playing internationally now. Good deal. This is good mm -hmm. news. Because our guys have basically come up in the European system, so they've sacrificed their entire lives to soccer, which is basically what the Europeans do in those clubs. High school, junior high, elementary school. Hey, you're, you're waking up. Let's test that cardio. Mm -hmm. You're going back to practice. Then you're maybe learning how to read. Maybe learn how to maybe. read. Then you're eating, napping. Then you got afternoon session. Then you got cardio at night. And you're doing that every single day in that club, basically for your entire life. How do we compete? How does any Americans ever compete? Well, we haven't really. Yeah, you know, no. we had that one run where we did. But now we got dudes that are growing up in the system yeah. over there doing similar things. Yes. So that's why we have a chance to be. The soccer Lombardi champion. Right. Right. The future kind of learned our way over there, you know? And then the World Cup is just completely separate from all of this. Yes. World Cup is the all-stars of every league team representing their countries. Makes sense. So the United States going to win that. And it's, right. it's normally over the summer, but Cutter's a billion degrees. So it's in the fall now. Didn't, okay, when they named, when they said, hey, Cutter, you can have the World Cup it's played in June. Didn't someone say, hey, anyone ever check the temps during that time? No, because what was happening was, let's just act like these are oversized dollars mm -hmm. and there's a lot more of them. <laughs> so what happened was, Cutter was like, hey, you guys want to have a World Cup in Qatar? Qatar? Uh, the FIFA was like, we can never do that to our players. It is way too hot. And then they said, boom, how about a couple of McNuggets? <laughs> and they said, no, 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 that ain't enough. That ain't enough. So Qatar went into their oil oh. patch, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they said, is that right, FIFA? Well, we'll build stadiums, and we'll put air conditions in them. Are you sure you don't want to do it in Qatar? And... Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, no. oh no! Oh no! It's done. And that's what happened. That's what happened. Oh no! And that's what happened. Okay, that's what Qatar did to soccer, <laughs> and I don't like it. I'm just doing a re reenactment. Yeah, that's what happened. But yeah, we believe that is what took place because nobody with a brain would have made that decision. I apologize. You just, I mean, explain that. So safe. Well, there's a guy that went to jail, been. right, from FIFA? Uh, oh yeah. Yes, all of them, basically. And there's just been, uh, you know filling pockets since the beginning of time with FIFA, but they're the ones telling America, oh, we can't play in that stadium. It is not nice enough. Well, how about now? Can we now? <laughs> yep. Now that we've reconsidered it, go ahead and fucking do it. That's kind of how FIFA operates. Mm -hmm. Right, Gumpy? I mean, I, I haven't been in the soccer world for that long, except for, you know, when I was a kid, I was in the FIFA world. That's how it all operates, right? Absolutely, my friend. That, Very corrupt. That stack also represents the amount of bodies that are underneath those Jeez. stadiums. Well, That's true. Have we ever gotten an answer? We did a couple contests, a couple different contests on how many pieces of paper are in this thing. We're Zeke still was counting it. Count. Yeah. Are we saying like OSHA wasn't out there during the building process? I don't think so. I don't know if OSHA is no. an international operation that FIFA cares about. Yeah, that's a club yeah. operation. I feel like you could also probably just give them the cutter treatment too with OFA. What's that? Just, you know, grab one of those fat stacks. Hey, you didn't see anything here. OFA. OFA. Bofa? Bofa? Whatever the hell you just said. OSHA? OSHA. <laughs> I thought you were saying I thought he was a oh, I thought you were doing Bofa. <laughs> no, man, no. Wow. OSHA. OSHA is the governing body of the uh, is safe it? work site. By the way, sure. that's, hey, that's good soccer talk we just uh, had. Let's yeah. get to a break. We'll get, on the other side, we'll have hockey talk. <laughs> Here, Here we go. go. Look at us. This, is, this show has depth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it, AJ? Lots of depth. I think linesmen or referees in hockey probably have the greatest stories of all professional referees. A lot of chirping going on. Can't wait to chat with Tim Peel. He was an NFL ref for 22 years. 
officiated 1,362 regular season games and 90 playoff games. Damn. This guy's been on the ice. He got fired because of what happened on that hot mic. I had to fucking get one early. <laughs> so he kind of took a, a shield for everybody else. Let's get to a break. Um, Music is up. Man, is this thing? Is Spotify crashing? No. It's oh, no. Is it happening? It was just on a little bit ago. Yeah. Right? I heard. Yeah, I was playing. Is that the computer? Is the computer on the fritz? <laughs> maybe, maybe it's one of those 45 updates. Here we go. <laughs> Finally wants to catch I'm not up. sure. That's an interesting thing, though. What are you doing? Huh? <laughs> Huh? I don't want to have to spend a couple of these to get a new one of you. <laughs> <laughs> You've been around since the beginning. Let's go. Tighten up, dude. You don't need an update. You're old school. Hell yeah. This computer stinks, though. Oh, it stinks. Dell. What is that? Lenovo? What is it? Uh, well, of course. Inspiron, maybe? What is that? It's an Intel 8th Gen. 8th okay. Gen? What gen are we on right now? Who's the, what's the most updated gen? 20 probably. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> Back in four minutes with NHL official for 23 uh, years. I said NFL. NHL official Timmy Peel. Can't wait to chat with him and more to wrap up this glorious Monday, May 16th. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Coach Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Oh, man, Pat, it's an honor to be on with you, man. Thanks for having me. You're a legend. Thank you for putting me through my workout and having the scouts actually come watch me kick at West Virginia. I don't think I've ever fully thanked you for that moment, Coach. No, man, I, I, I've drank the, the McAfee Kool-Aid for a long time. Uh, <laughs> Let's get right into it. The locker room culture changed completely when I was in elite, from when I was a rookie to when I was done, and I retired after the 2016 season. Now it's even more different, I would assume, from when you came into Pittsburgh and everything like that. The dancing on the logo, the TikTok, everything like that that you guys have had to experience. What is your messaging in there? How do you adapt and let players be themselves without, you know, doing too much? Because that is a fine balance that you've been able to do, I think, in an incredible job with throughout your entire time in Pittsburgh. I think for me, more than anything, I try to stay connected. You know, um, just getting a sense of where these guys are coming from, what's in vogue for their generation, what captures their attention, how do they learn, how do they communicate, how do they interact with each other formally and informally. And I think being a parent kind of helps me. You know, my boys are 19 and 20, so it's not much difference between them and some of the younger guys that I deal with here. And so for me, it's just about gaining an understanding and working to stay connected. You know, that's my general attitude, man. It's adapt or die for me. And, and I want to—I don't want to be one of them old crusty guys, man. Just that just refuses to adapt. Although I am one of those old crusty guys now. Yeah, you are <laughs> old as shit now. You know what I mean? I mean, you've been around a long time. I remember back in the day, whenever you showed up, there was a lot more, you know, to the camera. There was a lot more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of that. Now you're just old ass man now, huh? You know how it is. Years in this business will scar you, man. It'll settle you down. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> one of my favorite moments uh, with you is. Uh, when you would tell me every um, warm-up, uh, I'm going to get you back to Pittsburgh when you're old and cheap. Uh, what, what does yes. that mean? <laughs> what, what did that mean? And uh, should that have been taken as a smack in the mouth like I, uh, <laughs> whenever you said that to me? No, man. It was a tip of the cap, man. There's okay. certain guys Good. around this league that I'm really interested in, but I know I cannot afford. And, <laughs> and, and you were one of them. So I was going to wait for you to physically deteriorate a little bit. <laughs> You came back into my wheelhouse. Yenzers are going to go bananas in Hinesfield this weekend. First time it could be filled up in a long time. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to. Oh, mama, I'm in the of my life. I'm the oh, 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 oh. Is that your alarm clock? Yeah, just say yes, by the way. Yeah. It's my ringtone. It's my alarm <laughs> clock. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate you, Coach T. Last question before we let you go. Uh, why'd you let Troy Paul Mala do what he fucking did to me? Why'd you let... I know you've heard of this. Why, why? Well, that's a short side of the field. That's bad football. You guys coaching unsound football over there in Pittsburgh? How did that happen? We know you and love you as a man, but on Sundays in the fall, man, you're the nameless gray faces that we... All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, never had a losing season, absolute legend, two-time Super Bowl champion. Mike Tomlin. Yeah! Thank you, Coach. Yeah! Tim Raj had to walk in there and do a full 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Curtsy. Hey, I'm, we're coming. We're bringing a, a big sports stooge thing over here. Is that okay? Yep, deal. Perfect. Let's get some tea. Let's get the fuck out of here. How do you think that went? The Dwayne Raj and the Queen. You think she liked them? Yeah. yeah. I bet she liked them. She probably knows a lot. Like, what if she's sitting there and then all of a sudden she's like, so... What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? That was a spot on accent. Hit <laughs> that one out of the park. Like, what if she's dude. really dialed in to the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Big time hockey show here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> AJ, what we get uh, done breaking down right there? Soccer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a right. So much range we have here. Well, May 16th, you know, calls for a lot of different talks that we wouldn't normally do. <laughs> but I believe this conversation, if it was presented to us any day of the week, we would take because this show has nothing but the utmost amount of respect for officiating as a whole because this show has experienced firsthand what bad officiating can do not only to a game but an entire career mm -hmm. for people yeah i believe we uh we hold refs more accountable than anybody else but we also compliment refs That's right. more mm -hmm. than anybody else i feel like we treat officiating as you know the third team on the field more than anybody else We've had incredible conversations in the past with Gene Steratore, Mike Pereira, and now a 20-plus year vet of the NHL, a man who has been there, done that, when it comes to Lord Stanley's cup chase on the ice, a guy who's going to break down all the bullshit that the Rangers did to the Pittsburgh Penguins this series. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Peel. Yeah! Yeah! Hey! What's going on, Tim? Thanks, Pat. Thanks for having me on, boys. Hey, Tim, it's an honor to have you, man. And everything I just said there is real. We very much understand the importance and the value of officiating good and bad, how much it affects the game. In hockey, it feels like the relationship between the officials and the players is vastly different than any other sport. Are you guys always talking to the players? And is that by design? And is that kind of in the culture of the game, Tim? Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think the reason that that happens, Pat, is that hockey is such a physical, emotional sport. And the the role of an official is to calm everything down, get get people back in a good place. When, when things are heating up, you know, my job is to go over and talk to, you know, Mike Sullivan or Gerard Gallant and say, hey, you got to you got to bring the temperature down on the team here because that, things are starting to spiral out of control. So we do talk a lot and the guys that are that are really good refs in the league, the the veterans like back in the day, Don Koharski and Bill McCreary and Kerry Fraser. It's it, they were good referees, but they were also really good communicators, and that's what I tried to be in my career. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty intense out there, but it's it's fun at the same point. Do you ever look at other referees and other professional sports and all of you and all of your your referee buddies in hockey and say like, you guys aren't doing anything? Like, look at us, we're basically Olympic skaters out here dodging pucks and high sticks and breaking up fights of some of the toughest guys on the planet. Like it's a different thing. What you guys do is there, do you guys have to like continually work? Like do you practice skating still? Do you still have to work on things all the time because it's so physical? Yeah. You know what, AJ, that's a great, great point. Uh, Ronnie Culpa, uh, he's an MLB umpire. He, I live in St. Louis. I grew up in Canada, but been in St. Louis for 21 years and he's from here. And, and I'd always joke with him. I'm like, are you are you kidding me? Like you guys, you all got a drum on. on you've got a big drum on yourself. You know, you're you're uh, out of shape, and you guys are standing there calling balls or strikes or whatever. And I said, we're skating out there with world class athletes. You know, I'm 55, and at the end of my career, I'm skating out there with Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin. And these guys, these guys are making me. You know, they're skating past me like I'm one of the turnstiles at the New York subway. You know. So our, <laughs> Our guys have to be in shape, and they are. Our, our, our referees are phenomenal athletes. They work out all year just like the players do, and it's not like the old days where you just showed up at training camp. It's a 12-month-a-year job now. Were you a hockey player growing up, and how did you uh, transfer into the officiating role? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was, Pat. I was a shitty player, and that's why I became a referee. So, <laughs> you know, I grew, up, I grew up in a small town in Canada, and like everybody wanted to play in the NHL. And then, but in the summertime, you know, I, I came from nothing. I grew up in a trailer park and we lived by this country club 
and trust me, we were on the different side of the the, the highway than than uh, the country club growing up in this trailer park. And uh, in the summertime, I caddied, and then the wintertime rolled around. I missed having the spending money, and mom and dad were like, hey, you're 13, why don't you start reffing? So kind of got into my blood, and then once I realized I wasn't going to make it the NHL as a player, I kind of refocused and just uh, still was doing it for fun. And they scout the NHL, a lot of people don't understand, they scout for referees like they scout for players. So they would send guys out to the junior ranks in Canada. Uh, and by the way, a 20-plus year career, it seems like it all worked out. Congrats from Trailer Park. To St. Louis for 20 years. Yeah, wow. hell yeah. There we go. Huh? Let's go. Are you one of the voices on NHL yeah. officiating? You know, Pat, you missed you missed the 2014 Olymp uh, uh, 2014 Olympics, but that's that's no big deal. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so let's talk about obviously an incredible resume. You've called 1,362 regular season games if the internet's not lying. 90 yep. playoff games. Been around, know the game. You've been refing ever since you were a kid. The flow of the game in hockey's real, right? So in our sport, they always talk about, oh, that was a makeup call. That was a makeup call. That's bullshit. In hockey, it feels like the culture of hockey is it's understood. Like, hey, if some team gets something wrong against them, there's probably going to be a makeup call on the other side. Am I misreading that situation, or is that very real as somebody that's always been a hockey fan but not in a hockey culture? No, it's uh, – I'm not going to say that it's real because I don't know where the term makeup call ever – when it ever started. But let me tell you this, for example – Say we're rough, we're, we've got the Pix, Pittsburgh uh, Penguins and the Rangers, and we've got five penalties called against Pittsburgh, or five penalties that got called against the Rangers. We want to make sure that we do not miss a call against the other team where they haven't had a power play yet. And so our guys don't don't go out and make up a call that isn't that isn't a real call because the twenty guys that are working the playoffs right now, they just cut it down to the second round to twelve guys. So eight guys go home after the first round. Now we're down to 12. So in that first round, guys have to really show their bosses like, hey, I'm on top of my game. I'm calling good NHL penalties. And so they can't go out and make up a call. But what does happen and is very real is your antennas go up and you go, I better not miss a call here. I cannot miss a call against the other team. They haven't had a power play yet. And so, yes, it goes on, but not to the point where you're making up a call. A third down penalty, obviously huge because it extends a drive. It's almost a turnover. Uh, a pass interference is like a 30, 40 yard penalty sometimes. Obviously huge, changes the game. But a penalty in hockey is an actual, I mean, that's a real advantage. Like, hey, you have a one man advantage for that amount of time. That is where the Stanley Cup champions score mm -hmm. and where the people who aren't Stanley Cup champions don't score. I mean, that is literally what happens. And I don't think makeup means like just make one up. I think makeup is like, hey, we owe you one because of what has happened in the past or the calls that we have had there. Whenever you start thinking about, you know, because how we learned about you was you saying, I had to fucking get one against Nashville there earlier. Yeah. Had to fucking get one against Nashville earlier. Is that because you're trying to set the tone of the game? Was something happened in the past? And how regular is that you just happened to be the person that was on the mic and then inevitably had to eat the bullet for everybody? Yeah, no, it, 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 I'm surprised you brought that up. I didn't think it made the internet. <laughs> well, I had to do. I had to. Make, I had to get there in the proper fashion. I didn't want you to think I was getting there immediately, but it does call into what we were about to talk about with the Rangers fucking over the Penguins yesterday. Yeah, no, honestly, what happened that game? So I was supposed to retire four weeks later, um, here in St. Louis. And that happened on March 23rd. My last game was April 24th here in St. Louis. And and ironically, before the game, I went into the trainer's room of the Nashville Predators, uh, Pete Rogers. He's a longtime equipment manager. And as you guys know, these equipment managers, they don't get paid a lot of money like the players do. And, and they, they, they're the ones that really take care of us. And oh, yeah. I'm sure you had you, you guys had your favorites, too. And so I took Pete in a nice bottle of Camus wine. He's a trainer for Nashville and thank him for, you know, his friendship over the years. And so I didn't leave that dressing room going, you know, I, I want to fuck uh, uh, Nashville. And <laughs> <laughs> especially, with four, especially with four weeks to go in my career. I'm like, yeah, that's, this is a good idea. Let's blow it all up with four weeks to go. <laughs> and so when I, I made the call... And as I'm going to the penalty box, I see the replay on the jumbotron. I'm like, Jesus! Like I thought, the, I thought the national player tripped him. And I'm working with this real veteran official that I respected a lot, and Kelly Sutherland. And and when I came over, 
because the penalty was 10 feet from him and I'm out at the blue line and I call it and it was my it was my defense mechanism kicking in because I was embarrassed that I made this call because I prided myself in being a good ref and making good calls. And, and I simply said to him, yeah, it wasn't much, but I wanted to get a fucking penalty. <laughs> and it just came. It, I We called two penalties the entire game. It wasn't like I, I wanted to get Nashville. So it came out wrong. And as you guys know, the world we're living in now, it's uh, gone. You know, it's, uh, you know. I don't want to get into politics, but you can probably tell where I stand. <laughs> <laughs> you know. not, we won't dive into that, but that thing went as soon as we heard it. And I think because as fans of other sports, we think that refs think that way in those sports. And then as we learn more about the hockey culture in the hockey community, it feels like refs do have a little bit of a flow of game almost, like an obligation to the game for that yeah. type of thing. And you explained it there. If one team has five and another team has zero, like we're obviously going to try to not miss any calls for the team that's potentially getting penalized more heavy. But does flow of the game calculate into that? Because I heard a lot of like super hockey people basically backing you saying, what he said there wasn't that big of a deal almost is what people were saying. Yeah, no, and I had a tremendous amount of resport, uh, support from the hockey community, from current players, ex-players, coaches, GMs, and so on. And you know what? At the end of the day, I'm a big believer in, in, in shit happens for a reason, and uh, and it's how you come out on the other end. And at the end of the day, it re really wasn't a big deal. But, uh, but yeah, no, as far as the flow of the game, Pat, like, uh, you know, I watched game six or game seven of the Rangers uh, Penguins game there on the weekend and I think they went six minutes without a whistle at one point. They're just going up and down. They're playing hockey and as, as a referee you're like, okay these guys are playing. We don't have any stoppages. We don't have any scrums. Let them play. I don't need to get involved here as long as there's nothing egregious that, you know Sydney's in on a breakaway and gets tripped well obviously you got to call that And but it, when, the, when the game's going along like that, it's like let them play and just keep it going and that's that's what's great about our sport is that's just continuous you know yeah guy can grab a guy by the head rip his helmet off send mm -hmm. him off the ice it's right. so facto power play they score a goal fuck okay all right great so, so you know what what's crazy about that and i don't know whether sullivan was trying to cover for his for his player because i mike sullivan i've got a what he's done he with that team this year with all the injuries and so on first of okay. all he's a phenomenal coach even before the season started but I think he might have been trying to cover for Pedersen there because um, I don't think the Pittsburgh player and I don't think most players know the rules. And I don't expect them to know the rules, but there's a few that they should know. Sullivan said in the post-game press conference that Pedersen had to skate off the ice. Well, that isn't the rule. What? Pedersen, no, Pedersen could have leaned down and picked his helmet up and put it back on the head. And he doesn't even need to do the chin strap up. Okay, all he had to do put the was, cap on. Just put the bucket on, pal. Yeah, Pat. Honest to God, all he had to do was lean down and put his helmet back on, and boom, he's allowed to continue. With what the do play. you know, Tim? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that just that just that just throws salt in the wound, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Tim it does. <laughs> Don't you expect though, Tim, as referees? Do you Damn expect? It, Tim! <laughs> Do you expect the coaches and players to know all the rules, though? What the There's certain ones they should know. Game. They should know because they brought it in a few years ago, and and I and I love Sid. Like Sid is one of my favorite all-time players, and I got a got a, I have a couple good uh, stories about him. But huh, you know he he said that 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 was a stupid rule. I I don't know. Is it stupid? I don't know. But the reason that they instituted it a few years ago was, you know, for example. Sid loses his helmet, he's standing in front of the net, and the Rangers are just throwing, you know, bombs from the point. We don't want a player to get hit in the head without a helmet on and maybe get seriously injured or have a concussion or, or maybe something worse that we don't even want to talk about. So the reason that we, you know, we just started it a few years ago that players have to wear their helmets. And it's not a bad rule, it's safety for the players. But unfortunately, in this case, I don't think he understood that he didn't have to come off the ice. Man, that's a that's a heartbreaker, you know. You know, I know, I know you're a big Sid fan, Pat, and I heard an interview with him a few months ago. He was with the Canadian program Sportsnet, and they asked him, they said, Sid, what is your yeah, biggest threat? And... You know, I thought it was going to be maybe a Stanley Cup playoffs or, 
something and he goes or they said what do you think what what do would what would you like to change and he goes I wish I had treated the officials differently when I came in the league and I was like when the guy told me that I I was surprised but I wasn't surprised because of the type of person he is when he came in the in the NHL he came, had come from the Quebec hockey major league uh, uh, Quebec major league and he ran that league. He was Sidney Crosby. He ran the officials. He ran everything. And so when he came to the NHL, he thought he was going to kind of run us and, and you know, intimidate us. And he quick, quickly got put in a spot because guys have been in the league for 10, 15, 20 years. But he was young and immature, just like I was young and immature when I came in the league. And I was cocky and arrogant. And and But he recognized that years later. He's like, I wish I had treated the officials differently. But this is the type of guy he is. It was four, five, six years ago. I worked my thousandth game, and when a player works, plays a thousand games, or a referee does a thousand games, it's considered a milestone. And I was never one, uh, never a big autograph seeker, and and uh, or collector. And but I remember later on that year, Sid came up to me. He's like, "Hey, Timmy," he goes, "I heard you 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 reached a thousand games. Thanks a lot." And I go, oh, "Thanks, Sid." I go, "I'm not a big collector, but I go." I really, you know, I love you. I, I, I'd love to have a jersey of yours in my uh, basement. And, and so, you know, I figured he'd forget or whatever. And anyway, that summer, July, August, boom, doorbell rings. Go open the package, Pat. And there's Sid. Oh, wow. And, and so on nice. and on. Can't it, win the first round. But. Congratulations on a thousand games played and many more. And that's, but that's the type of guy he is because he went out, he got his equipment manager to say, hey, go find Tim Peel's address. I want to send him a jersey. And he's the best. And, but I've got a funny story yes, from please. 2013. And you guys cut me off if I'm rambling. But no, no, feed me Sidney Crosby yep. stories. <laughs> Love so, this. So am I allowed, how, I, am I allowed to swear on this show? You already. Hell you yeah. already did three times. <laughs> you got us fucking canceled three times already. You're a champion is. of the curse words champion. there, Tim. Champion. So, so 2013, we're working in Long Island and at Nassau County Coliseum, and there's a Marriott oh, right across from the parking lot there in Long Island. And so it's an afternoon game. The Islander fans, they're crazy, the New York fans. And they're, they're tailgating all afternoon, so they're all tuned up and drunk at the game. We go into overtime, and... I forget the Islander player, but he hooks it. And so my arm goes up and I give Pittsburgh power play. And sure enough, Brooks Orpik scores uh, in overtime from the point. Hey, Brooksy! And, Brooksy! And, and, uh, and Pittsburgh goes on and, they, you know, they eliminated the Islanders. Oh, God, those are the good old yeah. days! <laughs> so, so now we need a police escort to get us from from the rink across the parking lot to our hotel. So there's like eight police with us and we're walking through and people are throwing beer at us. It's just the, the comments are vile. So this one woman and she's got her kids standing there and she goes, she all she's saying is, how does Sydney's blank taste? How does <laughs> blank hmm. taste? And I'm listening to this and I'm like, you're a, first of all, you're a woman and just that's how much Jeez. That, that's how passionate those fans were and i'm telling you i loved i love sydney he's i was rooting so you, you know what it's good for hockey like <laughs> um the rangers getting back in but i was rooting for pittsburgh because i don't know how many more years they're going to be able to hold this band together yeah and, oh, we no. got it Tim. Oh, this is no. not a funny story you're back at square one here you know <laughs> talking Did about you respond did you respond to this nice lady? Yeah, who said who was teaching no. her kids proper shit talk to a ref? No. Yeah, no, I just ignored her and kept my head down. Sydney, um, fate. I'm not getting into it. I'm not getting into it. Why was he? Why is your favorite? He's your favorite player. Is he a lot of refs' favorite players? Is it because of how he plays all of hockey instead of just one? And if you were to judge these teams that are left, is there anybody you think that the refs favor more than others as just humans and everything like that? Just you know. Right? No, it's no. He's it, to answer the first part. He's one of my favorites because of, you know, I'm looking at him the other day before he got hurt. And he's 36 years old, and every shift he's going out there, he's still dominating, which is unbelievable to be able to do at his age. Like he he's skating the same way that he did five years ago, which I I don't get. But 
he's got legs on him like tree trunks. It's unbelievable how stallion. But, yeah, <laughs> he's a and uh, but no, as far as the teams and 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 you know referees wanting one team owner or another, it couldn't be further from the truth. I saw somebody on social media when they when they were playing Toronto and Tampa, and, and somebody said, "Oh, the refs are going to favor." Toronto again and someone said well how's that worked out for Toronto they haven't got out of the first round in 18 years so <laughs> you know <laughs> we do not care we all we care about is survival making sure we are not the story of the game and thank goodness you know the all the game sevens that there, there weren't any controversy in regards to the officiating and uh, we weren't part of the story but the refs don't care who, who wins that's the last it's never been true, and it's certainly not true today. Well, we don't. No, you can speak for yourself. Other yeah. sports, there's some noted <laughs> shooting too. Mm -hmm. We yep. got an over oh, to yeah. hit. We got an over to still to hit. This guy better start shooting fucking better free throws. Whenever this guy gets the ball, <laughs> that has happened in the past. And I guess every official, that's like the that's probably the biggest slight that you can hear as a ref. I'd assume is that. You are not a fair ref, not a fair official. 22 years, did you ever get into it with anybody about your the way things have gone, or is it pretty much smooth sailing? No, you know, you get into it with players on the ice because it's an emotional game. But, you know, I remember Brian Boyle when he played for Boyle. Tampa. You know, Brian's playing for Pittsburgh now, and he was just giving it to me from the bench one night. And, just, and, and then he came out the next shift, and he goes, Timmy, he goes, I'm sorry. I said, don't you ever apologize for being emotional. I said, that's what makes our game so good. I said, I said, now if you cross the line, then I said I'll ha I'll have to give you a, you know a penalty or whatever. But I said, don't ever, don't ever apologize for being emotional because we cannot. That's the one thing that we can't take out of any sport is the emotion. And there's a fine line between emotion and abuse, but. You can't take it out. Man, they were trying to do that in the NFL this year. It's a very emotional mm -hmm. sport. They're trying to get rid of people's celebrations. It's like, come on, let them. That, like, I don't understand that. And you talked about, you know, uh, officials changing a game. You know, we're watching the Super Bowl this year, and they had let them play for 59 and a half minutes, and all of a sudden we get that call with, what, a minute and a half left in the game? And, and I'm like, you know what? You guys have not been a part of the game. No one's talking about you, but now they're all talking about you. And as a referee, that you, that you never want that to be the case. Uh, I love that you're judging other refs, too. I enjoy <laughs> that. Go ahead, Nick. Tim, <laughs> Tim, video replay has been a huge part of the NHL for a long time, mostly to determine goals and what's not a goal. Did, did the puck cross the line, et cetera? Now it seems like it, it's being a little, expanded a little bit more with goaltender interference. Obviously, they're looking at the – you look at the play last night with Gensel. Was his, was his stick above the crossbar? Was the puck above the crossbar? How do you feel about video replay? And as the ref, like when they went to the war room in Toronto and they overturned a decision maybe you made on the ice, did that bother you at all or was it like, okay, good, we got it right? Early in my career, it's a great question because early in my career when they, when they first started instituting uh, – uh, replays for goalie interference and and they overturned your call you felt like you were embarrassed like you were embarrassed not to the fans or the players but you were embarrassed to your bosses in Toronto and New York because you're like you know what I I should have I should have got that that call done in real time and but over the last few years and I think social well I know social media is a big reason for this is that we have to get the call right uh, because what happens is if we don't, eight seconds later, it's viral on social media. So it's imperative for the league. We can't have goals scored if, if it's offside. We can't have uh, pucks kicked in. We can't have goalie interference. You know, that Gensel play, when it happened, I looked at my son and I said, they're going to count this goal because there's, there wasn't enough evidence to overturn it. Like, we're talking inches how close that was. Now, Rangers fans, 50% of the people are going to say it was high stick. The other 50% are going to say, no, it's a good goal. So, yeah, who cares but your about question, I think it's, I think just the just basically because of the world we're living in right now, it's imperative that we have video replay so that we can get it right so that we're not talking about it two weeks later how somebody got screwed because of an offside goal or outside the nassau coliseum you're not hearing you know yeah. too much right yeah. Yeah, yeah go ahead aj tim was there ever any guys out there that you would like beg for them not to fight because you would catch some friendly fire every time they would get in a fight and you're trying to break them up or trying to you know control everybody else around them no you know what i uh I, I was on. A, I did a radio show this morning with Cam Jansen, and Cam used to play for the New Jersey Devils. He was a tough guy, and 
And I loved it when we had the fights. And I know society's changed, and that's part of the reason that we don't have as much fighting anymore. But I was the I was the, the ref, AJ, instead of the line. The linesmen are the ones that have to get in there and break the break up the fight. So I was the pretty boy standing in the background with my pad of paper writing down who's gal getting penalties. So I never had to get in the way. But, you know, I miss those days a little bit. But I also, you know what, society's changed. and But nobody seems to get up and go to the bathroom when there's a good hockey fight. Everybody's standing on their feet watching it. I love the fact that in hockey, though, the fight is like an actual strategy. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? The boys are a little down, a little flat. You know, get anybody going? Well, one of their friends just goes and gets in a brawl right now. Yeah. Hey, need you to get out there and just go fight their biggest guy so the boys will wake up maybe. if They might not, by the way. Might not work. Mm -hmm. Might end up losing 10 nothing here, but we're down three. We need something. Like, that was just a part of strategy since I feel like the beginning of hockey almost. I love it. 100%. And, and even, even for tough guys that would get called up from the American Hockey League years ago, they would line up beside Bob Prober, Ty Domi, you know, the, the real tough guys and say, hey, man, you got to give me a shot here. I just got called up. The only way I'm going to stay in the NHL is if I fight you tonight. And Domi and Probert and these guys would say, okay, kid, here's your shot. Or <laughs> Kelly Face or Tony, or Tony Twist. And they'd go, okay, kid, here's your shot. Take take a shot at the title. And and that's kind of, a, that's kind of the code. That's how much respect. These guys are like trying to kill each other. But that's how much respect they have for each other. They're like, okay, nothing happened, but I'll fight you anyway so you can maybe stay up and earn the NHL paycheck. I guess, I think Rupper told the story of Chara. You know, Chara yeah. is an absolute legend, six foot nine, whatever he is. He, he would go up to Rupper and he says, I need this fight, Rupper. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, our team needs me to fight. And Rupper's like, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> and then, like, the next period, like, Rupper, please, will you please allow me to fight you or whatever? And then they do it, and the whole fucking garden goes crazy. The team goes insane. Rupper eats a couple rights, <laughs> tries to get a couple back, and it's over. It's like, there's no other sport that has that. None. No. No, it's unbelievable. I love Rupper. He's, I, I think he's good friends with you guys. And I saw one of his fights the other day when he had to fight Chara. And I was like, man, you did really good on that fight. Like, usually Chara just destroys everybody because of his length and that. But Rupper did really well in, in those fights against Chara. He, he was tough. Rupper, Rupper was tough, man. But you know what? He was loved by his teammates because they knew if, if any of them needed to be protected, he was the guy. And that's the great thing about hockey. All the enforcers, like, like for example, here in St. Louis, Brett Hull and Kelly Chase are best friends. Well, one scored 750 goals and the other might, made, might have had seven goals in his entire career. And the All-Stars aren't hanging out with each other. It's the tough guy that protected this goal scorer for his entire career, and that's why they're best friends. It's unbelievable. Don't you think? Okay, I'm going to get into it. Sidney Crosby, greatest player of all time. Imagine if he had a protector that gave him three feet of ice every time he got the puck like it used to be back in the day. Yeah, you know what? It's a really good point because, you know, you look at – at what happened with him and Truba? Is that going to happen if Ryan Reeves is there, or or Marty McSorley, or or any of the tough guys that used to play for Pittsburgh? Um, that is one. That is that isn't a problem, and it's a very valid point. Is that you know McDavid gets he gets run over, and and Matthews and so on, and you know maybe it's we can't lose it all. We can't lose it all. We can't lose that part because look at the Rangers. They felt like they got pushed around last year, and they probably did by uh, Tom Wilson and the Caps, and they went out and got Ryan Reeves. And I guarantee you Panarin and Zabinajad and those guys, they grew about six inches in the dressing room because they're like, nobody is going to fuck with us this year with Ryan Reeves. And they didn't. They didn't get pushed around at all. So. It's an element that we can't completely lose for a mar game. Yeah, and it's like quarterback with an offensive line. It's a shame exact thing. Like, hey, you need one. I think the one needs the other, and the one understands that. But everything's changing. Everything's evolving as is officiating. We can't thank you enough for joining us, Tim. Boys, thanks a lot for having me on. I really appreciate it. Hey, stick to us for you, pal. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Peel. Love a good stick stops. Yeah. Love that. Love a good, uh, I don't want to talk politics, but you know where I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> that guy got canceled on the internet. Oh, yeah. Uh, he time. hates the internet. Yep. He hates right. everything. Oh, uh, what a guy. That was a great conversation. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Tim for He's joining us. He's a dude. Us. Like, he, yeah. think about, though, how much, 
uh, what shape those guys are in. They're skating the whole game. There's no line shifts. Like, those guys, man, it's it's impressive. He said 55 years old. That's an all-year thing, me trying to stay in shape so I can keep up with these guys that are flying. Like, we talk about wide receivers going 20, 21 miles an hour. On ice, Oof. I mean, by the way, going zero after going however fast hurts a lot more than it does. Just a simple fall is, I mean, has to hurt so fucking bad. Mm-hmm. Are the refs... Suited and booted with pads. I assume they have to have some. It's usually, sort. just shin guards. Oh, so there's not even a thought of them falling. By the way, they are on their feet, regardless, ready to go. You hit your ass or hip. I mean, you're on rollerblades in this place. Yeah, broke, broke the tailbone. tailbone. Fifty five years old. That guy's skating around with Sid in them. It's insanity. Also, that's, that's why I hate. Like everyone gives the refs a hard time on the internet. You have to. It's what it's all about. But like those guys, really, like it's an impossible job. You, they can't see half the stuff that's happening half the time. Some of the stuff is happening. Their backs turn. It's behind the play. We get such a different view from the camera lens than they get from being on the ice which every sport can say but ice on on ice everything's amplified quicker yeah. so Split much seconds. faster yeah. bum, 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 bum. they're I'm, dodging pucks that can knock all their teeth out at any moment well he said even worse than a concussion by the way which we don't even want to talk about which is what they have to yeah. keep in the back of their mind i guess well, also like we see the you know in football like when a ref is out like out of place and gets either like steamrolled or whatever like it with how fast the game moves in hockey if these guys aren't paying attention you can get fucking killed yes. like getting smashed into the boards by two guys just being at the wrong place at the wrong time like they really do have to like be very good out there how about just like a clear uh-huh just yeah. trying to clear during a penalty kill or something or some guys hit slap shots to literally clear the puck and you just so happen to be ba- skating oh my god yeah. and then they got to handle fighting they got to jump in there the linesman got to jump in there Eat a couple to the face, and then, hey, boys, fucking come on. <laughs> yeah. And shit talking with the players and everything. It's a part of the, the hockey environment is so much vastly different than I think any other sport. Honestly, I truly believe that. They should follow, somebody should follow multiple crews around and do a, a full season documentary on a referee crew in the NHL and, like, mic them up. It would be awesome. Dump it, dump it, dump it. We should do yeah. that. TM, TM, TM. Mm. Even following guys from like the QHL, he said, like or, that they, or the NFL. It's yeah. their interactions that, yeah. with the players that is so interesting to me. Like how they're almost like there's such a healthy respect between the two. It seems like. Robert told a story of a ref <laughs> rising up <laughs> in front of the bench, and saying, "Rupper, you want to fucking go?" <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wild Bill McCreary. That was an animal. Rupper, and he, he was referenced by him. Rupper's sitting on the bench, you know, over here, fucking getting his Gatorade or whatever. Just dying, sitting, oh, I'm dead tired. And then on the other side, he sees a fucking ref. What, you got a fucking problem? <laughs> like fuck- Tim McGraw. Like, yeah, yeah, Tim McGraw. Yeah. At that concert, what, you got a fucking problem, Rupper? You want to go? I can't. I can't fight you. You're a ref. That's why I thought, fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> like, refs do that. Like, such a good move. It's such a good move. I, if I fight you, I'm thrown out of the league forever. Oh, so you want you oh, want to fight? Oh, oh, right. oh, why don't you shut up then? Rupper, absolute ox of a man. What a moment. A ref looking. NFL at players, uh, I feel like NFL players don't quite have that same back and forth with referees. No, I do not believe the referees would be able to handle it, by the way. I, I do not believe. You know, Gene Steratore, great. Mm-hmm. Game manager, good give and take. I think hockey league even. Good game manager, good give Imagine and take. Imagine that scumbag Corrente. There's What's that? Imagine that scumbag Corrente. That's what I'm saying. Imagine looking at Corrente and just being, oh, that was a bullshit call. Oh, is that right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking make that 30. That is 15. Was he the one that uh, yes. hip checked uh, Cassius Marsh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Backed yeah, up into the guy. Sorry about Boom! Sorry about Make it. a contact with the ref. Sorry about it. 15. <laughs> <laughs> that was excessive. You're, you're lucky I didn't stack these things up. That dude doing the Cupid shuffle through the fucking mm-hmm. <laughs> to hit that guy. Unbelievable. Or fucking. imagine him, too, just being like, oh, is that right? Take your fucking pads off right now. Let's throw it down. Do it. Take Correcti? your helmet off. Yeah. Oh, Cassius, all right. I won't throw this, but let's fucking go. Let's fight. Drop. Right now. <laughs> That's what the NHL refs did to Mike Rupp. It's amazing. I love hockey. I'm, it's a shame it's over. Real I bummer. Know. Can't wait for next March. <laughs> no. Next I May. mean, what's your team going to look like next year anyway? Same. Wow. There's a How much longer is Sid under contract? Well, 12 years. They're talking about him. People are leaking that retirement. He can't play. What? Yeah. He's, got, he's hanging out. There's no way he'd play somewhere else ever, would he? No. No. Not a chance. Wow. Like Gretzky? No. Yeah, you never know. That's why he's won, pal. Right team comes knocking. Who's that? No. Gold Knights, maybe. Can Get you imagine what going. Sid does instantly to a fan base if he goes to another team? What do you Kraken? mean? 
He's under contract through 2025. Thank you, Zito. Let's not even talk about this. I don't want him to leave ever. Gino, I'm just saying, I don't think someone just paid $900 million for the Pittsburgh Penguins to trade Sidney Crosby. That's just my thought. Oh, yeah. Now, on the flip side, that entire squad might look a little different because we haven't had success. You know, success for the no. Red Wings, first round playoffs. Success for the Penguins, can't have this happen four years in a fucking row. Something's got to give. It's all yeah. relative. It's all relative, yeah. ain't it? Just like your money you made here throughout your career. That's right, man. It's all like, yeah, Penguins, their expectations are Stanley Cup or bust. Well, should be, you would hope. But you got young studs, though. Gensel's very good. Yeah. He's under contract. Jari. Yeah. Got well, attendees. Malkin, Latang, and Russ are the free agents. You want Jackie Aces? Oh, Malkin and Latang. Jackie Aces stinks. I mean, Latang scores. Doesn't he score a ton of goals? Yeah, he's very Gen good. Gensel he's, does, too. He's obviously. very handsome. Gensel scores all the goals yeah. because he's on Sid's line as well. That could help. But Latang and Malkin probably gone. Let's just face it. You guys are going to stink for the oh, next five years, you. just like the Red Wings did. And how the Red Wings are back, and we're going to save hockey. Whoa. You guys don't even have a fucking coach. Let's go to the phones. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Carson in Ohio. What's going on, Carson, on the Five Around Your Phone line? All right. Somebody look for Carson. <laughs> oh, Carson's all right. Sorry about it. Uh, unless Nick had him completely muted, he it seemed like that guy did not show up mm -mm. to his shift. <laughs> Do Carson's no. ever? Wow. Oh. Oh. Carson oh Daly. Carson, Carson Daly, Daly always did. Every single day for TRL. Yeah, his body <laughs> might have been there, but his fucking personality wasn't. Jeez. Have you ever seen the voice? He's awesome. He painted his hell? fingernails, dude. Thank you. Thank you. He did paint He's his fingernails. still doing it every morning somewhere, right? On Good Morning America. Good Morning Football. Good Morning America. Yeah. <laughs> I watched the other one. They He's taking case on Good, Good Morning Football. football. Is he still in the voice? They're all... Yeah, but... They mailed it in. Kay's oh. last day. Now everybody's remote. Yeah, yeah, just hanging out. Anyways, Kay, hell of a legendary run by that Good yeah. Morning Thank Football. Thank you, Kay. We'll miss you, Kay. We don't know what Kay's doing next, but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. AJ, anything to say to the Russo listeners before we get out of here? Nah, Mad Dog's always uh, hyped on Monday. I'm sure he'll have a good day. Oh, they call it Mad Dog Monday. Oh, yeah. In six minutes, we'll see you in about 21 hours. Sirius XM, you're the best. You know that one. Yeah, but I say everybody's the best, so. <laughs> Are you saying you're lying? Nothing wrong with that. No. But Russo <laughs> listeners was Great mix up too. Yeah, it was. I almost forgot who the hell you were talking about. I did. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Middle of the sentence. Is he back from vacation? I think so. Do they hate us over there still? <laughs> oh. Do the Chris Mad Dog Russo listeners still despise us? No. How about us being a lead into him? That was just made abruptly out of nowhere. Yeah. They had to be so angry that the <laughs> show is doing that. You, you don't, don't think it's the same audience? I don't think so, AJ. I think they go shine. And stop listening to us. Fucking, yeah, a lot of people do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then back to Mad no. Dog. Yeah, a lot of people tweet that. They say that. You don't know how many people are listening on Sirius because they don't have the numbers, I guess, but I'm sure they can tell the patterns. Everybody goes from this channel, turns off, yeah, the <laughs> goes to this other channel, and then comes right back from Mad Dog. But neither here nor there. We're back here chit chatting about life. Um, AJ, you're fucked in the golf realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's tough. Look very well. It is. Yeah, it is. You want to buy out? 10 mil right now, cash. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay with it. You need to get that money in escrow. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Of course. Pull it somehow. Yeah. What do you got tonight? Practice? Yeah, some practices and stuff. It's, uh, it's been raining today. It was like 85 and humid all yeah. weekend. I was just baking. Beautiful outside so. today. We got that last night. Late. Yeah, we had that rain yesterday while we were golfing. You heard the siren kick us off the fucking course. Oh, yeah. 400 bucks. That was wild. Which is interesting. Wait, I don't but how many golfers? NATO weather. Huh? I don't think it was NATO weather. It wasn't. It was yeah. Four of us. Four of us. It was a hundred, uh, hundred bucks a person, I guess, out there. Not yeah. bad. Mm. That was a good, good afternoon morning. for nine holes. Oh. Yeah. Was, hundred bucks. I told you there. Wait, but you usually pay no. before. No, they didn't tell us that. It was kind of implied. Yeah. Uh, right. Oh. It's kind of implied. Yeah, we 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 paid afterwards, so that was where the. That's weird. Yeah, we know. That's where the curveball kind of. Did four people course, play, or was like Goomp in the cart? Did they charge him for how good we played. Goomp was just in the cart, and also nobody was going to golf because it was torrential downpour, so nobody would have went other than us, and that was nobody else was out there really. That was a good get. It was a good hustle. Good hustle. Yeah, you got your swings in too. Yeah, I got yeah. some hacks. Good hacks. Are you saying you're not going back? No. <laughs> no chance. Okay. Guy was a nice guy. I liked yeah, the guy. Was. Huh. yeah, he was. Yeah. He mentioned it, though. It was ways away. It was a 40-minute drive. Oh, jeez. Yes, exactly. I mean, it was a full... <sighs> it was a good racket by the guy. It was a good racket by the guy. 
quite a bit. How did you become aware of the, uh, the, you know, this course? Well, I've known of the course for some time. We were reintroduced, of course, by tweet from Cuz, who says, hey, this course wants to be part of your, your road to Tahoe, you know? And then Foxy chats with person yeah. directly, and it's like, hey, I got you guys all set up. Then Nick gets there before any of us. That guy was not in the right position to make this call. He's, <laughs> he's only worked there for two weeks, I guess, not even involved in the golf side <laughs> of things, but still was able to hook it up. We got out there, we got carts, got food, got some beers mm -hmm. all set up. It's just us out there because there's like, you know, tornado warnings basically, orange dot over the thing. So we're having a good time golfing away. It's our own. It was a beautiful course. It is a beautiful course. We'll not say it. Was back whenever I golfed on it before. They renovated, I guess, in the middle of some renovations. Beautiful course. Then we get drenched, then we get drenched, sirened off the course, mm -hmm. and then boom, four hundred dollar tab kind of comes in at the end. It was like, oh shit, okay, should have known this was coming, I guess, but it was a good time. I mean, what if you played eighteen? What do you think the tab would have been? <laughs> Ooh, good question. Oh, thousand. Imagine if we're getting charged a thousand bucks. To <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would have been awesome. That would have been amazing. Goomps just rode along. I don't think he even took one putt. Back to your question. Why Why not? Goop just doesn't like golf or what? Just Big butt. morale guy, AJ. I mean, just trying to get the boys fired up. Right, you know? Everybody needs a hype man. Bud Through Lights and lives. music. Yeah. Right? Can't beat it. Hey, those, it's not a bad day, Goop. Those yeah. Bud Lights, the one that I almost didn't, I almost didn't finish. Yeah. I've been nine, ten bucks down. What <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Foxy, Foxy had to sidewinder one. Yeah. yeah, Foxy punctured a hole right in the middle of his Bud Light. <laughs> so he had to shotgun it from the middle of the can. Yes. So he had to do this number. Had to bring it from both <laughs> ends. It exploded it was, in my car. It's quite a scene. It was a good time out there, though. It right? was. Fun. Would pay 400 bucks to do the same thing again. Exactly. Just with have like letter by. Force to yourself, 400 bucks, let's go. Now we just have to plan out the storms. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And then try to get to a golf course when the storms are there. Then we'll know nobody will be there. Yes. Pretty simple. Pretty and simple. The guy in the pro shop, too, I was like, ah, are we going to be okay out there? There's a guy, all the, all the bad stuff's behind us. You guys will be fine. And then we get on to the tee box at nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally, like a truck horn. Mm -hmm. They're hitting this thing from the pro box or from the uh, pro shop or whatever. I'm like, well, I'm having a pretty good fucking round right now. Should just turn it off. So I'm gonna finish this. What's that? The alarms. I've done that before. I'm not supposed to. Me? No, no. Like the people working the clubhouse. No, they wanted us. Yeah, they want to skip the fuck out. They of wanted here. us to go home. They wanted our money. They wanted us out of there. Oh, it was oh, a. Yeah. It was a. <laughs> So they were basically pressing it then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, do yeah. not, do not let these guys make the turn. It's on them. Yeah, yeah. If we get struck by lightning. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely what it was. Or it was, <laughs> let them know no more holes. You should have waited around, though. You should have said, we're going to wait out. Like, once the storm <laughs> passes and there's, we've had 45 minutes of no lightning, I'm going back on the course. I'm not sure, man. I don't really understand the golf world as much. That's why you have quite. Better get used to it. That's what I'm You're saying. you be living it. You have quite an advantage going into Tahoe because that's all the golf people. Because it's what? It's all the golf people. That's your world. You micro those shrimp for That's my world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, I'll your... tell you what, it's a part of a lot of people's world. And it's amazing like how much of a part golf is of a lot of people's world. If you get good at golf, I mean, you're immediately in conversations with incredibly powerful people all around the globe. You know? Because people, yeah. that's what all the, it's basically what all the suits do, right? It's all the suits mm -hmm. get yep. love yeah. golf. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah, it depends. Because do you want to be – sometimes, though, in those circles, you don't want to be too good. So do you play not as good if you know you're playing with this dude who's you're trying to, you know, do business with, but yeah, the guy's just, shooting 105 and you shoot par. Do you, hey, maybe I'll shoot 85 today. No. Just real quick, we don't have that in our DNA. You hear me? You? You? Oh, I mean, I, Anybody in here? No, I don't have to worry about trying to play hurt. bad. Yeah, so. it's not our – if somebody Kill wants him. us to play bad while yeah. they're playing bad, no, like no we don't want to do business with said bad golfer. Yeah. Okay, fucking get it together. Make better contact. Sorry about it. We're actually going to go to the next hole while you're still hacking away. Let's not, I guess reading the room is a good idea, but also, fuck you. you know, yeah. you stink Just play fast. Put Whatever you do, play fast. Back. We play pretty quick. I feel like we, we did. Through there. That's also a thought of mine. I don't want to slow the lads down either. Yeah, but you could drop a ball. You could be terrible. Way. You could be horrible and still play fast, though. I concur. My short game is very good. It's the, uh, the driver that worries me. 
Really? Yeah, really? I swing too fast. I can't slow down. So you swing too <laughs> fast, but your short game's very good? Well, I'd slow down the short game. Once <laughs> yeah. I get the big stick in my hand, can't I want to let it eat. There's electricity that can come through this fucking thing. <laughs> Sunday looks good weather-wise, lads, if we want to get back out there. <laughs> okay. Are we looking for bad? We're looking for bad weather oh, too, yeah. right now so we can get the course to ourselves so everybody be scared to get on there. Well, Saturday looks dog shit. Okay. There so you that's go. what we're looking for. But we don't want to be in the rain again, do we? Well, that's what we're saying, though. I think we would take the rain. <laughs> With an empty golf course, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, as opposed to no rain, yeah. packed golf did course. Did you uh, did you ask the big guy about that that secret course? Secret. No, no, I should though. Jim Mercer. Jim Mercer has been pretty active over the weekend. I don't know Does if he have his own course. He knows somebody that has their own course around here. Interesting. We should try to get on that one. Yeah, that'd be Tony Stewart. Huge. Mate. Tony Stewart's uh, got a Cabela's for sale one hour south of Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Thirty million dollars if you want it. It is not. He probably has a golf course down Pretty there. Good I would price, imagine. Yeah. Nah, he, his golf courses are the lakes. You know, what I mean, there's just some land, I guess, that goes in between the fishing lakes. Yeah. True. How some people view golf courses, you know what I mean? But yeah, we got to get on that private course. I got to get good out there. I think my game can get good. Is what I'm saying. I'm certain. I think your game is good now. You could probably get. Really, really good. I'm what, what is, between what, now and Tahoe. So, how good are these guys that are that are good at Tahoe? You see them, you're like, God damn, these guys are good. Yeah, like silky smooth, like on the range before and after, which is crazy to me. After. Like they are, they after. are golfers. I really, really want to be good. Like I, I love to compete, but I'm not doing anything to get there. Me neither. Mm-hmm. Except for this net. I feel like yeah. a gamer. Like in the it's moment. Working. I'm going to rise up. And I've had 10 straight years in Tahoe where I have, I've been reaching for it, just haven't fly, found it yet. I'm eventually going to find it. <laughs> this is the year. What is it, 25,000? Yeah. yeah. Well, 125K to the winner if you win. No, I'm talking about from you to me. Yeah. Well, 50 included. Oh, oh, yeah. Charity, too. 25,000 mm-hmm. charity as well. Yeah. Good. Shaking in his boots. Feel like you kind of been bamboozled here publicly because you feel like you're forced to agree to this? Or no, what? because you uh, proposed this live on air like uh, 10 days ago. So, And you accepted it then as well? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know I'm not in middle school. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to let you bully me. <laughs> but you accepted today. Either. Yeah. What's that? You accepted today. Yeah. I solved all I need to see. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got to get to that. I gotta get to that. <laughs> uh, let's cover a couple more things before we get out of here because we have to. At Top Golf in Atlanta, Georgia, when the Super Bowl was happening, we had a Wranglers shootout celebrity classic or something like that, where a bunch of people came through. We're very thankful for them. CAA helped us put it together. CAA put a bunch of people in there. It was very, very nice of them to do so. We filmed it. People did a full Top Golf round. We had standings. I mean, it was. A big ordeal. A lot of people came through. We were very, very thankful. We might do something like this again in the future because of how electrifying it was. There was one man that stopped by who was quarterback for the Buffalo Bills at the time. Now, his agent would go on to call my wife a bitch at some point and uh, think that was okay. That got settled. That got handled. Was uncomfortable. But before that entire moment took place, Josh Allen took the tee box at Topgolf and was electrifying. Freak athlete. You can already tell just as soon as he picks up the club, uh, he's going to be able to do this. He needed to hit the back net at Top Golf for us to take the lead. And literally, as he was sitting in the Top Golf thing, he swung, he hit the ball, and it went to the moon. And he didn't even watch it full turn around. How you doing? Are you not impressed? Type thing. It was a great moment. Here we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a great moment. It's like, I love this guy mm-hmm. as a human, as a competitor. But at that point, we didn't know if he was going to be a great NFL quarterback or not at the time. Had no idea what Josh Allen would become, which is one of the guys in the NFL. At Micah Hyde's softball game this past weekend, with a portion of the proceeds going to the victims of the heinous fucking terrible, despicable actions of one scumbag uh, at a grocery store in Buffalo. Josh Allen went to the plate with ill intentions on his mind, and look what he does to this softball, A.J. Hawk. Go on! See ya! Run that one more again. Look how high the ball is. Yeah. Back to back. <laughs> How you doing? Are you not entertained? Yeah. Never comes out. Awesome. Dude, 
Six me. foot five, 235 pounds, incredibly athletic, the confidence in Moxie to be able to do things like that and become a guy in the NFL. He's becoming the prototype day in and day out. I fucking love that dude. That softball still going, AJ Hawk. I mean, the, you can see the ball in the clip. It's it's rising too as it's going over the like who knows where I mean it may be 200 yards over the fence and it's still going up. Like it's yeah, the guy's an absolute stud of, of an athlete. I'm sure he, whatever he plays, he's awesome at. Basketball, I'm sure he's a stud. Whatever he does, yep. he's winning. I mean, that's a bat flip before yeah. the ball even leaves the bat. I'm not I know worried if it's going foul or anything. Has no, I mean, that thing straightens up, too. It was hooking a little bit, seems yeah. to stay straight. Let's assume he's a great golfer, uh-huh. great at ping pong. The walk-off. I mean, he still doesn't even look at it. Yeah. Like He has no idea where it went, winds up. He just knows he hits it. 8,000 feet. <laughs> that ball's still going. He's in five different conversations. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this was fun. Raise some money. Turn Buffalo around. The morale a little bit. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Hey, good to see you, Josh. Hey, it just landed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I was going to got pretty good hold of that thing. What a, what a time to be a Buffalo Bill fan, knowing you've got a guy for, what, the at least next five years? How many years did he signed for? Yeah, he signed yeah. six-year, 150. Last 160. year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, last he's got year. five years more. Yep. Stunned. You hope it's more than five. Yeah. Stud. Probably will be because yeah. that contract yeah. after this five years. Yeah, I mean, yeah and the Colts are going to pay him. Well, I thought you guys were getting Lamar. <laughs> no, Colts. No, maybe. Yeah. You never know. Hey, he's becoming a golfer too. He took top yeah. golf onto the course. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I love that. Lamar. I'm happy he's continuing to tweet. We need you on Twitter, Lamar. The golfing community was not happy with how he had a tee on the green <laughs> yeah. and was putting with a seven iron. <laughs> Let's assume Lamar will figure out golf in less than a month and everybody will be pissed off about it. And if not, he's just trying things out out there. Yeah. You know? Maybe that's his game. <laughs> he did no have a, He had a tee on the front. Fringe too. Yeah. Uh-huh. At one point. <laughs> no, I like that he's posing for the picture putting like with a seven iron. I know you could see the little blade. Well, and the ball in front of the tee at one mm-hmm. point. I love everything about it. Just trolling the golf community, knowing that in just a rather short time, he's probably going to mm-hmm. become a guy at golf. But yeah, we'll pay. We'll pay uh, Lamar. We'll pay Josh Allen. We'll pay whoever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He knows. Yeah, n- next year, team. he's going to win the match. He's the best. Wearing some he looks sick jays. Yeah. Yeah. The tee whole. in the green is not a big deal. No, he's just marking the ball. It's your ball mark. It's a ball mark. Yeah. Putting with your seven iron also not a big deal. No. <laughs> Probably snapped his earlier in the round. Yeah. Somebody he, may have a gimme right there in the bottom. It looks like that one <laughs> is, that not the is putt? a gimme. <laughs> That's safe. Or is that his putt? Yeah, I assume yeah. that was oh. his putt. Mm-hmm. So what's the? where was the ball then? Was on he putting the off the tee? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. He's putting a backspin on it, maybe? No, <laughs> yeah. it was He's probably, next to the team. Yeah. The ball mark. scrambling, and that's where they put that thing so, that, uh, so they can mark it. Yeah, maybe. somebody already made the putt. Mm-hmm. Lamar, he, Lamar probably put it there. That's probably where Lamar hits it. Yeah. Yeah. Those are sweet yeah. golf shoes. Oh, yeah, too. close to the pin. For sure he won. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Not. He's going to be able to figure it out. Golf, what an interesting sport. One day he got it, the next day he stink. Are you still playing barefoot? No, because I guess you're not as good of a golfer barefoot. I guess there is like benefits it. to having grip. Yeah. <laughs> Once that was explained to me, it kind of all made more sense. I was like, I put out pretty good vibes, though. You know, me and Mother Earth are connected before I hacked the shit out of her. I think she would appreciate that. Pretty good feel for it all. Yeah, but don't you slip a little bit? Well, uh, certainly every once in a while. That's one of the drawbacks, but I'm comfortable as well. Well, what you want to do is you want to get all the power from Mother Earth through there. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to listen to them. Do whatever feels best. Into your, I am. I'm doing it right now. I feel okay. pretty good. By the way, my golf swing looks a lot different than it feels. Just what like, do you mean? Looks like bad, much worse golf swing than it feels. Feels like a good golf swing. I think we all, I think we all have a similar situation there. I was watching those shots that Foxy was filming from this weekend. They were like pretty good shots. I'm like, oh, I feel like I really focused in on some things for the swing. You know, the feel versus real thing is a real conversation. Looked vastly different. Don't care. Thought I kept my feet still. Moved them a little bit. Not as much as I used to. I still got a long time before Tahoe too, AJ. Oh, yeah, you got plenty of time. Your swing honestly looks good, though. Like, But I, I know what you're saying, where your swing feels a certain way, and I know it looks nothing like what it feels for me, at least. Yeah, I felt like I was a pro out there. And it was like, well, that does not look like it. Can, it. It, can, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Like, I'm a field player, so I don't care about my feet. I slip all the time, like, whatever. I move around. Like, sometimes if I'm trying to hit something else, maybe I'll hit, and I'll be walking off the tee as I'm driving. Yeah, but, but then also it goes – Sometimes you'll skull it three inches off the ground, 50 yards in front of you, in Tahoe, multiple holes in a row, and that's not a lot of fun. 
<laughs> Try to scramble. You know what though? When you scramble and scramble in for a bogey after one of those tee shots, there's not much. Uh, there's not much that tops that. Yeah, but you can hit that golf ball 380 too if you get yeah. hold of it. That's the thing. That's why they keep bringing you back, right? I don't know. I'm gonna swing hard. Like yeah. Well, they bring him back so he can tackle hit. that yeah, stooge. Yeah, he can hit people. <laughs> How many you you tackle stooge? Ever, you stooge tackling every day in that tourney? Uh, no, it's only on the Thursday Pro Am day that ever happened where those guys are posted up. I've been tackling them in a few years though. No, tackled last year. Yeah, into the no, water. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I? Yeah, we 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 brought it back last year a little. Like it wasn't big that this big guy. of a hit, but yeah, we did a little. Covid year, you didn't do it. A couple years we didn't. Do, no, like two or three years we didn't do it. They were like, "Yeah, what are we doing?" We did all arm wrestle, different things. Did you win? Shockingly, I didn't. I'm not a good arm wrestler. I had to. I had to tire him out. I had Man, to hold him in. Sure. Never would have guessed that you'd beat somebody that never trains. <laughs> you know, the guy's bigger wrestling. than me, stronger than me, and absolutely is arm wrestling. Stronger way more than, than you. Me. The dude's like 250 and jacked. You work out every morning of your life for some that doesn't random. Doesn't mean I'm stronger than this dude. He does too, probably. But arm wrestling, especially my right arm, I got my, my baby peck, too. I tore my peck, so I just had to hold it. I had to post up and hold him for, like, 90 seconds, get him tired, and then boom, oh, see ya. Yeah, you just kind of lock it in there. Yeah. Kind of locked it in there. Try to pull it tight, do all the cheating, you yeah. know, get my hand, my wrist over, yeah. Yeah, did you, get a, did you guys have the full table? I think we grabbed, like, the edges of the table. We each had a holding spot. Did you stand up or you sit down? Sat down, then probably stood up as I was finishing it all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fucking take a seat, pal. How was the, was it electrifying or no? Yeah, try hitting a shot after you've been holding your arm up there for 90 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was the tough part, too. No more arm wrestling. I'll, I'm undefeated, and also I can't swing. I'll tackle somebody, though. You want me to put my head through somebody? Yeah. No problem. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's enjoy this life here. Let's enjoy this day. We'll be back tomorrow. Big time guest tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Excited for it. Thanks to the guests for joining us today. Obviously, Tim Peel mm -hmm. from his house in St. Louis. Ian Rappaport from his house in New Jersey. He's back to work. So, you know, he's back. There's some news. Okay. Contracts were signed. Yeah. Jair Alexander, Travis Landry. So maybe this means there'll be some shit that'll happen in the NFL schedule. Yeah, we go. Hopefully. OTAs are starting. Like, the stuff's going to start coming out of, of organizations. More free agents still. Let's go. Plenty left. Also... I'm up to something. Ooh. What? What's this about? Has We're back. Whoa. Has the season whoa. returned? Oh. The season whoa. came back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. So this is just like how winter and spring was here in Indy for a bit this oh, season. Okay. That's right. How you thought it was happening, and then boom, old man winter came through and said he ain't getting any spring. And then, oh, my God, spring came back, and then boom, punks Tawny Phil, that rat was right. There's more winter to be had. That's kind of what happened up something season. Up something season was happening, and then boom, a bunch of cold water was doused on up something season. I was like, all right, baby, we're just chilling, 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 chilling. No up something season. And then bang, up to something season sprouted up out of that water that was doused on top of it even better and stronger. The seed had blossomed, and now we'll up to something season come to fruition. I'm not 100% sure, but we are in the middle of it. And will there be a grand finale? Will there be a championship ending of this up to something season? I do believe so, but we are not out of the woods just yet. Wow. Hell yeah. Okay, AJ? Woo. I like up to something season. I mean, I feel like it's always... It's always there if we need it. Like, it can always it's pop always back up. There. It's always there. It's always there. It's always there. It's always there. <laughs> it really is. It's always there. You're always up to something. Always. You know, but what is worthy of up to something season? Bingo. That's to your discretion. Well, that's it's become a little bit more difficult as somethings have been up to. Are they uh, – <laughs> Poopy's negotiation up to? That is not a part of up to some oh, season. I, I was hoping Damn. that's what it was. Poopy's up to some season is not negotiated. No, unfortunately. I did get a follow-up from Poopy's guy saying, hey, where are we at? Where are we at with this? So <laughs> I think you're right. I think Poopy's is, you know, clawing for some cash right now. <laughs> and I would love to support Poopy's because of the entertainment that Poopy's has given me. <laughs> right. But also the way they went about it just not, you know, that's not how we. That's not how I do business. Sorry, Bob. That's not how it works, Poopy's. Hey, he's a young superstar. Everybody, you know, has to learn. <laughs> But it's not Poopy's. No, it's Poopy's no. representation. No. Poopy's doesn't even know we reaching out, I bet. Well, fucking, we'll find Poopy's. We'll find yeah. him. We'll figure this out. For the good of Poopy's, we'll do that. But Poopy's is not a part of Up Something Season. <laughs> no. Up Something Season, pretty large. Okay. Po Poopy's could be, I guess. No, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I will say, Poopy's is not a part of Up Something Season. This is pretty big, though. Pretty, pretty big. What's that? You got any hints? Mm. No, I'll give it away. There's like two, I don't know. All right, we'll back tomorrow.
I, everything I was about to say would be like, nah, not done yet. <laughs> yeah. Nah, not losing leverage there. Nah, not doing that. You know, got to do all that stuff. Probably smart. I think so. I mean, that's what people say the show is, isn't it? Hopefully, it's a game show that you're hosting. Ooh. Ooh. Like Tag or the other ones? Holy moly. Holy moly. Mm. That's Jeff Tessitore's thing. Oh. Yeah, I'm not a part of that. Are they bringing back Hole in the Wall? Oh, if so. what is that? Dude. <laughs> All right, we've talked about yeah. this a times. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm not oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The shape they have to run through. I thought it was another one. No, you don't oh, run. Yeah, you have to stand through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to stand. You have to be able to match the wall. Oh, Diggs described a different show that was named Hole in the Wall to me. So oh, come I on. I thought it was that. AJ, AJ, stop doing it's this. It's also a good one. I'm not hosting any Japanese game shows. <laughs> you guys are talking about. I think you guys are talking about the sex ones. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. At the local I, gas I think station. He, I think he is talking about that. You guys are a bunch of scumbags. Oh, and obviously, you guys. you guys have to take up some season to a place it doesn't deserve to go to. Come on, guys. What type of toxic shit does this place have? Unbelievable. What's the deal? We got interns here. Yeah. What's the deal? You got Connor saying, what's the deal? Well, Seriously. We just got one intern here. The other one's just hanging out. Hanging out. Yeah, just chilling. Well, I, to be clear, I'm bring, fucking out of here. Bring your friend to work, though. <laughs> to be clear, I'm out of here on Friday. So everything you're saying right now, save it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I ain't save getting it. a laptop, all right? I ain't doing anything. Hey, it's a new person I don't know about. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, this is an, we have an intern right now. And he's, he took Friday off and is not getting a laptop, you said? <laughs> well, we don't know if he took Friday off yet. We'll have to find out <laughs> on Friday. But does not have a laptop. No. No. He's too qualified. Yeah. <laughs> he's too qualified. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have a laptop, has a PC. Sorry about it. Better computer. Runs quicker. And anime can flow through here. Exactly. Which one's, right. which one's sticking around? Is it the cool one or the weird one? Uh, all right. <laughs> Do they know which who is who if you say that? All right, we're getting out of here. Okay, this is, <laughs> this is unbelievable. I hate interns. I hate having them. Mm-hmm. I hate worrying about this guy, you know, whether or not he learns something. I feel like this morning we put together a good program. Yes, yeah, we did. he'll learn we did. something. Feels like he's going to learn something. Great program. Now, no laptop day one, kind of a tough start mm-hmm. in an internet business, but we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Only up from here. Does he get college credit? Uh, nah. No colleges reach out to me. <laughs> so I'm going to work on your end. No colleges reach out to me, so I don't believe. This is life. This is a life credit that's happening. I guess I'm going to have to fucking pay him. No, internships. Mm-hmm. No, intern, intern. No, I think you have to, right? I yeah. mean, this is, why I don't, this is why I don't dabble in this. Do I know anything about wow. this world? No, no. Do we have an actual program for this guy? No. Did he show up with a laptop? No. Is it an internet business that needs a laptop? Probably. Yes. yes. You can always go with the Gary Vee method. And after we get out of here, walk out there and back, I'm going to need you to write me a check for $1,000 yeah. right now. 380 bucks for today's work. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just like the golf thing. That's right. Yeah, cover the golf. You get to come in here, do your thing. Yeah. And, and then <laughs> you pay $400 on the way yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Bamboozling, right, as he's about to go home for the hey, night. Hey, you're, you're sucking what you want to get home, want to get out of here. No big deal. Just need right. $400. Right now. Preferably in cash. Maybe. I don't think we'll do that, but something to think about. Paying them in knowledge. But are we? I don't know. I don't know. Is yeah, he, they'll learn is, something. Is he a doofus, too? We don't know. We will find yeah. out. Well, so far, <laughs> definitely. No, I think well, he's been pre- didn't bring a laptop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, hey. Not even a book bag. He's either. been asking good questions, though. He has. He's got a couple good ones. Great questions. He's eager. He How did he get hired? Yeah. Not even a pen and a notepad, though. Same either. way everything else happens. Yeah, I get asked a question, I say yes. <laughs> And then it ends up biting me in the ass later. I'm happy about this, though. Yeah, he's a locker room guy. <laughs> seems like it. Huh? I mean, it seems like it's smashing success so far. It's day one, five hours in. Day one. Hopefully he told his parents, hey, watch the show. They may talk about me, and they see you trashing them. Well, his parents know. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yeah. laughs> his, his Do parents, they? His parents are excited about this, I think. And he will learn. Yeah. He has yeah. to. Life experience. Yep. I like watching you really put a bow on it and make it positive. So I'll learn more here than uh, I can see you and tell AJ. Dude, knows. I fucking hate, like, this is a thing that I don't like, but I, this kid seems like a good guy. Everything I've learned about him, good guy. But he's new. He doesn't know, like, how everything goes yet. It's probably hard to, like, retrain somebody. Right? No, this dude's a good guy. He's this, a good guy. This guy's a good yeah. guy. Just be alive. Yeah. I just don't like worrying about people, though. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like having extra people to worry about. Like, okay, is this person getting something out of this? Is this person doing something? Like, I don't like, I'd rather like, hey, we work. Like, we got a lean crew here. This is what we do. Let's go. So to everybody, 
I get asked a lot, like, hey, what's it gonna take for me to work for you, work for you, can I work for you, can I work for you? And I appreciate that, it's an absolute honor. On the follow-up though, I don't have enough emotional investment to care about everybody on whether or not it is working out for them or not because everything else is kind of going, you know? So I kind of hate that whole process. I, I hate that it. whole process of the whole thing, you know? I get it, believe me, I, yeah, I completely understand. Bad that. leader, bad leader, hate it, not meant for, you know, <laughs> like, I hate it. Don't like it, but I think this one's gonna be good. Yeah. yeah. Seems like great work ethic. That's mm -hmm. right. Plus, what Mitt, about the other one? Mitt's taking him over. That one's leaving lane. on Friday. Yeah. I think yeah. he cares about the other one. Yeah, he's just <laughs> chilling, getting some jumpers in. <laughs> Mitt's got him. Yeah, Mitt's got Mitt him. Mitt has been away. running yeah. Yeah. through the 101. Oh, he did. <laughs> right, there was a delivery this morning, and right away, about 9.30, first thing I did, hey, put those fucking stacks away. All right, <laughs> fucking here, 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 those there. It's awesome. Pretty it. cool to watch a little, uh, you know, yeah, Mitt. A little, a little bit of emotion Mitt's from Mitt. Taking yeah. charge. Yeah, Mitt's been the newest worker here for like two years now, so he's had to do all of the, you know, like, hey, yeah, it's just kind of your thing. So now, you know, I guess that is good news for the new yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. The baton is being yeah. passed. Mitt just gave a big fist bump in the back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have to take out the fucking trash every day. <laughs> Got a lot easier now. You don't have to go uphill both ways to take the trash out. Oh yeah, he did say that. It's yeah. slowed every day. I took you the trash out the last so two lucky, years. Dude. <laughs> he, was he was giving him a back in my day. Yeah. He was giving him a back in my day earlier. It's awesome. It's unbelievable. This. this is amazing. Uh, <laughs> we will. Zuno just brought, made a very good point in my ear. We will have to have the intern be at AJ's house for at least a week. Oh, that's, that's right. right. Yep. To see how the other half of this whole operation. Yeah, I know how uh -huh. the production works. Send him over. Because if he's, <laughs> not, if he's not on that side of it, did he really get a full picture? And how that's on know? me yes. to make sure this motherfucker's ready. Actually, I believe they live in the same area. So. Yeah, but used to potentially, but like no. it is on me to make sure easy, this no. one is all the way ready for the world when he leaves here. How okay. is he supposed to be ready if he doesn't go to fucking Uncle Send AJ's? Send him over. Listen. No point. Hey. Send up to Columbus, Ohio. You want him to be well-rounded, have range. Guess what? There's a somebody who's getting back in town tonight who just opened up an HVAC company with multiple vans that just got an intern for General Bob. No. He becomes a plumber. That's not how it works. You want to be able to do everything, right? Like, hey, we're going to get really well The field oh. that he is looking to get into. <laughs> yeah. Bob might be his professor, though. I mean, that's... Maybe. Yeah, he might be right. Does go to... Just saying. Yeah, he's at Ohio State. He's at yeah. Ohio State. He goes to the Ohio State, this guy. What's he doing there? Exactly. Fucking oh, it's summertime? He's out of, yeah, there. That's a horror one. He showed up with no laptops. So what the <laughs> fuck is the Ohio State doing over there? I would imagine they give out, like, all their books and stuff are probably on iPads. Exactly. Hey, you're going to do great. No. You're you guys giving out verbal tests no. again? No. Oh, get him. I never had any verbal tests. His computer's too nice. It's not good enough. You know, so he didn't yeah. bring it? Well, he would have to bring the entire well, fucking... He built a goddamn PC. Oh, he did say he could go back and get the rig and transport it back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't have enough space. We don't have enough space for this guy's operation. Okay? We are not equipped for our intern. And that is a problem. Yep. That's why I don't like it. That's why I don't like doing it. Like, this dude probably knows more than we do. Now I'm supposed to be in charge of this fucking guy. I don't know. Bill would come in early and piss all over his PC. Oh, yeah. His job security. Oh, that guy's got too good job an anime security. over there. <laughs> Seems to be pretty similar to Bill, which is alarming. We got one Bill, don't need two, but <laughs> what's alarming about that? Well, don't need two said, bills. Don't yeah. need one bill. Find out don't want serial killers I, up. I think every operation <laughs> needs one Bill. I think you need one Bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bill's writing the code for YouTube right now. Yep. Yes, putting the clips together back there, writing the the, um, the entire code for that website that we used to rip the clips. Mm -hmm. He's building a computer to be faster. Yep. Yep. Scanning anime. He tells us, yes, yeah. about the anime world, what's hot, what's mm -hmm. not. Bopping. About to get bopping. <laughs> bopping. Yeah. Yeah. Watching us, Call of Duty League. Boom. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. All the things that we do not have covered are Huntsman fan. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Chicago Huntsman fan. Yeah. Billy has. What is that team? You have zero respect for Come fucking on. anybody that tries hard at anything. You hear me? gamers? Yes, yeah, the yeah. fucking huntsmen. The fucking on. cowboys There's of the e-gaming people e all over the world that work hard that I don't know about. Well, in the internet, though. This is where you work. That's why this intern's coming. I don't work house. on the, the e... You know, I'm not so much... I haven't dove into the e-gamer side of the internet. 
Me neither, Me but neither. Bill helps us. We mm-hmm. got one. Yeah. Bill got us. That's AJ's homework. All I know is Dr. Disrespect's probably the best gamer, right? Is yeah. that what everybody says? Uh, Bill Definitely. has a favorite athlete. I can't remember his name. Scump. 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 Optic oh, yeah. Scump. Scump. Optic Scump. Scump. Oh, so that's not even part of the Huntsman? His favorite player doesn't even play for his favorite team? No. See, that's what I'm talking about. We don't know enough about the world, but we got one Bill. That's right. I think we might have two now. It's going to be great. We're back tomorrow. Hammer down be in about 15, 20 minutes. Do I have to write an entire fucking program for this guy? No, 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 no. No, no. No, you already did it this morning. I was going to say, yeah. He'll he'll get his first dose right after we're done here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ty's excited for this guy's arrival. Mm -hmm. The editing of the podcast is all of a sudden being handed over to somebody else who doesn't have a laptop yet. So that'll happen. (laughs) Pretty big job. Tomorrow. Huge job. Yeah. Huge job. Monotonous. And you're going to trust him day one with that? Well, we'll no, see. No, no, no. He's, he's, complete, have a computer. he's have a complete computer. doofus, too. You'll be able to tell pretty quickly. <laughs> Thank you for Which that. You bet. Test one coming right up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking make him fill out a, a whole thing. Yeah. Oh, I will. Now, end of this thing, we're having a full written exam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes! We get to put together an exam. Hell yeah. Choice. Scantron, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely multiple choice. Okay. There will be a couple of filling the answers, though, and okay. it'll be mostly opinions on people. Gotcha. Oh. I like that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> like, who was nicest to you? Yeah. Don't think. Doubtful. Give Doubtful. him one of those personality tests. Highly doubtful. Tom was trying to run this guy out of the building this morning already. No, yeah. I already yeah. showed him how to win bets, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, if this dude, by the way, ha- can have zero other skills. Imagine if he goes on a three-month run yeah. of just picking winners. That's as easy as it could be for this guy. <laughs> that could work, too. Hey, let's go, huh? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, huh? What if, he's, uh, what if he's taking a dump in your private bathroom right now? He won't be. He could be. He's going to learn a l- another lesson then, if he does. <laughs> so it's also good. This is great. I don't like this whole part of it, but this guy's worth it. I like I like the cut of this dude's gym. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thus far. Hammer down 15, 20 minutes cut or so. Cut of his gym. Yeah, I do. Good luck. I do. Speaking of cut of the gym, MCDC, cut a promo. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. How do we just get to this? This is a great closer here. MCDC has proved time and time again that he can cut a promo on anything. Mm-hmm. And whether it's gnawing kneecaps or shoe the Ford hurt man wow. or any coffee, however you need, whatever you need, Motor City Dan Campbell, the head coach of the Detroit Lions, can cut a promo on it. It might sound terrible. It might sound bad. But let MCDC stew on it and be a force to be a part of it, and he will find the positive. He will find the motivating. This is what 1 p.m. at 1 p.m. MCDC came out and said about the Lions having zero primetime games. Any thoughts on the team being the only team in the NFL that should have a primetime game? That's awesome. One o'clock games. It's awesome. That's great. It's fucking awesome. One o'clock. You knock them out, you go home, you get ready for the next opponent. You're not waiting all day in the hotel, all night, you know, and then you go up. Now you're on a short week, it feels like. So I got no problem, you know? And by the way, you can get flex 5 to 15. So so who says we can't get flexed? Huh? Wow. Week 14, how about them lines when we're 13 and 0? How, yeah. right. oh. how about it, pal? How about it? How about those other teams that have been able to be successful while playing in primetime games? It's like a short week every single week. I don't know how they do it. I should almost be more impressed with the teams that get primetime games and win on a regular basis. But MCDC's job, a head coach's job, is to make every situation seem like it is set up for your success. He has that ability in bunches. I love Motor City Dan Campbell, AJ. I think it's a great representation of like having some perspective. Hey, we... It doesn't sound like garbage. Like he's just trying to to say, hey, okay, yeah, we we gotta. Well, I'm just gonna sound positive. Honestly, he, he's got a little bit of an argument here. If we don't have any primetime games, guess what? We're gonna have them because we're gonna win games. We're gonna be flexed. He's letting you know there a little like prediction almost. Like you guys are sleeping on us now. You won't sleep on us later. And yeah, if, as far as rest, recovery, preparation, maybe they have a little head up on it. Maybe everyone's gonna be crying that they don't want any more primetime games after right. the Lions go undefeated this year. Well, that's the thing. If the Lions go undefeated with zero primetime games. Everybody's going to be wanting to play at 1 o'clock. The thing about playing at 1 o'clock is you don't have to worry about walking around the hotel room and douche and douche and douche and douche, 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 douche during the 1 o'clock games. I fucking can't tell you. We're playing at night. Why are we playing at night? We should be playing at 1 o'clock. I know Friday night lights is where fucking football started, but this ain't that. This is 1 o'clock. We get home. We w- He's watching film on the next opponent immediately
immediately after that game. 415, the national game or whatever on Fox, MCDC's never heard of it. He's <laughs> watching film on the next <laughs> opponent. Sunday Night Football, fuck off, Chris Collinsworth. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see a dime. I am watching a film of the next opponent. Uh, Evan Foxy, this yep. guy is able to motivate anybody, anything, even Lions fans who had two wins last year. This is a win, right, pal? Bingo. I absolutely love this. I'm very surprised, though, that he didn't take the route of chip on the shoulder, no respect, and we're going to earn our respect, but he's happy. He, he did happy. He did without Let's saying go. it. I give him credit. He did it without saying it, though, Fox. You don't want you don't want Dan Campbell to sit there and go, we have a, this is just another chip, and nobody likes – that gets old hearing people say that, so let other people say it for him, and he knows in that meeting room with just players and coaches, that's exactly what they're saying. How about when he puts the one up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everybody can see it. It's awesome. This is what time? Eastern, not Central. This is the game time. All 17 of them. We're going to be in a bunch of like 14 other games at the same time. The only people that are going to be able to watch us is just the people around Detroit. The people that are going to be calling the game, not that great at calling the game. But we're fucking ready to study our next opponent immediately afterwards, man. Yeah. Wish we played at fucking noon. Wish, can we put these games at 10 a.m. like it's England, but it's in Detroit? <laughs> yeah, That's what I fucking want. That's why MCDC is going to win up there in Hell Detroit. Yeah. yeah, and also, like you mentioned, I'm glad that, you know, even for these one, I assumed every game day he's waking up at 6 a.m. and just slamming his head into the wall until the game starts. So Probably 5. 5, maybe. Yeah, yeah. so 6 a.m., a little late for those morning. Late. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess you're right. You know, so yeah. saving that extra seven hours of him slamming his head into the wall, we'll, be, we'll get a better MCDC so, down the stretch. How many concussions are we saving? MCDC from getting from hitting his head off the wall if it was a primetime game every week and said it's just one o'clock. That's what, four or five hours ahead of us? Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that you guys think that he sleeps at all the night before the game is. Oh, I'll probably douche, douche, and ambient. Yeah. yeah. What time do you guys wake up? 5 a.m., right? That's how you guys judge, like, who's waking up early and who's not. 6 a.m., kind of a weak sauce wake up time. What do you mean? Like you, you know what I mean. Yeah, half assing it. That's it. You, you early. No, I don't care at all what time anybody wakes up. You know that. Uh, I don't know that because. No. You would try to alpha another morning person if you were to get into a conversation with the morning person about the morning routine? Never, ever. I don't care about your routine. I don't care about what you eat. I don't care about anything. Oh, I eat a lot this weekend, by the way. I'm pooping still. I'm going to be pooping. Yeah. Today, right? so, I'm going to try to fast for the next three days. I burped up puke last night. That's how stuffed Ew. I was. <laughs> I ate so much, I burped, and it was in my... Eh. Oh, would my. you have put always? throw up. Everything. Piping hot Fazolini's did not make the cut. Oh. Oh. You got to get some breadsticks from there. Babies do what you did all the time last night. It's not, not wrong with it. Yeah, but they're growing. I'm at max A size. I should too, so... I feel fat, though. I got to start uh, waking up at 5 a.m. like AJ Hawk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hitting that, what is that? Ver Versa Climb, Versa Mex, Versa X? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Versa, Versa Climber. Versa Climber. When are you putting the Hawk House together? Have we seen any designs from that? No, I, Zeet sent me some stuff, and then uh, I just got a video from Same Tim, your dad, week. so tell him thank you. Ooh. Hey, no problem. What was it, the video, the walls? Of the room, yeah, just a thicker all the way around. Hey, don't be taking this as a joke. I'm not taking it as a joke. Believe me, I'm, like, I'm yeah. trying to get some at least pictures put together of what it could look like. Well, this is our fitness, our life, our yeah. health, our future yeah. on yeah. the line. Yeah, what if we move in there it's not done because you were fucking around? Yeah, because you I mean, it's a very real possibility. I don't know when that's going to be done, and I don't know about the supply Soon. chain. Whoa. Are we serious? Whoa. This Next ain't a time birthday. you go to Saint, uh, or, uh, South Bend Digs, talk to Mayor Pete for me and see if we can get some equipment here. I don't know what that has to do with anything. <laughs> Follow-up, supply chain's an okay, like, excuse for somebody's birthday. You're missing their birthday or forgetting to get them a gift. And it can be something that is real. But this gym that you've had weeks and weeks and weeks uh, – of uh, prep and no if it's not ready in 75 days are you kidding me dude it's your ass oh okay i didn't know we had that much time but it could be ready I, I don't think it could be ready. Back order. what does it that has mean to be. we're like not getting fucking yoked yeah, yeah dude are you not worried about our health i am worried about your health for sure thank you we got to make sure we do it right though i don't you don't just slop it together it's such a nice place well, we got a good logo for the Hawk House. That's right. We do. We'll debut that with the Thunderdome's oh. debut. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All right, hammer down 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm happy we covered everything we had to cover. Yeah. I'm going to go figure out what the fuck this intern's going to do. <laughs> yeah. See you guys tomorrow. You're the best people on earth. Bye.